What up, everybody? How you living? How you doing? How you feeling? It is arguably the best night of the year. It is the NFL Draft, and this is Gridiron Draft Night right here on the BR app and BR YouTube. I am Lefko coming to you for the 10th freaking straight year doing this, which is unbelievable. Uh, honestly, I, I couldn't be more happy, and every single time we do this, it gets better because the names get bigger. The dude that is wearing a suit, okay, he came in dressed to impress. I'm in here in a hoodie, Felder's in a T-shirt. You know him, former defensive rookie of the year, a star, all pro, Micah Parsons, looking at himself. How you feeling? <laughs> I'm feeling good. Uh, obviously, I heard the wrong M.O., but you, you know hear? what? <laughs> I heard that I had to dress up. Yeah. You know what? It's cool. It's cool. Look good. Feel good. Yes. First time on this. You know, I'm here to impress a little bit. I want everyone to get my... Did you? Do you normally watch the draft? Yeah, I do. You're like... Every year. And you st you played with these guys? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so you I, know what you're doing? Yeah, I know what I'm doing for sure. Okay. I'm a, I'm a big draft believer. Yeah. You know, uh, the draft's always interesting. It's like... You end a journey to start a journey. Mm. So in life, like it's like you just hitting a restart because they don't even know what they're prepared for yet. Oh, they have no idea. Yeah, and it's tough. So you know, for a lot of people that think like, oh, like it, sh it should translate. It doesn't translate at all. It's like uh. you're completely resetting because it's pee wee like high school football. No, it's high school football like college football. No, and NFL is nothing like. Well, he was college. defensive rookie of the year, so he knows. Uh, a dude that I've known for a very long time. Uh, a great friend, a dude that is not afraid to give his opinion, uh, played college ball, and he's just, he knows all of these dudes. Mr. Michael Felder in the bleachers. What's going on, guys? Where's my, where's my one? one? One right here? Here we go. Look at that. What do we think? What do we think of the draft? Big picture. I think that the, the most interesting thing for me is when the draft starts. Like, we know who's going to go number one. But after that, we got some questions, and I think... The draft really starts when you get a non-quarterback coming off the board. That's mm -hmm. when teams have to start getting creative. That's when teams have to start making tough decisions. And where those quarterbacks are going to go, of all the years, this is the one where I have no freaking idea. Right. I don't know. I don't know how the teams feel about the quarterbacks. So that's why we're relying on a big old brain and a quafted perfect hair of a dude that has been working at PFF and now he is ready to open up his wings and fly into all of your screens. It is the one, the only Mike Renner in the place to be. We are using your big board today. Uh, your 30,000 feet perspective of this draft, what do you think? Well, I'll say I know where one quarterback's gonna go. Yes. I know where Bryce Young's going. He's going to Carolina. After that, it is anybody's guess. But the thing I love about the draft and why I do this for a living is that no matter what happens, you got better today. Mm. And that's something to be proud of. Speaking of better, we have your props. These are your prop bets. I don't know if it's too late mm -hmm. for you guys to go to the window. Probably Take is. us through your favorite props for this draft. My favorite props to the draft. And I'm not saying all of them are going to hit. You're just trying to hit, you know, over 50% here. Yes. Make a little chat. So I like Will Levis under 6.5. That one was a while ago. I think that one might happen. I'm watching for in. When you say under, like before? Before. Gotcha. So, yeah, he's so getting drafted. six and down. So or six once, and up. Once the Raiders are on the clock, if Will Levis hasn't been drafted, I'm losing that bet. Peter Skaronsky under 10.5. I think he's the best offensive lineman in this draft, the safest offensive lineman in this draft. There's a lot of teams that need offensive linemen around the NFL. Broderick Jones, though, over 13 and a half to me is the biggest project in this draft. We'll see when he goes, but I think we may see a number of tackles go ahead of him. I like Quentin Johnston, the TCU wide receiver under. He has something that no one else in this wide receiver class has. That's the size. I like Dalton Kincaid, the first tight end drafted. Mm. NFL still covets receiving ability over all around ability at mm. no matter what the position is. And to me, He's the best tight end prospect since Kyle Pitts, and maybe a little more polished than even Pitts was coming out. I like Ooh. over four and a half QBs. So you think that means Hendon Hooker goes first? That means Hendon Hooker sneaking in the first That's round somewhere guys. here, and then I like under four and a half wide receivers Ooh. drafted. I just don't think after Quentin Johnston, after Jackson Smith and Jigba, Zay Flowers and Jordan Addison, I don't think we see a fifth sneak in there. Okay. Uh, it is not just going to be us four. I'm sure you've seen the social media posts. They put all the faces on there. We have some special analysts that are going to be joining us as well with some big old resumes. On the left, wide receiver for the Philadelphia Eagles, AJ, MF, and Brown. In the middle, a new member of the Atlanta Falcons, one of the greatest voices you'll ever hear in your entire life, Calais Campbell. Calais, just say anything right now real quick. 
<laughs> I'm happy to be here, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then to the right, uh, he has had an incredible career. He has put a new spin on why you should take the franchise tag. I like that. Kirk Cousins is going to be breaking down uh, the quarterbacks. It's not just because I'm an Eagles fan, Micah Parsons, uh, but last year's draft show, we had Jason Kelsey on the show, and while the draft was going on, the Eagles traded for A.J. Brown, and this is what happened during last year's draft show. So take a look, Micah. Oh, my God! <laughs> Do you see what? that? Do you see that? I don't think that was a good trade at all. AJ Brown? <laughs> he traded for I, I, I still Brown? to this day don't understand how that trade went through. I, I don't know how, to, how that Kelsey, trade went sit through. Down. We're looking at your this belly is big, button. Big go. <sighs> this is big. The Eagles just traded how about the that one? 18th pick and a third round pick for one of the best young wide receivers in the NFL, AJ Brown. Yeah, this is huge. This is instantly an upgrade for the offense. I mean, I can't tell you how much this is going to make us better. Uh, Howie is, uh, he's a man on a mission right now, man. He's making things happen, and uh, uh, I'm a big fan. Here we go, baby! Woo! Here we go! He was supposed to retire. AJ, uh, <laughs> did you ever see that clip, man? Did you ever see that? Oh, yeah, I did. I love that clip. Oh, uh, well... Look, I could come here and talk about how great you are and how that was one of the best moments of my entire life. <laughs> I do think, though, that, Micah, you, you thought that was a bad trade, though. I don't know how Tennessee trades him. I don't understand that. I don't want I, I would. Yeah, I know he, don't, he doesn't like that. He, he the best receiver on the team, and you let him go because he will not get paid? <laughs> and then he outperforms what you were trying to pay him? <laughs> like, come on, Tennessee. That's, that's why they didn't share was they getting rid of everybody right now. Come on. Come on. And you send him over to the Eagles. Don't start just, sweating now because you're getting angry. No, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm still angry to this day about that trade. You know, it's still Ugh. beef right now. It's still beef. So anytime a wide receiver gets drafted, A.J. Brown is going to break it down. A.J., we had you come up with the top five wide receivers. Uh, take us through your top five. Okay, at number one, I have uh, Zay Flowers. At number two, Jalen Hyatt. At number three, Jackson, Jackson Smith. Uh, number four, Jonathan Mingo. And uh, Jordan Addison at number five. Uh, I'm I'm hoping we see five go today. You know those guys on my list are really good football players, and and I'll, all I'm gonna say, whoever's gets Zay, Zay Flowers might be the still still the draft from the wide receiver standpoint. I love that. And AJ, well, when the Eagles draft at 10 and 30, if they make those selections, we will be hearing from you then as well. Uh, Calais Campbell uh, is going to be doing the trenches for us, so some of the best offensive and defensive linemen. Calais, I'm the curious. Big guys, baby. The big guys, you know, the meat in the middle. Wh who are some of your favorite prospects? Who are the ones that when you put on the film really jumped out to you in this process? Uh, well, number one is uh, Jalen Carter. I mean, he's, you know, by far, you know, uh, well, I won't say by far because they got some other beasts, but to me, he's the best uh, defense lineman you get in his, in his draft. Uh, I mean, when you see on the field the way he dominates, the way he splits double teams, he's a natural knack for making plays, quick, uh, explosive, you know, all the above. You know, then you got uh, Will Anderson out of Alabama. You know, uh, I mean, he's. I mean, the most accomplished Alabama player of all time, you know, for yeah. D-line, which is pretty much it's pretty crazy. I mean, all the great players that played there. Uh, but what I like about him is his get-off, you know, and he has, you know, he kind of has like Von Miller kind of uh, flash to me, you know, uh, you got just that, that sex appeal where he could do everything. Uh, and then, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, uh, Wilson kid, Tyree Wilson, Tyree you know, Wilson. I think he's, uh, you know, a stud. He's kind of like that, that big body, stout, strong, explosive. Mm -hmm. Uh, physicality, you know, and, um, you know, I mean, those three guys, man, those those guys make it go, you know, for the D-line. You know, I feel like this is a, a big class. You know, there's a lot of other guys that can play, but those three are the, the cream of the crop. Uh, we're going to, when we talk about Jalen Carter later, we'll hear Micah Parsons because he loves Jalen Carter. And uh, Calais, we'll also check in with you after the Falcons select at eight. And then last, Mr. Kirk Cousins is going to be very busy. We just don't know when he's going to be busy. He could be busy in the first five picks. It could be throughout the first round. Uh, we, we're not sure about these quarterbacks. I think Kirk, are you sure about these quarterbacks? What, what order do you have these guys? <laughs> I don't know how sure I am about these quarterbacks, but I'd also tell you that uh, the last, you know, 10, 15, 20 years of this draft, it's pretty difficult to be sure about first round quarterbacks. So uh, you do the best you can and you hope you get someone who's going to change your uh, your franchise for the next decade. But uh, in my top five order, I'm not going to have any surprises here. Bryce Young, number one, for obvious reasons. I think his tape 
Uh, as you talk to experts who have studied it all spring, they would tell you that it's kind of him and then everybody else. And mm. C.J. Stroud next. Uh, I've watched a couple of his games being a Big Ten guy myself. And he makes some, some throws that uh, tight windows that, you know, made my eyebrows go up. Pretty impressive arm talent. Anthony Richardson has the super high ceiling, an incredible athlete. Uh, didn't have as much college experience, uh, but uh, certainly is exciting and has traits that make you say that uh, this guy could be really special. Will Levis was the one who going into last season really was supposed to be the top pick, had the previous year tape that was so impressive, and then this past year wasn't quite as sharp, but there are some reasons for that, I think, that go beyond just him. And then Hendon Hooker really elevated himself throughout this past year. He's coming off an injury, but elite arm talent and uh, certainly can throw the ball as a first round pick should. All right, so here's the main thing about this show. Kirk, thank you so much. I, we're going to be going back to you uh, pretty much right now because the television broadcast, they're welcoming people. They're saying, hey, welcome to the draft. Hope you're great. The big reason to continue watching our show is we're not waiting for TV. There's a lot of reporters out there that are already breaking the picks. In fact, it came out a few hours ago that Bryce Young is going to be the first pick. So we're going to start our draft right now because we're not going to wait for television. Throughout this entire night, we will often have the picks before the television broadcast. So let's make a video. Let's officially welcome Bryce Young to the Carolina Panthers with the first pick in the 2023 NFL Draft. That sound? The pick is in. Oh, I see Bryce in. <laughs> Carolina Panthers, 7-10 last season, second in their division, didn't make the playoffs, and they are going to be going with Mr. Bryce Young. As soon as they start rolling that footage, I'm going to get going. We're going to go Renner. We're going to go Felder. Mike is going to give his insight, which... I know it's going to be hilarious all night long, and then we're going to hear from Kirk Cousins about this pick. It is ridiculous how accomplished this guy is. Yeah. Like when you see everything he's done. So here it is. Sham, Sham Sharanya is going to be the one that breaks this. Look at that. Mr. NBA, Carolina Panthers are selecting Alabama quarterback Bryce Young as number one overall per sources. Uh, man. 23 and four through a touchdown in all 27 starts over two seasons. Never been done. Um, all right, so can I just ask the production, are we gonna roll video first or am I just gonna go to Renner? Okay. You know what, I'm, I'm doing an executive decision. Can you come back to me please so that I can talk over that video and then I'm gonna toss to Renner? Hey, what's up, everybody? How you living? We're going we're gonna to do this one more time. This is the reason we do it now. Bryce Young, officially the number one pick for the Carolina Panthers of all the quarterbacks in this process. He was seen as the one that was light years ahead of everybody. He is being talked about as genius level on the board, was offered scholarships in eighth grade. Shockingly, but not shockingly, born in the same hospital as Kobe freaking Bryant, Mr. Mike Renner. The pick here, the choice to trade up to one and take him, your thoughts of the value? To me, he's as accomplished. He's right behind like Trevor Lawrence in terms of accomplishments over his entire career. Th this guy was a five-star, number one quarterback recruit in his class. 20th recruit all time by 247 Sports. So he was coming out of Matter Day with incredible hype, goes to Alabama, very first year as a starter, wins a Heisman, mm. slays the dragon that is the 2021 Georgia defense with one of the most impressive quarterback performances you'll see at the collegiate level. And the only reason he doesn't win a national championship is because both his top two wide receivers left that game, the game prior, without ACLs, unfortunately. Mm. That's the only reason, because he had them dead to rights in both of those games until Jamison Williams went out. No duds on his tape. There's no game to point to where it says that 5'10", 204 is a problem mm. from his tape at Alabama. Works the middle of the field better than a lot of, or most of the short quarterbacks, the Kyler Murrays, the Russell Wilsons at the NFL level. The only thing I'm worried about with him, injury. 5'10", yeah. 204, looks like a slot wide receiver. What's it gonna be like when he takes a hit? Because he can't really slide. I don't think he played baseball growing up. He, he head first dives. And if you head first dive at the NFL level, you're getting popped by guys like this over here. Yes. That's the only thing you're really, really worried about him. On the field, he's nasty. What grade are we giving him? Oh, we're giving that an A plus right there. Mm. Give it to him. I, I love it. And listen, here's the thing. This is the reality. When you look at Bryce Young, 
I see a guy that didn't have to run check with me games. And what that means is he's not looking at the sideline for help, right? Mm -hmm. He's someone, and the end of that Auburn game might be some of the best tape that you're going to see. He is someone that when he gets to the end, when he at, he's at the end of this game, they need points. He understands where to go with the football, what type of throw that he needs to make. He gets all those things done. This is someone that can make every throw. Does he have Anthony Richardson arm strength? No, but guess what? This is still going to be an A-plus for me because this is the best quarterback, the best quarterback who should go number one overall. It's Bryce Young. You see him there. He can use his mobility, still keep eyes down the field, and go make plays. Absolutely love Bryce Young. A-plus. Uh, I don't miss... have a grading system. <laughs> Do I need to hit it again? Well, what, what, grade, it? what grade would you give? Oh, I think it's an A grade for sure. Okay. Can we talk? I want to have that weird conversation with you about the size. Yeah. You're a defender, and now here comes a guy who, as soon as he's drafted, which it will be now, he is the smallest quarterback in the NFL. What do you think? Yeah, you know, I think this is a great overall pick, great prospect. But at the end, I, size does matter. Um, some of his worst games was against nasty defensive lines. Carolina doesn't have a terrific offensive line. Right. A lot of this tape, he's very comfortable. He he has to get used to get, uh, being uncomfortable, be able to make those throws feeling uncomfortable. Games that he struggled, he was uncomfortable a lot with blitzes, yep. uh, nasty defensive lines, also bigger defensive lines where their pass rush was able to get around Alabama's usual top yep. offensive line. So uh, it's a very good pick, but it's a lot of doubts for sure, especially with the size. Um, but what he doesn't lack, and what, uh, like he said, he's just as good as Trevor when it comes to like being accomplishments and what he's accomplished. But um, what he does do very well is when he's looking, he doesn't stop. Like he doesn't look down, pull the ball down. Mm. He's consistently looking down, ball staying in position. So he doesn't, you know, fumble a lot. A lot of quarterbacks they'll start going like this when they're trying to right, run right. and things. But his pocket awareness is, you know out of this Off world. Charts, yeah. He's staying right in posture. His yeah. confidence is out of this world. So it's definitely A, I don't think it's a guy where he'll give up very easily. You mm -hmm. know, he's been doubted his whole life. So um, this is just something he'll just have to overcome. I want to go to Kirk Cousins uh, weighing in. He is our quarterback specialist. Your take on his tape and, and what's in store for Bryce Young now that he's headed to Carolina? Yeah, it's pretty consensus that he should be the number one overall pick. His tape Really looks like a point guard. He's just very natural playing the position. He's great off schedule. He has a great feel for the game. I had a chance to meet him in Phoenix during Super Bowl week and was just really impressed with, the, with his demeanor. I think he's comfortable in who he is. The fact that he's 5'10", the fact that he's a little slender, he accepts that. He's pretty self-aware. And I think he'll step in that locker room right away and just uh, rub people the right way. And mm. I think they'll enjoy working with him. I also think that... Um, this is a team game, and it's so important to be in the right situation. And I think Frank Reich as the head coach and as the play caller is a real positive for Bryce. I think having Andy Dalton in the quarterback room with him is also a real positive. Andy started over 100 games in this league and is going to be able to pour into Bryce and just be a great support system for him all the way through. My old teammate Adam Thielen is now there, and mm -hmm. I, as a veteran quarterback, would lean on Adam for uh, his perspective and what he was seeing and what he thought about uh, routes or coverage and I think he'll be a great sounding board for Bryce. So um, I think they're in a good spot. I also think in the NFC South, it's a great opportunity for him to go in there and try to become the best quarterback in that division. And, um, you know, we'll see uh, how they do, but I, I think he's in a good spot. Kirk, thank you so much. So that is the pick. Bryce Young, officially with the Carolina Panthers. The new era begins. Dave Tepper has his quarterback. You wanted to chime in there. I was just going to say, now, the Thielen thing that you mentioned, now you just got to surround him with weapons. I think this was yeah. the correct move for the Carolina Panthers. When you make that big a play, I think you have to take a swing like this at a guy like Bryce Young, who's like a culture changer. You know, he plays with a chip on his shoulder, even though I described he really shouldn't because he's, you know, this highly touted of a guy. Right. But he's that kind of guy that can bring that locker room together and basically lead you into the future because you've been going quarterback to quarterback to quarterback there in yep. Carolina, never really finding the guy. You got the guy. It makes it so much easier to build everything else once that's the case. Some of their offseason additions, not just Adam Thielen, also added Miles Sanders from the Eagles, also added Hayden Hurst at tight end, mm -hmm. different weapons. And if you think about it, last year they went out there and they took Ike with a, a first mm -hmm. pick. So they already kind of have that tackle. This is the new era. One thing that I like about him as a teammate, story that jumped out to me, all that NIL money, what he did every single week, he took out his offensive line to dinner with his NIL money and paid for him. Just little things yeah. that make you want to protect him. What were you going to add? No, I was just going to say, that here's the thing with for me with him. And again, I, go back to the check with me, the check with me stuff. Yeah. Interesting. 
but I also look at the way that they got a lot of dogs in that Alabama locker room. Mm. They got a lot of dogs. They got a ton of dudes in there. And all of them listened to Bryce Young. All of them respected his leadership, knew he was the face of this football team, and they respected it. And so for me, I think that goes a long way to him coming into an NFL locker room and having to be the guy in understanding the pressure that he's under and understanding that he can rise to the occasion. It is now time to start the NFL draft. There you go. Because now, listen, we knew that Bryce was going to be one. Sure. So now this is the set, the other part of this draft that I love to do is not just breaking down what happened but what could happen. Mike, I'm coming to you first. Houston right now, what would you do if you are Nick Casario and you're drafting for Houston and Bryce is off the board? See the problem? Uh -huh. Oh, no. Okay. We're like, I want to hear Mike. Okay, my bad. Uh, yeah. See, we got to come up with a Okay, system. so we're, you're right. I'm going <laughs> last names only. Parsons, Renner, Elder Parsons. There we Elder go. Parsons. Mike. <laughs> okay. Um, no, I, the Texans are a really good team. Like, if you look at, they even gave us a nail biter towards the end. Um, I think their defense is really good. You know, I don't think they're really missing a lot, but they are missing that true quarterback. You know, they're missing that, that guy on the offensive guy that's going to deliver, um, not make, you know, bad decisions down right. the field. So I have to go with C.J. Stroud. You so know, you would go C.J. Stroud? I would definitely go C.J. Stroud. If I'm Texans right now, you you can't really put your faith in the QBs that you have right now. I mean, during our game, they had a guy coming in doing RPOs, check with me's, and another guy's coming on third down to pass the ball. <laughs> you need a guy that's just going to be in the game. Consistency. You uh, think uh, C.J. is that guy? You need to be that leader. I mean, he's led Ohio State. He's made those big appearances. I mean, I think he's really showed – that he can be that guy against Georgia. The most dominant defense gave him 45. Yeah. Uh, no one's did that all season. Um, so, you know, uh, it's just I'm going with C.J. Stroud. Okay. They need that it factor on offense. They need a guy that's going to deliver the ball on point, on cue. He, I think he's the most accurate quarterback. Um, I think they make they have to make that choice. Renner, so there have been different – both defensive ends have been mocked to them and mm -hmm. rumored. Will Levis have been rumored. C.J. Stroud, I think, because of that S2 test – People kind of assumed he was dropping. What do you think, and where would you go? I think this is Will Anderson, and I like the process because I worry about if I'm drafting a C.J. Stroud, if I'm drafting a Will Levis here, you've seen how rookie quarterbacks have transitioned in the NFL of late. Even Trevor Lawrence was having a rough time. They got the number one overall pick the next year. If you draft one of those guys, chances are you're picking one, two next year because it's, you know, they're an up-and-coming roster, but look at the rest of the AFC. The AFC is loaded. Mm -hmm. You are easily the bottom, if not the second worst team in the AFC, starting a rookie quarterback. All of a sudden, then you're drafting one, two next year, and then you have a weird decision on your hands where I just drafted this guy. I don't know if he's going to be the guy. And I have Caleb Williams maybe looking me in the face. Drake right. May, next year's QB class yeah. looks legit. Like, they Bryce Young type of prospects, maybe two of them. I, I, I can't ha hate the thought process of maybe passing on this and then trading for a, whether it's a Mac Jones, Trey Lance, someone else, who's a veteran that could be available mm. and going that route. Felder, I'm curious. I've been hearing this a lot. D'Amico Ryans is the coach now. He needs his Nick Bosa. Is that a Will Anderson? Is that a Tyrese Will Tyree Wilson? Just from what you've seen, yeah. where I, would you go? I mean, I, I, if you're going to go defense, I would go with Will Anderson. I, okay. I think that he is he's, – he's got this crazy body type, like where he's built kind of like a wasp, like <laughs> high cut up top, slim, and then – Got big legs. Like, this guy, he's, he's, that's what he's built like. So I think that's going to be really interesting to see what he ends up do, what they end up doing because I do think that they need a quarterback, just like Mike, like Parsons said. Yeah. They need, I, I, they need a quarterback. But the rumors are that they don't like C.J. Stroud, mm. which is going to be – He is the favorite right now in Vegas. Right yeah. now, C.J. Stroud is the favorite in Vegas to go number two. Well, let me ask you this. If they don't pick C.J. Stroud, are they going to regret it? That's, that's the question because he's on the board for you. Are you going to regret it if you don't take him? Mm. What do you think? There's a, high, there's a high chance, right? I mean, you go back to 2020, where there was a similar situation. That's where Mike's Wa draft. Washington, no, no, that was 2021. 2020, oh, yeah. where Washington's looking at Chase Young. Right. Over Justin Herbert. Right. Over Tua. And now I they're still in Solomon quarterback Thomas purgatory. Over Pat Mahomes, too. That, too. And yeah. it's like, but I think Chase Young's like seen as Will Anderson. Like, those are sure things. Sure. But even sure things sometimes, if injury strikes, whatnot, right. turn into not sure things. Is Will Anderson at that level? He's there. Um, he can be better. Is he though. a Chase Young in your mind? I, I bro, it, be real. <laughs> you can't. You, I, I can't put him on a. 
I don't think you can compare Chase just because his injuries. Like injuries. you could look at his yeah. first year and say, but do you see Will as like potential of having like a Bosa? You got to compare him to Bosa. Okay. You, you know, Bosa like came a... back after ACL and won Defensive Player of the Year. Mm. So you know that's the kind of the standard you got. You got to say Ken has got to be Bosa and Bosa. I mean, even he he was Rookie of the Year, right? Yep. Defensive Rookie. Of the... So you're looking at a, is he going to be? I feel like you know. Do you think if, he's going to be Defensive Rookie of the Year, Will Anderson? He has a chance. Okay. With DeMarco Ryan, D'Amico he Ryan, can yeah. become – DeMico Ryan, he we can be that pick. guy. We have the pick. The pick is in according to the internet. And C.J. Stroud is the guy. Let's wow. go. So, I just want to say quick MVP. I love the reporters that break the news before they happen on TV. Connor Hughes, you're the man. SNY, we're going to give you a shout-out. The Texans go C.J. Stroud, and it makes you wonder which okay. team was trying to get C.J. Stroud to fall – but he doesn't fall. Vegas. He goes second overall, second team All-American, two-time Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year, a team captain. He is the leader of the team. He is an MVP, and he broke Drew Brees' Big Ten record for the most touchdowns in a two-year span with 85. Renner, the value at two. I, I think he can be flourish there in Bobby Slowick's new offense that he's bringing over from San Francisco. Probably going to look a lot like what Kyle Shanahan was doing, which is working the middle of the field with timing and accuracy. What did he do two years ago with Jackson Smith and Jigbo lighting up you know, Utah in the bowl game for over yeah. 300 yards? Timing and accuracy over the middle of the field. He is as good as it gets in the draft class at just that. Very much a point-and-shoot type of quarterback. You're seeing some of these deadly accurate throws on his tape down the football field. 9.7 yards per attempt for his career. 85 to 12 touchdown to interception ratio. Off the charts production. It's just can he do a little more than that? Because the game is evolving to where the point and shoot, the pure pocket passers are going the way of the dodo. We want guys that can create on their own. And when it, whether it was under pressure, whether it was outside of structure, that was the thing that was missing from Stroud's game a lot of the time. But then the Georgia game, yep. final game of his career, looks like a completely different player. You tell me I get the Georgia C.J. Stroud, I'm drafting him number two, mm. and I'm happy as heck about it. But if I'm getting the rest of the guy that maybe struggled at times yeah. against some lower Big Ten teams, a little worried, but he's still young. Only a junior coming out. What grade are we giving? We're going to give that. We'll go A-. minus. A-, minus. just because you're concerned about that. That Georgia game, by the way, 348 passing yards, four touchdowns, and 34 rushing yards, which is what you want to see. What do you think? Yeah, the rushing part for me, like, I look at this guy and I see, like, he could be, like, a proto John Elway. Like, realistically, like, when we're talking about what he brings to the table, mm. remember, Elway was an athlete. People, people always forget that. But this is a guy that's got a lot of those same capabilities. A little bit smaller, obviously, but he has to be a little smaller because he's got to be able to move. The thing I want to see out of C.J. Stroud is I want to see him move a little bit more. And you mentioned that, Renner. He he, he really did not want to move. And I felt like the, a, a big part of that was he did not want to get labeled as a running quarterback. So he forced himself to stay in the pocket. He forced himself to, to not use those legs that he has. But then when he did it, look, look at, at that. Look at all that green. That's a lot of green to swim like, in. Like, he can do it. He can do it. He just didn't want to do it. So if you ask him to do it, I think he can do it. For me, this is an A pick. Mm. And I just look at that, and I think they would have truly regretted not picking him, and he would have made them pay for whatever team he went to. The fact that a Penn State guy loves this pick means a lot. You like this guy. Yeah, I'm one for one right now. I feel confident. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, like I said, I love him. Uh, you know, it's confidence. You know, like I said, like we, y'all, people bring up the S2. And yeah. I'm glad that, you know, these teams didn't make the same mistake that uh, you could say the Jets made. Or I don't want to write off Trey Lance because I still think he can be that guy. Um, but, you know, you're you're taking these bad things because you want these players to drop, and then you leave someone like Chicago to get them. I think Justin – You're talking Fields, about Justin Fields. Yeah, I think yeah. he makes a huge leap from the from last year, and he made a huge leap this year with processing, yeah. getting better. And you see that with C.J. Stroud. I see that same thing with C.J. Stroud, and I'm glad the Texans took him because I think Justin Fields is a guy like, dang, he's going to be like a Patrick Mahomes. How do we let this guy who's oh. able to move and throw – fought to pick 11 for the Chicago to trade up and now have DJ Moore with them, yep. Claypool, Mooney, and, you know, potentially some uh, another great player that's about to come up here. So. I have talked to former quarterbacks. They have all loved C.J. Stroud. Yes. I talked to Pat Mahomes. He loves C.J. Stroud. Mm -hmm. Kirk Cousins, I know you love C.J. Stroud as well. What do you see from this guy, and how do you think he's going to fare in Houston? Yeah, he's a true pure passer. He's probably the best passer of the football in this draft. 
Uh, we talked about it earlier. He makes a lot of tight window throws. I watched his couple drives at Happy Valley against Penn State. He made some wild throws, dropping the ball in the bucket, throwing tight slants for his cover zero. The ball just comes off his hand quickly and accurately. I don't really mind that he's a point and shoot passer because quite frankly, in the NFL, you have to be able to do that. And if you can't, the off schedule ability is secondary to your ability to be a pocket passer. And so accuracy is really that first and most important trait and he has it. Uh, I also think this pick really shows, and I think the rest of this, these quarterback picks will show just how valued the quarterback position is in the draft. Jay Gruden once made a comment to me about how difficult it is to find offensive tackles, specifically left tackles in free agency, because if a team has one, they don't let them leave their building. And quarterbacks are much the same way. You're, you're rarely going to find one in free agency. I did leave Washington's building and, and go to free agency, <laughs> but it isn't very common to happen. And so you have to go get your guy in the draft. And many times that will lead to people reaching for quarterbacks, but yeah. usually the upside is worth the risk. And with his arm talent and with his tape, uh, I think the pick makes a lot of sense. The challenge in evaluating a lot of these guys, both Bryce and CJ, is they play with superior talent week in and week out. Mm -hmm. Alabama and Ohio State have the best rosters in college football. That's always going to help the quarterback. He's got O-linemen that are going to get drafted. He's got multiple receivers that are going to get drafted. In the NFL, especially these teams they're going to with the first couple picks, not only will the talent not be better than their opponent, there's a chance most weeks they might actually be inferior and so that is a big adjustment for a guy coming from these two programs but um when you have his ability it's a tough uh tough deal to pass on cj stroud officially pick number two and the new face of the houston texans and D'Amico ryan's first quarterback now we get to a team that really no one's been able to predict arizona rumors that they might want to move down pick up more picks Kyler Murray coming off of an ACL injury. Rumors that DeAndre Hopkins might be on the way out. It is a new era. Jonathan Gannon is the head coach, former D.C. of the Philadelphia Eagles, and a new GM as well. Uh, we sit here. They've been mocked, uh, Mr. Renner, to get Will Anderson, possibly also Tyree Wilson. Where are you leaning if, it, if they do go D-end here? Yeah, I'm going Will Anderson. I have Gian Carter as the top-ranked player available, but obviously his off-field stuff's probably going to drop yeah, him. You know what? Can we see your big board just to see the best players available now that yeah. we're two quarterbacks down? And then Will Anderson, like, I see those guys in a similar tier. You're getting a good player no matter what. There's not a lot of risk involved because they're already, like, NFL-ready in a lot of ways. So if you're the you know, Arizona Cardinals who, you know, on paper, one of the worst rosters in the NFL, so many needs. I was doing the needs, and I could not stop writing down positions yeah. <laughs> when I got to the Arizona Cardinals. Just pick a valuable guy, right? Just pick a guy you know is going to be good at a valuable position. Chalk up a W because this roster is in need of W at this point. Uh, Felder, I'm curious. I have also heard rumors that Kyler has wanted them to take – Paris Johnson, the offensive tackle from Ohio State. Would that be a possibility for you here? Feels like a reach, but you got to protect your quarterback. Right. You got to protect them. And so, if that's what you're going to do, if that's what they're going to do, then maybe find a way to get, to trade back. Especially if somebody's in love with Will Levis or somebody's right. in love with with uh, Anthony Richardson. So I, I think that might be on the board. Might be why they're going to take some time on this because they're going to try to work out a deal. We have back. a trade. Okay, there we go. I didn't know if a trade would happen. Now becomes two interesting things. Who and what are they coming up to get? Arizona is trading the pick, so we know it's a trade. So do you know, Renner? Texans are moving back up. The Houston Texans, who had a second pick at number 12, are moving back up. I can't remember the last time a team did back-to-back -back picks. Wow. wow. And so In the top five. In the top five, so they go quarterback, and then would they be trading up here for a Will Anderson? Could be. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. your prediction? Yes. Will Anderson. There we go. You, Like I said, D'Amico needs his guy. Yeah. Wow. And with that, he will get a defensive rookie of the year with Will Anderson. He doesn't have Bosa, you know. He doesn't have did what Eric Armstead. He had a boatload of top players come out there. He's definitely going Will Anderson. And they take Will Anderson. Boom, there it there is. There we go. Damn. The Houston Texans two. just changed the entire construct of their team. That's they huge. They get C.J. Stroud at quarterback. They get Will Anderson on defense. That's how you do it. 
That I is mean, how you do it. And they were able it. to do this by trading the 12th pick that they got in the Deshaun Watson trade mm -hmm. to go and make this possible. Will Anderson is now going to be playing that Nick Bosa role in D'Amico Ryan's defense. And they still got Malik Collins. Like, a two-time unanimous All-American. He A two-time Nagurski. A Bednarik. A Lombardi. A two-time SEC Defensive Player of the Year at Alabama. He was known as the Terminator. Renner, to make this move, what do you think of the value here? I love it. I think, you know, like you said, Demeca Ryans gets his guy. He said, you know, you can have the number one, the number two pick here. Let me still get that blue chip defensive player that wow. I just know is going to be a dude. And you see him here. He has that way of moving that the elites at the next level have, that the Khalil Max have, that the Von Millers have, that the Micah Parsons have, that's hey. just easy for him. A and he's still kind of raw. Like, he doesn't have a ton of pass rushing moves, but still gets the job done, plays with great leverage. And in that Alabama defense as well, he was like a scheme kind of played within himself in that scheme, wasn't allowed the freedom to attack the way that at the next level, when you are a dude, you are kind of afforded. And I, I just think the sky is the limit for this guy. The Texans, really, if you're a Texans fan, after multiple years of the Deshaun Watson saga and just being an uh, unappealing team to watch, this is this is like heaven for them. Show right me now. the grade. We're going to give that an A+. Plus. Woo! Wax poetic. Dude, I love this guy. <laughs> I absolutely <laughs> like love I him. I can tell. He's a dude. I, listen, I told you, you got that wasp body. This guy is really strong at the point of contact. He's amazing against the run. We spent so much time talking about what he does in the pass game. And I'm glad that you mentioned he played within the construct of that defense, which didn't allow him to do all the things that he was that he could have done. If he if they if he, this is a different coaching staff, they probably just cut him loose. Mm -hmm. But instead he has to play within this defense. That Alabama system. Bingo. Which means he has to there's times he had to wrong arm. Okay, guess what? I'm spilling that play wide. There's times that he had to Play contain and hold the edge. He plays hand up. He plays hand down. This is a guy that can do everything. He's seen there working within the construct. He could have got off on that play. He could have, but he didn't. He understood that he needs to, what he understands, that he needs to play within the confines of that defense, and they do a really good job. I mean, this is someone, when I when I look at him play, obviously, the, the names that we've already said, Steve, they, 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 they stand out. Nick Bosa, Von Miller, those are guys you got to compare him to. This is an A+. Plus. I think they're getting a guy who's going to step in, step up, and he's going to make this team better. Oh, and by the way, they also just got C.J. Stroud. 34 and a half sacks, uh, Mr. Parsons, second all-time in Alabama behind Derek Thomas. Mm. This is what you do. When yeah. you watch this guy, what do you see? Uh, you can't teach effort. And, I mean, his effort, run game, pass game, yep. a lot of chase down sacks, a lot of chase down behind TFLs. Um, and, you know, that's something, like, I would love to have this guy on our team. You yeah. know, he's a, he's that type of player. He's going to give you nothing but effort, yeah. nothing but his best. And that's the type of, you know, I think if I'm D'Amico Ryan, I'm looking at that. That's why I trade down and get a guy like that. I don't want a guy that's going to take plays off. He doesn't take plays off. He's dominant in the pass and the run. I mean, I, I definitely say it's an A-plus grade myself. Um, and, you know, one thing he's really good at, and I think he's going to get better at, is just being more dominant with his hands at the yeah. tack. You know, at, at this level, you're just not going to be able to dip under the yeah, way he's yeah. dipping. Yeah. They're going to lean on you. They know how to balance that. They know how to counterattack that, especially the really good ones. So I think D'Amico gets him there, obviously coaching some of the best defense alignment. Uh, so I definitely think you have a, a definitely a defense rookie of the year, possibly. I just want to check in with Calais. Calais, your thoughts on Will Anderson? Yeah, man, I think this is a huge pickup. You know, uh, you can't teach playmaking ability. I don't care how good of a player he is physically, you know, this guy has a knack for making plays. You call it instincts. And when I see him on the field, you know, I mean, he can make plays going inside, going outside with power. He has all kinds of moves in his bag. And uh, he's just a playmaker, man. And to stand out with all that talent around him, I mean, when I watched the games in Alabama, he was by far the best player on the field, you know, for two years in a row. And so I love, I love, uh, I love the pick. You know, I think he's a stud. You know, they got a whole lot better. Renner, what do you think? Thank you, Calais. I'll just say this. The trade compensation came out. Yeah. Break it down. They gave up. So they gave up their first, 12th overall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 33 overall. And next year's first, though. And third. And third. If I am. Wow. If I'm Arizona, Arizona did it. I am jumping up and down. That next year's first, if they're starting C.J. Stroud and he doesn't hit the ground running. Mm. Whew. Uh, I mean, Arizona could be sitting here in the same spot that Houston is right now with a ton of draft capital right at the top of the draft. I love Will Anderson. That's a lot to give up for one Will Anderson. And you know what? If they do, let's say, want to go offensive tackle, 
that 12 spot, Bingo. there will be oh, yeah. some tackles yeah, there. there. Pete's going to be there. I mean, yeah, so, all that. That's literally you know what? I, I, I think. Oh, oh, wow. baby! Oh, that stopped me in my tracks. Wow. The we knew Colts. They, we knew they had to pull the trigger on a quarterback, right? Wow. wow. There had been rumors that the Colts might want to trade for Lamar Jackson. Well, guess what? Wow. They found a dude that is explosive in every realm. Wow. Anthony Richardson. An absolute freak of nature for Florida. F six career runs of 45 or more yards in just wow. 13 starts. Set the quarterback record with a 40 and a half inch vertical. The man is electric. Wow. I thought maybe they'd go Levis here, but Renner, the value of Richardson at four. What do you think? I love the pick. Okay. This one, I'm, oh, I'm going man. right to A-plus because of the fit here. He goes to Shane Steichen's offense. Oh, Jalen They Hurts. ran. They ran the quarterback more than anyone else in the NFL last year, and he wow. knows how to implement that threat. And there is no bigger threat right now in the NFL at the quarterback position running that I'd be more afraid of than Anthony Richardson. This guy ran a faster 40-yard dash than Kyle Pitts at the same size. Kyle Pitts, number four overall pick as well. At a tight end, though, this guy's floor is like a high-end tight end with an athlete of this caliber. Wow. He averaged 12.4 yards per scramble over his career. Kyler Murray only averaged 11.4. He is electric when he gets out into space. His feel for the pocket, I think it's underrated. He had one of the lowest pressure to sack conversion rates in this draft class. He knows how to evade pressure. He's confident when that pressure comes. It's just the accuracy. Mm. That's the only thing. If you can tell me that you can fix this guy's accuracy, you have an elite quarterback at the next level. That's only it. Only less than 400 career pass attempts. Felder, yes. does that worry you? Yeah. Or how do you balance the worry and the excitement? Very inexperienced um, compared to some of the other quarterbacks, guys that were multi-year starters. But the big key for me when I look at him, obviously, the first thing that comes to mind is Cam Newton, right? A huge guy. But the big key for me, and we talked about this accuracy, and I'm going to go ahead and give it, I'm going to give it an A. Um, we talked about the accuracy issues. It's about footwork. It's all those things. But the key for me, and I mean, goodness gracious, watching these things. Yeah, right. Look at the way. that. Did you see that guy make a business decision? <laughs> that DB was like, no, 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 not me. Not today, dog. No, 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 no. And the cool thing for me about Anthony Richardson is he understood the assignment. He understood what he needed to do. He understood that he had to prove that he could be a better, more accurate passer during the draft process. He showed it at the combine. He showed it at his pro day. And so we see all those things take place. He, he understands what he needs to improve about his game. And self-awareness is one of the best things that you can have as a prospect. And I love that about him. Uh, Micah, your, your gut feeling here, him and Jonathan Taylor, if they're running the option right at you, man, that's a tough one to figure out. Yeah, um, I don't. I don't necessarily love the pick. Okay, like he said, I don't. I don't want to be. I think the Justin Fields and the Jalen Hurts and those guys made this pick more valuable than it was. You know that threat of the legs and what's right. going on in the league right now. Guys, is going to be more be able to evade. You think but, this might almost be a reactionary to a trend in the NFL, right? Yeah, now? I think this is a reactionary pick. I don't see it. No other year would I see, think I would see a pick like what this. What scares you about Anthony Richardson? Just the lack of experience. You know, he doesn't have multiple years starting, you know. And this year, it wasn't like a absurd dominance where it was like a Joe Burrow year. Right. Or like it was like a Dwayne Haskins year. Right. You know, I didn't see that type of dominance in the air, a visual. Very hot and cold. Yeah, and you yeah. know, and, it, and, some, and like you said, sometimes not all the QB player, but sometimes... At a fourth pick, you want someone that's going to come in and, like, he's, he's our guy, you know, and we know that. And like Mike said earlier, they, they could be in the same position as the Texans where they're like, oh, well, if Richards doesn't go, well, now we're sending out a pick next year where Drake May mm. and uh, Caleb is right there for us. So, you know, I'm not necessarily extrauded, but I you can always prove me wrong. Yeah. I'm not tearing him down. I just think, you know. He really is going to have to show his true yeah. value at they're, four. They're in the same division, him and CJ, so they yeah. could be compared. Uh, we should have just asked Kurt what was going to happen because his quarterback rankings have now gone one, two, three. Uh, Anthony Richardson, Kirk, how, what, what do you think of this guy on that turf in Indy with Steichen's offense? I think everybody's takes there make a lot of sense. I think that Steichen's offense, the RPO game, is going to be a, a positive for him, especially early in his career. I think the Cam Newton comparisons are fair. I also think that uh, his upside, it probably even goes beyond Cam's in terms of what he ran the 40 and what he did at the combine, the arm talent. It probably is even more than what Cam's ceiling was. But as uh, Micah said, 
you want to see that absurd dominance that Cam Newton had at Auburn, and I don't know that 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 was the case for him at Florida, whereas Cam Newton was absurdly dominant <laughs> at Auburn. And so that's sort of the interesting part of it. When you look at his absolute best plays, it's off the charts. When you look at his absolute worst plays, those are also off the charts in the other direction, and so you have to weigh that. But the draft sometimes is about risk and reward. Just ask the Texans who traded up to, to, to make that move. I think when you feel like there's upside and there's a chance of doing something that could change your franchise for a decade, you're willing to deal with the risk and, and go for it. And um, I think that he'll certainly be an exciting player to follow in the next several years. Absolutely. Kirk, thank you so much. Uh, wow. So Anthony Richardson goes top five. The Texans trade up, take two mm -hmm. picks in the top yeah. four. And now we're sitting here at Seattle, who I have seen for the last three weeks, Jalen Carter, Jalen Carter, Jalen Carter. Mm -hmm. Felder, do you think that's where they're going to go here? I, it's a question of need. And I think they have more value and more of a true edge guy. And that's mm. Tyree Wilson to me. Mm. So we'll see how this shakes out. Jalen Carter, heck of a football player. He can probably play from a zero to a five, but they need someone that's probably better playing from a four all the way out to even maybe that wide nine. So this mm. is going to be an interesting pick, whether they pick the player that they think is better or they pick the guy that fits into what they need. This is a Seattle team that everyone thought was going to be awful. Everybody thought they were going to be awful. Mm -hmm. Then they end up going to the playoffs, taking on San Francisco, losing in the divisional round. I know you love Jalen Carter, yeah. like a lot. Yeah. yeah. What is it about him that you would take all the off-field things and not even worry about it? It's the true dominance. Like, I don't care, you know, understanding where Jalen comes from, that type of stuff is going to happen. And he's just going to need great mentorship. And Seattle's a place I feel like handles guys like that well. And you have the guy who handled USC's team in the prime. Pete, Pete oh, he yeah. handled everyone. He yeah. handled the wrestlers. <laughs> like, you're talking about a guy that can control those type of behaviors and l send him in the right way. Mm. And then you're talking about who they're going against in their division. You're talking about a 49ers team who dominated them yes. in the run game. Yes. Not the pass game, the run, run game. game. I think you have to go Carter if you're talking about run and pass rush ability to get to those Brock Purdy's, Trey Lance, and slow down McCaffrey. I think inside out, he could play a zero, a three. Right. Wherever it is, I think Jalen Carter could be that guy. He's that guy. Renner, if it's not Carter, who else could it be? Man, if it's not him, I don't really know who else you go at this point. I, I don't think they draft corners. Card. I don't think they really draft corners that right. highly. They usually right. hit on guys later in the yeah. draft. Tyree Wilson I could see, but I think his foot injury could cause him to drop still, like right. only just got medically cleared this month. It really feels like Carter. A after that, maybe you could go offensive line, but you just got your two tackles last year. All your help There's no the chance interior. they're going Levis, is there? So I, I, no. that, I that one's the one that's like a wild card where he goes because they of already Gino, saw Drew Locke. Gino's contract is such that it's more of a one year and then, hey, we'll see. And so they could go that route, but I, just Jalen Carter makes too much sense. He's too good to pass up at this point. When you're, you're competitive, right, the NFC is open. It yes. is not like the AFC. There, there is not the sort of juggernauts uh, left and right at the quarterback yeah, it's position. It's Dak and Jalen. And hey, Mike, that NFC ain't open, bro. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that NFC ain't open. Playoff spots are open. Maybe not the Super Bowl, but the playoff what was spots the, are open. What was the John Morant line? I'm not worried about the... Uh, yeah, yeah, he said, I'm not worried about nobody in the West. Hey, 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 listen, I understand the AFC got some boys, they got but we got some boys too. Don't, yeah. like, don't, don't just sleep on us like that. Like Seattle's interesting because of all of the picks they have from the Russell Wilson trade. So this pick was a Denver Broncos. Right. Uh, pick. Uh, they have the fifth and 20th pick in the first round. They also have two picks in the second round. So this is a Seattle team that made it to the playoffs and has four picks in the top 52. They could really do damage. If we're looking big picture here, Renner, where else do they want to fill in if this is a Jalen Carter? Yeah, I think anywhere along that defensive line, they need to address cornerback. They need to address also could go forward thinking. I know they signed Bobby Wagner, but he's obviously probably a one-year deal. Could go linebacker as well. And then they also need a wide receiver. Everyone's saying in their second first-round picks, right. probably where they attack wide receiver. But where they need wide receiver is a slot. And there's one slot receiver in this draft class that's about as safe a pick as it gets, and it's Jackson Smith and Jigba. So mm. I, I don't think anything's really off the board here for them. There are still a good number of needs on this. I'm going to give my first opinion. I feel like there's a lot of different pass rushers that might be there at 20. I don't think there's a Jalen Carter that could be there at 20. Exactly. And I think there, 
This seemed like, and I don't know if you feel this way, Micah, there was like six or seven guys that were seen as special. We've seen four of them come off the board. I think Bijan Robinson's one of those guys. I think Jalen Carter's one of those guys. Mm -hmm. After that, like you were one of those guys. I feel yeah. like there's a drop off in terms of elite talent. Yeah, I think overall of this class, I don't think it's as elite as last year's class or my class. I think last year, my class at least, it was like, you can't go wrong inside the top 15. Wow. Wow. Okay. Okay. In many people's mind, the top cornerback in the draft, but I agree with Renner here. They normally go later in the draft for corners. But how about this? The Seattle Seahawks are going corner in Devin Witherspoon out of Illinois. 5'11", 181, Seattle trying to channel back in the Legion of Boom. Consensus All-American, Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year, Defensive Back of the Year. Started off as a zero-star recruit, defended 17 passes last year, only allowed one catch of 20 or more yards. Renner, Lovey Smith said, toughest guy on the team, pound for pound, no one works harder. What do you think, though, taking him in at five here? I love this guy's tape. He was the top-ranked corner on my board. I, I comped him to Darius Slay just because the way he plays man coverage is, is just he doesn't back down from anybody. He, he allowed one yard in press coverage this past season. One yard all season. Wow. Now, in the Big Ten, wide receivers, you sure. can whatever. Right. But one yard is one yard on over 100 coverage snaps in press coverage. Only 206 yards all season long, and 40 of them came on a busted play. This guy got after it, and when he did lose, he was back in your grill. Johnny, the next play he hits. He's got enough speed, enough athleticism. Size was the only thing here. 5'11", 181 at corner doesn't usually go top five. Doesn't and usually go top ten. It's not very Seattle. It's not really Seattle, but they've right. kind of changed. They're not pure cover three the way they used to be right. in the old you know, Legion yeah, now of Boom under days. Clint Hurt. They're doing a little different, and he's a great compliment to Tariq Woolen, who's a size freak. You get the guy who can guard the speed, your shifter guys on the other end, and you profit. Great. I'm going to go I'm going to go A, flat A. He's going to go A. There we go. Listen, I'm going to go B because of the value, but the big key for me is I love what he's able to do. We talk about him in playing in press, talk about him playing in man, but the reality for me is I thought he was really good in zone coverage. I thought he's probably the best zone corner that we saw. And obviously you're going to see him play some press, but you see him you see him bail right there. This is a guy that can track the ball really really well. He runs down his troubles. You mm. see that right there. Wow. I love like if you he didn't give up on that play. He ran down his troubles. He was beat. I love the fact that he can blitz. I love the way that this guy triggers. I just think it's a little early for the position. But again, that's something we talked about off air. Yep. Position is an interesting point because Whew. it's where people value people. But I love the way that he triggers. It's really cool to watch a guy trigger. He's a one-stepper is what we would call him, right? He's a one-stepper where mm -hmm. when it's up to him, when, he, when, when he's ready to break, one step and Got go it. back in the other direction. I absolutely love it. Question for you is the fact that they took him over Jalen Carter. What do you think? Uh, I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it because now we know Seattle's DBs are set for the next seven, eight years. Yeah. They don't have to worry about a corner. I mean, this guy, even though he may not have the same impact that Jalen had, he has the same impact in the backfield. Now you have two young ball hawk corners. Yep. You you don't have to worry about them. They're going to be sitting you're on the back. rushers more time. Yeah, they're, you're going to sit on the back burner. You don't have to worry about a big payday trying sure. to bring someone in. And then you're talking about a guy – uh, 49ers are one of the known teams in screens. He's going to come down and hit. Uh, He's going to be dominant on the outside, uh, which they've been missing. So I'm, I'm really not mad at the pick. I think this is a great value pick. If you know you have a guy, you have a guy, and he compares Slay, I think more Ramsey. I think you can play him inside or out because the way he's able to hit and blitz. So uh, I think you have it all over, anywhere in the back. Uh, and, and when you factor players. in adding in Julian Love and free agency, now mm -hmm. you have three corners that can really match up. Uh, I want to go to A.J. Brown, who might have to face off with Mr. Witherspoon. When you're watching his film, thinking about going up against him, what do you see of him as a prospect? I think what stands out to me that is he's extremely physical. Uh, he's a well-rounded, complete DB. You know, those guys are really tough matchups uh, you go against every Sunday. Um, I like to compare him to Slay as well. You know, good, in and out of his breaks, you know, just, just tough, but just not, I said tough, but uh, just tough, just a long day in the office, man, and you got to respect those guys. I think this is a great pick uh, to go against, to go up with uh, Tyreek Woolen. You know, they got a couple pieces coming back. Jamal Adams is coming back. I, I definitely feel like this is a good pick for Seattle. 
Just like I think your backsplash above the stove was a great pick, too. Really classy <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I, I like the <laughs> I appreciate you, AJ Brown. Uh, we'll be coming back to you soon. Oh, so if I'm a Lions fan, yeah. I'm sitting here, and the last few Drooling. drafts, Drooling. one, they were able to get Aiden Hutchinson. He fell to them. Mm -hmm. A few drafts ago, they were able to get Penny Sewell. He mm -hmm. fell to them. Detroit's just been kind of taking the best player that's kind of fallen at what? Can you really say Aiden Hutchman fell to them? Yeah, no, I It was the second pick. I, I, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying Detroit has won... I love their offseason as well. C.J. Yeah. Gardner, Johnson. Th there's just a lot of energy right now. Yeah. They have to be sitting here going, we might get yeah. Jalen Carter at six. Yeah. Oh, wow. Dan right? Cam like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. wow. Yeah. Dan Campbell, kneecap guy. Kneecap. Go bite your kneecaps. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's scary stuff, man. And, I mean, they got Aiden. They got James Houston on the edges. I mean, I yeah. wouldn't be mad at that. But – I would be – they loaded back in on corners this offseason, so I could see a D-line pick here. They love the trenches. In well, I, I've seen Christian Gonzalez possibly right. a little bit. because because uh, they they let Akuda go. They, they let, let Akuda, Akuda go. So, you know, it's tough taking another – a top ten – Dan or top okay, five so corner, I think this is – I have a trade, and I it have is. a feeling that it's the Philadelphia Eagles. I have not heard anything. I know there's a trade. I'm just saying that if this is the Eagles coming up and getting Jalen Carter, I'm bro, I'm going to rub it in your face so hard, pissed. and I'm going to be respectful about it. I mean, for – No! Arizona is oh, trading up. So they you. must – they got all those picks. They got – they're either getting Carter or uh, – they're taking Carter. Yeah. Or they're going to take Wilson. So they just lost Watt. They lost Zach yeah. Allen in free agency. You're right. Coming up and getting Tyree Wilson, who they could have taken there at three, which makes sense. Right. Renner, do you already see it? No, I have it. But interesting for the Lions because they have another first rounder, two second rounders, and a third rounder so to move back and get more picks. So we got to see the turn. You're right. Detroit has six and 18, and in the second round, they have 48 and 55. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Loading oh, up. man. So Arizona back a lot of movement. Listen, we thought this could be a crazy draft. We yeah. had no idea. I don't think our – what, Micah? I told you it's not a big draft class. So you, you got to get the up, special guys. You got to go up to get those You got to get the special guys. Do you guys. think they're going Tyree? I think they – no, Jalen Carter's on the board. Take him. Wow. You can get this guy And six. the pick is in. I'm so nervous. Paris Johnson. There we go. Okay, so this there had been rumors that Kyler Murray wanted an offensive lineman. Apparently, this is the one that he liked a lot. And the value of getting Paris Johnson at six is a lot better than getting him at three and also scooping it up. Yeah. The left tackle for Ohio State and C.J. Stroud is coming to Arizona. Consensus first team All-American, 26 starts, 13 of them at left tackle, 13 at right guard. Yep. He is known as the father of the Ohio State offensive offensive line to trade back and to get him at six renner what do you think of the value there yeah i'm going b minus now they played Ooh. it really well it was a lot better than drafting him at three right yes but i do think they kind of backed themselves in a corner where they had to go get a guy in paris johnson who i think is going to be good i think he's also a project he had one year starting at left tackle played right guard the year prior and you just see him a little loose with his technique there you see his hands yeah. all over the place Grabby. feet and arms do not quite work yet in unison out in space, but the guy is a A-plus kid. He is going to figure it out. He's going to do whatever it takes to make himself one of the best tackles in the NFL. They kind of got a little bit of a logjam, though, now in Arizona. you got Josh Jones, who looked great at left tackle, filling in for DJ Humphreys. DJ Humphreys coming back from injury this year. Now you have three guys who are left tackles, kind of only. Humphreys never played right tackle. Jones was bad when he played right tackle. Weird fit to see how he goes in there, but when your quarterback makes a demand and you got to keep him happy and you're a new regime, I guess you got to go do it. You want to hear something awesome? 1999, mm -hmm. fifth round. You know who got drafted by the Arizona Cardinals? Who? Paris Johnson Sr., wow. this guy's wow. dad. Awesome. What wow. do you think of, of trading up and getting him here at six? I think the value is interesting. That's why I'm going to go ahead and go with that B- minus as well because wow. I wonder what that – but the pick is good. The pick okay. is good. Now, the question becomes, what is he, right? Because is he going to still play left tackle? Or are they going to have to kick him down inside? The worst case scenario is you're paying this much for a guy that might end up playing guard. And that's the part that's going to be really interesting for me because I know I talked to Joshua Perry. Joshua Perry played at Ohio State. He follows him very closely. But half of the footage that we have of him is at guard. Mm. So I'm very curious to see what it looks like. And that's the reason for the pick. So I'm very curious to, to watch, to find out where they play him, 
where he has success, yeah. and that's going to be the question if they gave up too much or if they if they got enough of, enough of a value. Micah, give me one second. Calais Campbell apparently, when you guys made your grades, was a little bit shocked. Calais, thoughts on the grades that they gave for Paris uh -oh. Johnson and also Paris? Yeah, I think you guys are, you know, you ain't giving him enough respect. I mean, this guy's a great athlete. You can see at the point of attack, he's strong. He has great movement. Um, you know, I mean, I know his technique was a little bit out of whack, but that's things you can coach. If you give me a good offensive line coach, you can get better at that each and every year. And the fact that he played right guard tells me he can play right tackle as well. So you mm, have position you flexibility, and your right tackle has to be pretty down. I mean, you have to be pretty good, too. Like, I mean, this day and age, I mean, we're going to go find the weak link, and we're going to go rush him. So he has to be stout there as well. So I think this is a great pickup. I think he's a great talent. I think with proper coaching, you could develop him and to be a really good player. Uh, Micah, you might be going and trying to rush to get by this guy. What did you think when you watched his film? Uh, I think Paris is really good. Uh, I love the fact that he could play anywhere on the O-line. Yes. I mean, that availability and mobility in the league right now is tremendous. I remember when uh, Tyron Smith came back and we had to bump Tyler Smith back down the guard, who yep. was a really good pick for us, and everybody said that was a bad pick, and he turned out to be a really good player for us. He was able to do it because of his athleticism. The athleticism, the way he's able to move, the way he can swing, is great for teams, especially not knowing what type of picks Arizona can still get because they still have another pick. Also, his arm length, what was your arm length? Yeah, I mean, my arm length is like a 32. <laughs> okay, his is 36 and an 8. Good grief. I hate people. You know, I hate, say it, say it. <laughs> I hate people like him, for sure. He can just stick it out and keep you at a distance. And he's athletic enough where he can fake. Oh, I'm here, now I'm bringing it back, yeah. now I'm yeah. sitting. He can play, he can manipulate the game. Right. So I think under the right structure, yeah. I think in the right coaching, he could be a really good player. And I mean, at this point, you got to protect Kyler. He can't keep running. What's, you know? what's yeah. also incredible no, about Paris Johnson, he, he was the number one uh, offensive lineman in high school. He worked out with Willie Anderson, Cincinnati legend, Bengals legend. Love Will. I know Willie. Yeah, he's been, Paris has been like the number one guy his entire life. Kyler has been like the number one guy his yeah. entire life. But uh, look, Kyler might not start the year. Let him kind of adjust into it. Pretty good pick. Uh, all right. Raiders are on the clock. Is there a team more perfect for Jalen Carter than the Raiders? Yeah. Do they? I've heard a lot of Christian Gonzalez to the Raiders. I have too. What are you thinking, Felder? I mean, I'm, he's there. This, tr this draft is crazy. It's nuts. And we said, what did we say? After the quarterbacks, those first two quarterbacks go, we get to see, we have to, the draft really starts. And so, for me, yeah, you come into this night thinking we're going to get Christian Gonzalez, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, there's guys that we didn't think we were going to be able to get that are available, Wilson. Uh, Carter, they're still there. Uh, you can wow. still you can still get an all. There's still offensive linemen that are there too. I yes. think we're going to see now that one's already off the board. I think we start to see those guys come off too. So it's a game of it's it's a game. It's a draft. The draft is about runs, and we haven't seen a run on defensive talent. Only we've only had one defensive player picked, right? Mm -hmm. Will Anderson. So and Devin, Devin Witherspoon. Witherspoon. Excuse me. Yes, and one defensive back pick. Uh, one defensive lineman, one defensive back. So the big key for me is if, if they're a team that that needs all they, – they've got a ton of needs. We saw that on the thing. They were 29th against the pass defensively. Yeah. They were last in the – NFL or 30th in the NFL in sacks. Yeah. They were 26 in points allowed. And they're sitting here with Tyree Wilson and Christian Gonzalez on the board. Renner, uh, I'm going to put and you in, in the role of Dave Ziegler. What is – and Jalen Carter. How do you make a decision right now? Yeah, the interesting thing is, like, the two teams that we thought were, like, great situations for Jalen Carter, they passed up. Like, the Lions and the You're Seahawks right. were both situations, yeah. so m there may not be a lot of other teams willing to go to bat. So he may slide a little bit more Come than we all were thinking pre-draft. But Tyree <laughs> Wilson, to me, makes the most sense here. If I'm, you know, if I am Put him next to Max my Crosby. Because he is that long versatile that can learn from Chandler Jones. Chandler Jones is a very similarly tooled player Bingo. that turned into one of the most skilled edge rushers in football. All of a sudden, Tyree Wilson gets to share a locker room with that guy every day, pick his brain. That's invaluable for a guy who needs some development, still raw, and has everything, though, that you could want from a defensive end prospect. What do you think? I agree. Uh, the only thing with uh, Tyree, the foot, I think... Right. I think... Uh, you know, Raiders been missing a lot, so I think yeah. they play it safe with this pick. So what's um, safe? I think corner, Gonzalez, Porter, especially helping that back end. 
You still have Crosby, who's been dominant. You still have Chandler Jones. So there's no reason to rush on to, uh, you know, edge. But the only way Jalen Carter makes sense, it, and I think they might stay away from it, because it's like, can you handle Vegas with right. everything That's you've been in? That's a great – so you, 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 they can't you, get you gave us a speech earlier about how it's important to have somebody to check your ego and all that stuff. Do you really think it would be tough in Vegas? Like, is that a real, is that a real issue? Yeah, but it, it also comes down to self-discipline. Can you have that self-discipline? I know I had character, and I was like, I'm going to do everything in my possible way to stay out of trouble. Right. And – because I only get this opportunity one time. And, you know, you do got guys like Max Crosby. I look at Max as, like, oh, a big he bro. Is, yes. He's a great dude. And he even he talks to me him. about staying on the right path. Yeah. And, you know, everything Max has been through. I think he can get his hands on Jalen. But it's still it's a still risky Vegas. situation. It's yeah. Vegas. Like, anything happened in Vegas and they've been yeah. missing. So I think they might play it safe and go DB here. Um, knowing you the have a dominant is probably, what, Skaronsky? Skaronsky is without a doubt yeah. the Skaronsky, I think O-line or DB, for sure. Yeah. They play safe. I, listen, I think Skaronsky would be a great pick for them. This is a team that has to reset anyways, and they're figuring things out. But Christian Gonzalez, okay, here we go. Let's do it. Let's see. I'm so nervous. Tyree Wilson. Tyree Wilson. They are not afraid of the foot, and they get what some people – there are some people that say Tyree Wilson is the best pass rusher in this draft. The Las Vegas Raiders – Sitting there at pick number seven, and they go with 6'6", 271 Tyree Wilson. First team All-American, first team All-Big 12, 32 tackles for loss in 28 starts. Ooh. A pass rush win rate of over 22%, which is unreal. Some foot injuries. There were rumors maybe he can go at two. He goes at seven, Renner. What do you think of the value here? Yeah, Wilson has the uncoachable things you want for a defensive end. I think it's fairly good value, but the things he has are, are the things you just won't find in every draft. He has over a seven foot wingspan. Wow. He has yeah. a get off, or a, a want to that is unmatched. The guy plays with his hair on fire every single snap, did not come off the field for Texas Tech, goes into contact with bad intentions, and then the way this guy finishes plays is unique among guys that size. I have not seen a man at the collegiate level tackle as well as he does outside of his frame being that big. Usually those guys are a little clunky in space. No, he is smooth. He finishes at ball carriers routinely. Still a project though, mm. you know, still working along. He's a fifth year guy coming out, transferred from Texas A&M to Texas Tech over the course of his career. And it kind of was every step of the way got a little better, a little better, a little better until now he's a top 10 pick. If he continues that in the NFL, you could see something special. What do you think, Felder? What's your grade, by the way? We're going to go with a – I'll go B plus. For B that. plus. Okay. I, I love this guy. I think, obviously, not a lot of folks are watching Texas Tech football. That's why people <laughs> are surprised when they see his name pop up. Yeah. But for me, uh, when we watch him play, you're going to get to see some stuff. I'm glad you guys brought up Chandler Jones because I think that's a really good comp here where it is a guy that has that length. It is a guy. But the cool thing, look at this. Hey, man. And you know it's real. He got those, his pants are up above his knees. He knows he's got some speed. He knows he knows how to play. And I love that right there. Coming down, that's effort. That's understanding. That's energy. I love that. Here, what you're going to see. Look at this guy. Make yourself a little skinny. Nope, nope, nope. Okay. I'm still going to keep working. And that's the that's the effort that you were talking about, Renner. It's the idea that this guy never stops. He's got a, he's got a clock that just keeps going. Mm. And then you see there that tackling ability, uh, as we saw. So I think Chandler Jones is a great comp. I think the big thing for me, I'm going to give this one an A, because remember, this is a guy that a lot of people had going in the top five. Yep. You're going to be able to get him, where, at seven? Okay, let's yep. go. What do we think about this player, Micah? Uh, definitely a working project. Yep. Um, he's, he's playing a lot in a two-point. If you're going to play in a two-point, you got to be a little bit more on the speed side. Yes. But definitely the tangibles you look at is there. Uh, you could say the Chandler Jones. I, I mean, it fits well with their prototype with Max Crosby. Right. They like tall defensive ends. Uh, I think that'll be a nasty three-head rotation. He can learn from these guys. That's the difference. Like, he has Chandler and Max he can learn, learn from. from. So that's a huge win for yep. the Raiders. And you're looking at, like, Chandler. He probably he has two, one or two years left on his right. deal. Yep. So you got a guy who's going to learn from him from a year and then walk right into a dominant job and Bingo. be a dominant factor. And, and you're facing twice a year Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert, mm -hmm. you need to get after the yes. quarterback, 84 and a half inch wingspan. Shh. Calais Campbell, you watch this guy. I'm watching Tyree Wilson lift up the commissioner right now. What did you think when you put on Tyree's film? 
I mean, so I start with violent hands. The man plays with violence. Yes. And then you see him standing up and like, you know, I'm a six eight guy. You know, I came out in the league. I was two seventy two. He's uh, you know, two seventy one. Yep. And I see this athleticism. I'm like, man, this dude is freakishly athletic. Because if I stood up like that, you know, I'm falling down. Probably fifty percent of the time, <laughs> but this guy comes in and is throwing guys, spinning around, you know, getting to the ball carrier, and he's a great tackler. You know, I feel like, um, you know, uh, I mean, this this guy is really a top two, top three, you know, uh, talent in the draft, and for you to get him at seven, you know, that's a great pickup. Renner, uh, thank you so much, Calais. I, it's so funny when you think about height and weight, and you yeah. go, wow, he's like the same, he's like around the same weight as Calais, but the difference in skill. What were you going to say earlier? I was going to say, so he mentioned they're the same size coming out. Calais obviously trends then more towards the middle as his career goes on. Yeah. And on the interior, I think you can get Wilson to see the field when Chandler Jones is on the field, when Max Crosby is on the field right now because he has that interior versatility. He played mm. some on the inside. So it's not just like, a, oh, wait two years until Chandler's gone. It's like a, hey, tomorrow we can get all three of these guys attacking quarterbacks. Okay, I'm freaking out because I just keep looking at Jalen Carter on the board and the Eagles are coming up. So, can we look at Renner's Chicago big board? takes him before him. You think so? Oh, yeah. Oh, you just, you're just nervous. <laughs> Chicago has to you're take him. You're just nervous. <laughs> you're just nervous. Let's look at the big board because Atlanta is up. Atlanta has been mocked throughout this process. Uh, maybe they go corner. Right. Maybe they're the team that takes B. John Robinson. We still have two quarterbacks left. Uh, Will Levis, Hayden Hooker, not in this range. Jalen Carter is the one that's falling right now. Atlanta really doesn't need offensive line help. They do need defensive line cornerback. Mm -hmm. You still have Christian Gonzalez. They did trade for Akuda, which could be a, a move here. Uh, Renner, what are you thinking right now? I'm thinking I saw who it was. You did? It is. Do okay. It's the B word. B. Wow. John. It's the B wow. word. They've been, they've been linked to him all, all they week. They have been all week. Wow, this is Ooh. actually my worst case scenario right now as an Eagles fan. <laughs> if it goes Bijan and then Jalen Carter right before oh, that, that'll be I'm real be bad. Sad. Um, all right. Wow. I Atlanta, the last few years, has invested in stars on the offense. First of all, they went Kyle Pitts. Yes. Then they went out and got Drake London, and now they get the running back in the draft, B. John Robinson, unanimous All-American, Doke Walker Award winner, averaged over six yards per carry, and last year, nearly 1,600 rushing yards, 18 touchdowns, and he also had 19 catches, and they said he caught a lot more in practice. To get him here at eight, Renner, what do you think? This has Arthur Smith, head coach there, his fingerprints all over it. You go back to his time with Tennessee, and when he had Derrick Henry and how he had that offense humming. He goes to Atlanta. They were the run heaviest team in the NFL last year and weren't even like ahead in a lot of games when they're running a ton. That is their identity. They want to run the football. They're going to run the football. They want that threat. They want that guy in the backfield that every single other defense, every time he's out there, has to account for. And that's B. John Robinson. He is, to me, as clean a running back prospect as you'll see, whether it's vision, contact balance. He broke 104 tackles last year. Wow. That's the most of any player in the last nine years in college football. Home run speeds, maybe not elite, but he ran in the four fours. Like there is just not an aspect to his game that I would worry about when translating to the NFL. And that's why Arthur Smith wants that guy behind a now good offensive line yep. that they have in place. They got the makings of the one of the league's best rushing attacks. And what grade are we giving it? We're, we still can't go too high because that immediately makes them I believe a top 12 highest paid running back in the NFL to get drafted mm -hmm. where he is. The value, I'm going to go, I'll go B minus with that. He's a damn good player. You're getting a dude. Yeah. It's just you're passing on other dudes. Yeah, that's the thing. That's... You're passing on Jalen Carter's. Mm. 3,400 career rushing yards, fourth all time in Texas history behind Ricky Williams, Cedric Benson, and Earl Campbell. And he did that in just three years. Right. Is he a Felder guy? I love him. I absolutely love this player. I don't love him at this pick. But I love this player. He reminds me. I see, I see we've had LaDainian Tomlinson up there. I go with Reggie Bush. Reggie Bush. That's why he wears number five. Yeah. Reggie Bush was ahead of his time. Reggie Bush could do, did all the same stuff that B. John's doing. They just know how to use him now. And that's the difference. They didn't know how to use him. And he's going to be a lot more valuable in the NFL because he's someone that can play in the slot. He can play in the backfield. He can play in a two-back backfield. He has a lot of ability. And you see him there. He's strong through contact. I love I love his game. I, I have to, I'm going to go B+. Plus. Because you are getting something that you can use. And by the way, Arthur Smith, he played offensive line. He's worked on that offensive line. Mm. You know who Arthur Smith played college football with? Me. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 
<laughs> I've also been told that I kind of look like Arthur Smith. So maybe we'll pull up a picture of him later and, and go a little split. Do I look like Arthur Smith? I don't know. Uh, you, you went to the same school as Saquon. Yeah. I've heard him also compared to Saquon. What I do you, see it. What do you think about him on the Falcons? Uh, I like the pick. I think, uh, in a, you know, in the past, you know, three years, they've been very devoted to this offense. Right. Last year, they take a top 10 wide receiver, Drake London. The year before that, they took Kyle Pitts at four. And now they're taking Bijan. Obviously, they're trying to surround their team with young right. talent and load it in. I mean, you know, people hate the, you know, I could see where I you would take, you don't want to take a running back early, especially with the trend. Running backs aren't valuable, but at his point, guys like Saquon McCaffrey, every down yeah. backs are valuable. Right. He catches, he runs, he's elusive, he he moves well. You know, you could use play action with him. He's an every down back. Yeah. Those guys are those top 10 selections. So I'm not necessarily mad at it. I yes. see why everyone's upset with it. But, I mean, he hasn't faced a lot of adversity with injuries. Healthy. He's the best back on the board. Yes. I don't hate the pick. And now now you can finally stress the field. Now you're not – they can't focus in on Drake and Kyle. Like, right. for, you can't just say, well, you. I know you can't beat me in a running game. And you give someone – on the opposite end with Cordell. Yeah. You know, so now I love where they're going with this offense. It's dangerous. And it, it's looking dangerous. So Atlanta has gone young offense in the draft, and they loaded up in vets and free agency. Jesse Bates at safety. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. They went Bud Dupree, Jeff Akuda, and one of those also was Calais Campbell. I'm so Calais Campbell joining us now. You have a new teammate in Bijan Robinson. You know, I can I can see him running the other team's defense in the ground and giving you guys a break, huh? Yeah, you know, uh, I mean, I say this. Arthur Smith's going to get the best out of him. So I feel like for him, he went to the best place he can go to. I know, you know, running backs aren't usually drafted in the top ten. And, um, you know, when they are, they better be special, you know. And I, I was a part of the Jaguars when they drafted Leonard Fournette fourth. Right. And we went to the NFC Championship, uh, NFC Championship game that year, you know, and that was that was pretty cool. We were up, you know, 10 points, you know, in the fourth quarter against the Patriots, you know, when the Eagles ended up winning it that year. Uh, and so it's kind of crazy how, like, these, uh, the, you know, the years are kind of similar, you know. Wow. I, you know, I, I took a chance going to Jacksonville, now I'm taking a chance going to Atlanta, and I see the potential, oh. I see the, the talent that's there. And I'm like, man, I think this is going to be a huge pickup, but I think this guy is special. I watched him on tape, I'm like, wow. Like, his contact balance, his vision, his, uh, you know, change of direction. And then he has speed, yeah, that, that initial burst, which is huge. And I know Arthur Smith's going to use him the right way. And I feel like, in, you know, in football, in playoff football, you know, uh, it's run the ball, play good defense. Even though you need a quarterback who can make the proper throws in those crucial moments and uh, go get the two-minute, uh, you know, points on the board. You know, and I think we have that with, with Desmond Ritter. So, I think this is a great pickup. Calais is saying I'm he's excited, feeling baby. a Super Bowl run. Micah, you laughed at that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We have a trade. We have a trade. And it is the Eagles. What do you? Who told you that? Don't worry about it. Inside sources, we have a oh trade. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm putting all my uh, notes uh, away. Uh, are you telling me the yo. Eagles are going to move up and take the best player in the draft, Jalen Carter? I am. I, now, you're talking about another guy who knows how to control Oh, hold players. on a second. Is it happening, Micah? It's happening. Oh. It's how we do it. We're sick. I'm sick. Woo! I'm sick. The oh. Philadelphia Eagles, I'm baby. Sick. Move it up. I'm One sick. pick to take Jalen Carter. I'm sick. Wow. I can't believe Chicago did that. Wow. I am just sick. Wow. I am just sick. One more time. Wow. <laughs> A first team All American. God, he's violent. Oh, he was able to dunk in fifth grade. I am just sick right Apparently, now. Apparently, he would have <laughs> been like Zion if he kept playing. He went to the same high school as Warren Sapp. He blocked two extra points and one field goal. Oh, guess what? On his tape, Micah, he played next to Trayvon Walker and Jordan Davis, and he was the most disruptive guy on the film. And now you get to face him twice a year. Jalen Carter's a fa How do you feel? I'm just sick. You're sick? I'm just sick. Can I tell you that your sickness is making me feel even more I'm excited? Just, I'm just so sick to my stomach right now. Not only does he have veteran uh Next to Fletcher Cox. Well, it's Fletcher him and Jordan Cox. Davis for like the next five yeah. years. That is just... Don't y'all just have Nicobe Dean? Oh, yeah, Nicole, we're, nah, we're Nicole just Dean. Georgia North. I, yeah, I just think the Eagles uh -oh. like Georgia. But I'm just sick. I'm just sick to my stomach right now. I'm just sick to my stomach. I can't believe that many Come teams here. passed up on this. Just... Come here. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. <laughs> E-A-G-L-E-S, -S, Eagles. I'm just wow. truly just sick right now. Wow.
I just. Uh, you know what? Before we do the pick, let's go to AJ Brown. Uh, AJ Brown, hey, how you doing? Eagles fan Adam Lefko here. Uh, Jalen <laughs> Carter is now your teammate, and people say he's the best player in the draft. And how he moved up to get him at nine. Your thoughts? I would definitely say, <laughs> Micah. I know you want. I know you just just be a Philadelphia Eagle at this point. I know you <laughs> want to be a part of this great this great organization. Bro. Come on. He got Fletcher Cox, Hassan Reddick. Uh, Jordan uh, Davis uh, to go to go along with man the defense is is, is then, crazy right now and then the value man, of on. it they Hargrave <laughs> who just got eighty five million and, and we, now you're come now on, you're gonna man. pay someone for twenty you know yeah. the value I'm come just on. so shocked nine teams eight teams let Jalen Carter fall to nine for this come on like, man come on bro it, 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 just just come on over just how are we talking over? for sure I don't think how we talking a number. <laughs> The value of that pick is crazy. You let <laughs> Javon Hargrave, a 10 plus sack, D tackle, oh. go. You get signed for 85 and you get the value of 20. I mean, that's an A plus pick. I, I, like, AJ, I'm sick, AJ, right? do I can't it with me. Oh, E. A plus plus. A plus plus. L. G. L. E. S. I'm just. I'm just. Oh, great pick. You know what? I want to ask Calais. Calais, your thoughts on Jalen Carter? What do we think about this guy? Yeah, I mean, he was the best player in the draft, in my opinion. You know, I think, uh, I mean, I watched him all over the tape last year, this year, and, I mean, by far he stood out amongst a whole bunch of great players, too. I mean, it's crazy just to see his uh, his his playmaking ability, his lateral quickness, his violence, his ability to, uh, I mean, he has he has every, every tool in the toolbox. To me, I feel like uh, the rich got richer because the Eagles already had such an incredible D-line, and then they bring this young guy in, kind of, you know, learn from and kind of replace Fletcher Cox, you know, over the next couple of years. And, uh, you know, I mean, honestly, he's the one guy where I feel like he's probably, you know, one of the best D-linemen I've seen in probably like four or five years. And, uh, you know, I think he's going to be one of those guys that can be holding a, a gold jacket one day. You know, I know that's a big statement. Wow. Some early, he, had, he has proven anything in the NFL. But what I see him in college, and what I, you know, and I, and I watch a lot of college football, you know, he has a chance to be that guy. Can I, can I get an ISO really quick? Can I get an ISO? <laughs> Micah Parsons is so sick. AJ Brown is ecstatic. Calais Campbell just said that this guy could be wearing a gold jacket. Need a cold shower over there? Oh, uh, this, this, is, this is one of the greatest nights ever. Uh, Renner, the value uh, for Jalen Carter at nine. I, I have to echo everything Calais just said in that he's the most talented all-around DT I've seen in eight years of doing this. He, he just, wow. he has everything. He has the get-off. He has the hands. He has the power. It's just, are you going to get the effort, right? Because listed at 300 by Georgia, goes to the combine 314. Three weeks later, it's pro day, 323. Mm -hmm. Here, you're going to get a guy who's going to show up to work every day, but he's in the perfect spot to do it. He's with his teammates that were there at Georgia when he was at his best, Nicobe Dean, Jordan Davis, the three most impactful guys on that Georgia defense that was the best modern college football defense. Howie Roseman continues to prove that the draft ain't that hard. You just have to pick up, you just have to pick up the edges when they pick fall the to best you. Guys. <laughs> and he picked up the edge when it fell to him. Your grade. A plus, my lord. Yeah. I mean, Felder? Yeah. I mean, what do you, what do you want to say? Like, this is amazing. Like, it's unbelievable. Yeah, I'm going to give it an A+. Plus. I'm waiting for his grade to go down. So I can put my grade up. <laughs> but the reality for me, um, watching him play, is he was just a guy. And I had Aaron Donald. I see we have KK Short on there for yeah. Renner. I got Aaron Donald on there. And the big key for oh. me is his, his ability, the plethora of moves. Obviously, he's someone you do have to you want to monitor that effort. But he's got teammates there. Guys that he already knows in the building that are going to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and give it my A+. Plus. I want to hear what Micah thinks because, obviously, not only are you going to have to play, your team's going to have to play against him. But when you watch him as a player, what did you think? Just as a player. Let's say, you know what, let's take the Eagles off the board. Yeah, let's, let's, let's not even talk, talk about Let's just I'll, talk I'll Jalen up. Carter. No, nah, bro, <laughs> even, I'm not, one, I might be sick to my stomach because I wish the Cowboys could have got this guy, but I'm, I'm extremely happy Right. For the situation. For him. Yes. Yeah. He's going to go into a situation where you can't double team. You got right. Josh Sweat. You got Hassan Ray. You still got Fletcher Cox. Jordan Brandon Zay, Graham. And they stay in a five-man front. And the value of what the Eagles have done, you let go of a $90 million a year. I mean, not a year. Yeah. $90 million contract guy and get a value. Now you have a guy locked for the next four or five years for right. 20 
25 million. I mean, just the value of all. I mean, I thought he was the best player in the draft. I mean, but like you said, what what guy are you going to get out of him? I think he had a leadership, his friends to have his back. Yep. He's not in this situation alone, and that's a great – like, and, and people forget that point. Like, a lot of people mess up because you don't have anybody in the NFL. Right. You're not, it's not like college where you're with your friends, you're, and you're, it's like back in yeah, college, hey, this. let's yeah. make sure we at workouts early, we're going to wake up, we're in a dorm room together. You're living alone, you're on your own, and some right. people struggle with that transition because in high school you got someone, college you have someone – and a pro is like, oh shit, I'm by myself. Like, yeah, right. So you know the fact that he has that leadership, his guys with him, who's going to stay on top of him. I just think this is just. A Let's go to his teammate pick. one more time, AJ Brown. You got more to say? Yeah, I can definitely just add on to to what Michael said. I speak on behalf of the Eagles or- Eagles organization. Man, we have some great guys in the D line room: Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, Josh Sweat. Man, those guys are leaders. We have great mentors, so I think it's a great pick for us. Uh, his play on the field is going to speak for itself, but, you know, those guys have done it at a high level, and those guys are going to mentor him. And, and like you said, he, he does have friends in the building. So uh, this is a huge pick for us. I know Micah. Uh, I know you're from Philly. You might as well just come back home, baby. Hey, 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 you know, we, we, hey it, we'll welcome you open arms because I know. I know. It just looks too good. you got to be a part of this. you hey, got to be a part of this. Hey, we got the D-tackle equalizer. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not too scared right now. We got the D-tackle <laughs> All right. equalizer. He going to neutralize anybody in front of him. Zach Martin. Zach Martin. It sounds good. Seven time good. all pro. How many Pro Bowls? We can't count them. Good. We got the equalizer. It sound good. <laughs> and that wow. is one person. <laughs> wow. We still got Hall of Famer. Amazing. Jalen, uh, AJ, thank you so much. Jalen Carter. Uh, that was that was uh, truly an iconic moment. Yeah, I, I, mean, I didn't think it was possible. I kind of wanted Bijan, but I didn't think Jalen Carter would be there, and he is. Yeah. Uh, now we don't know the what they did to move terms. up one spot. It's a fourth in 2024. That's all. That's insane. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> they I gave think, up a fourth next year. I think they go Peter. Bears go Darnell Wright, offensive tackle from Tennessee. Wow. Ooh. Wow. I'm mad at that. I was thinking Peter. I knew they were going to go O-line. I, I was thinking Peter as well. I was thinking Especially Peter. Coming from Northwestern already. But All right, I'm not so mad at this pick. Tenth pick, Bears move no down sacks. to make it. Darnell Wright, first team All-SEC. You're right. Did not allow a sack in 2022. And one of the guys he didn't allow a sack to was Will Anderson. 42 starts, played at right tackle, left tackle, and right guard. Double digits at both tackle positions for an offensive line that needs to make time for Justin Fields. This guy, to me, was the most physically impressive tackle I saw on tape. His ability to get off at 333 pounds. He's no spring chicken there. To be able to get off and find linebackers like that in space, you don't find that every day. And he plays with a little nastiness. He figured out how to use his hands a lot better this season. Three years as a starter before this, really wasn't considered a top prospect because his tape was that bad. All of a sudden this year, goes up against Will Anderson in that Alabama game, allowed one pressure all game long. He really took it to another level. Is just, are you going to get that guy, and is he going to continue to improve? Because there are still some things that he needs to improve upon. But this is a swing for the fences. When you have the rushing threat in Justin Fields, this is a guy who can collapse a line, a side of the line all on his own. And it's a little high for me. Okay. Just a little high, so we're going to go B. But I think he's a guy that if, if he hits, if you hit on this pick, it's a, it's a high-end hit. He has all pro type of potential. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, he reminds me a little bit of um, Iki Iquana. Mm. Remember that nasty guy coming mm-hmm. out of uh, NC State? Yeah. That's what he's got. He, 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 he channeled in that nasty streak in this last season. That's why he really has climbed up draft boards. This is somebody that I thought might be there later on in the draft uh, for, for teams in the 20s. Mm. But now he's already he, – this is a top, he's a top 10 pick now. And this is going to be really interesting to see how this takes, how it shakes itself out. But the Bears, there are three things that you can do to help your quarterback. You can build, you can build up your defense so that they get, he gets the ball back quicker. You can get him an offensive weapon, or you can go ahead and they got, they just got DJ Moore, right? Yes. So they went ahead and said, you know what, we're going to do, we're going to help him, help him out up front. We're going to help the offensive line. I think this is an A pick. He is a really good football player. I thought he would stick around a little bit longer. I'm very I'm very interested to see if we, this is the, is this the run? Is this it? Are we going to start to see Skaronski come off? We're going to start to see Broderick Jones come off. This is going to be really interesting to see how this shakes itself out. Micah, before I go to you, I want to go to Calais. Calais, you you had a chance to watch Darnell Wright. What do you think of him as a tackle prospect? 
Yeah, I, I think he's a great player. You know, I think uh, it starts with his ability to, I mean, pass block, you know, and, and he has, you know, contact balance, uh, good leverage, you know, uh, he's just a great athlete. And then, I mean, when I see him in the run game too, I feel like, uh, you know, he, he's a mauler in the run game. And I feel like this day and age, you know, when you want to go early for a tackle, you want somebody who can play both run and, and pass, you know, and has that balance to do both. Uh, I think he's just physical, you know, and that nastiness you got to have as an offensive lineman, especially top 10 pick. I'm going to get top 10 pick. I want someone who's just nasty, ruthless, you know, to try to finish guys left and right. And what he did against Will Anderson, I think, is really what, you know, what made him a top 10 pick, you know, because mm. that guy is just so special and dominated everybody. And for him to give it one pressure, you know, it was quite spectacular. But I think the biggest thing is he, you know, he's a right tackle, you know, uh, and I think that, you know, these days, right tackles are just supporting his left. And, uh, you know, he showed he can do, you know, in the run game, screen game, um, and pass game. I mean, he's, he's a beast. You've heard a lot of uh, thoughts here, Micah Parsons. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, great pick. Uh, like I said, Chicago was on a mission. You did exactly what you had to do. Yeah. Um, before the draft, during the draft, you want a guy like this. You know, Justin Fields isn't just a passer. He's a runner, too. Yeah. And Chicago likes to run the ball. So I, I'm not mad at this pick. He's a great run blocker. He's a great uh, pass blocker. And if you're able to shut down a guy like Will Anderson, you're, you're okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're talking about a team who just gave up two first to go get a guy. Yeah. You know, that's the type of level of guy he was able to slow down. And if you can do that at NFC, you're okay. Uh, you can say it was early, but he's a first-round talent. Sure. No doubt about it. So, you know, they got their guy, so that's all that matters. Pick is in. This is a team that we weren't – Oh, There it goes. And there it is. The Titans go, Mr. Skaronsky, the offensive lineman from Northwestern. There it Tennessee goes. is a team that is going through rebuilding right now, mm -hmm. and they know what they needed. Yep. The Tennessee Titans, a lot of rumors they might go quarterback. What could they do? They go a unanimous All-American, Big Ten Offensive Lineman of the Year, 33 starts at left tackle. The only yeah. tackle in college football with 830 or more snaps oh. and six or fewer pressures allowed going to this Tennessee team. Renner, what do we think getting him at 11? In my notes, I call him the offensive tackle version of Bryce Young. The only problem I have with him is the size. He has... 32 and a quarter inch arms. The that would tie the shortest arms of any tackle in the NFL. Braden Smith currently that holder for the Indianapolis Colts, their right tackle. I, I think he can play tackle though. He, the way he uses his hands is so crafty, so advanced. Uh, you just know you're getting a darn good offensive lineman with Peter Skronsky. And if you're the Tennessee Titans who have seen their offensive line with Taylor Lewan uh, obviously getting injured, yep. not being on the roster anymore. Jack Conklin obviously going a few years ago. You've just seen it degrade from those prime Derrick Henry years. Right. Need to get back to making that a strength because that's the identity of their football team. And Skronsky's just another, like I said earlier, you chalk up a W when you draft mm. a guy like Peter Skronsky. You know you're getting a good player. Maybe it's at guard ultimately, but even then, he's going to be a damn good one. Great. I'm going to go with an A-plus for that one. That's a great... Yeah, 11's pretty special. I got one thing here for you, Felder. Uh, it's in his family. Yes. His grandfather mm -hmm. was on that Packers offensive line for Vince Lombardi yep. that won five championships and two Super Bowls. This is a guy that it's in his blood. Mm. Yeah. And now he's going to a team that, when they were great with Vrabel, it was all the offensive line. What yes. do you think of him? Oh, I, I love this pick. I mean, this is a guy... I, th I had him as the best tackle. I thought mm. it was the best tackle. It reminded me a little bit of Jordan. It reminds me of Jordan Gross. I don't know if you guys remember Jordan oh, from Gross. Oh, Panthers back Yeah, in the day. but he played. But how long did he play? Ten years. Yeah, and he years. was very, very good. And the Panthers needed him. So that's why I go throw Jordan Gross on here. I think he is going to play tackle. I think the because he's so crafty with his hands, because he's so crafty with his footwork, because he has the ability to not get over his skis, and obviously you see there, pass that off, pick it up. And I think that the big key for me is that he's going to go somewhere that, yes, they need him. Yes, they want to use him in the, in the, in the run game, but he's also going to be good in the pass game. So this is, for me, with Peter Skaronsky. I am going to go A-plus. He was my number one tackle. I think he's really good. I think he's got such great play skill, play discipline. And I think that's important when you're going to be trying to Again, get back to running the football the way they had before. Work ethic is elite out of Baware. The uh, pass rusher that's also on Northwestern said facing him in practice was like playing chess. He knew everything that I was going to do. Yeah. What did you think about this guy on film? I thought it was, he was a great guy. Great pick. I'm not too worried about his arm length or anything like that because we've seen Rashawn Slater come out and go all pro, Same pro team. bowl. Same team. So you got to understand, he's a guy who's obviously worked with Slater. Um, he understands what it takes. A uh, guy who's seen it already. 
So I'm really not mad at the pick, and especially losing Taylor Luan, yep. releasing Taylor Luan. You also release a couple other guys. Rebuilding that offensive line for Derrick Henry if you decide to keep him. It's a great value pick, uh, A-plus pick for sure. Mr. Calais Campbell, your thoughts on Skaronsky going to the Titans? Yeah, I think he's uh, he was the, uh, the most uh, polished left tackle. You know, I think he's got the experience, right? And you see his game, you see his poise. You know, he doesn't really fall for a lot of the head fakes. He just stays in position, moves his feet, gets his hands on guys. And he's a, you know, he looks like he's already an all-pro uh, holder. Now, I won't say he's an all-pro player, but when he gets his hands on guys, he's a let go. You know, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a trait you need in the, in the NFL because we've got to break your hands down, get them off you somewhere or another. And I just see when he gets his hands on guys, they don't come off too easy. So uh, he's a guy you want to make sure you don't let him grab you. Um, but on top of that, I think he's just, um, you know, just, uh, I mean, a, a pure pass, a pass blocker, uh, physical. Uh, you know, I think he's, um, you know, the most solid and uh, safest left tackle you could have in the draft. And at this point, to get that at 11 is pretty special. Calais Campbell, thank you so much. Detroit is on the clock. Uh, they have two first-round picks. They have 12 and 18. If you remember, they were at 6. Arizona came up, took Paris Johnson. Right. They're now at 12. Mm -hmm. Do you already know, Renner? No, I do not. Okay. But I do think Christian Gonzalez, who a lot of people mocked him at six, the corner yeah. of Oregon, right. to still be on the board here. You can get, you can get both of the things you want. Exactly. Let's take a look at Renner's big board I think just tight to end. see. You think tight end? This early? Tight end. Okay. I mean, we can't say this early when we've seen guys like Noah Fant, yeah. Hawkinson, guys yeah. like that yeah. go early who in the draft. You go, if you were to go tight end, would you go Kincaid or Mayer? Kincaid. 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 I think Kincaid, like he says, the best. Tighter than draft. I've I I seen this man single-handedly take over games. Yes. Yeah. Inside out. Yeah. Going against Nichols. Uh, high point in the ball. I think Kincaid, after losing Hawkinson, I think, and you're talking about building on this right. team. Yeah. You got Swift. You got J-Mo. You got these guys around. I wouldn't be too mad at a wide receiver tight end right here, especially because how good your defense played towards the end of the year. I'm going to say that I'd be shocked if it wasn't Christian Gonzalez. Okay. I just feel like of all the players that I've seen in mocks for top ten, he's the only one that hasn't been drafted. Am I shocked? Uh, wow! Wow! wow. The wow. Lions go Jameer wow. Gibbs. There was discussions about whether wow. running backs should go in the top 10. We have two going in the top 12. Jameer wow. Gibbs from Alabama, 5'9", 199, second team All-American. Wow. Only one drop in 52 targets. Zero fumbles in Alabama at 195 touches. Let Alabama in rushing, receiving, and kick return yards. The man is absolutely electric. Wow. I wasn't expecting this. Were you expecting this? I was not wow. expecting this. I thought he could sneak into the first round. I thought he probably would. The back end. The back end. <laughs> 12 is not sneaking into the first round. That is a full first round stamp on him. He is electric, though. But the thing is, he's a little redundant to DeAndre Swift in that offense. They're both pass Woof, catchers first. Space backs. But you're not going to find too many more space backs better than Jameer Gibbs. 4-3-6 speed. Only two drops on 105 catchable in his career. Can go out and split wide and be a, basically a slot wide receiver if you want him to, even though they got a pretty darn good one there in Detroit. It's high, right? You have other needs on this roster besides running back, but you have the dominant offensive line in place. This was an offensive line last season that was a top three unit in the NFL. It is not going to take a step backward whatsoever with the talent they have, the young talent there. Guys like Penny Sewell, Jonah Jackson still ascending as players. They're trying to take that running game to a level that is unstoppable. Jameer Gibbs can maybe get you there. But I do just think they were so – there are other needs on this defense mm. besides that, that are they may be regretting come next fall. Process his mm -hmm. talent and the need. What's the grade? We're going to go – man, I'm going to go C+. Plus. Okay. C plus. Uh, Jameer Gibbs, I want to say, Felder, this man ran a 4-3-6-40, a 1-5-1 10-yard split. But I have to say, this is a team that already has DeAndre Swift and they signed yeah. David Montgomery. Yeah. Both of them are on the team. Makes you wonder, are they going to use him maybe as a slot wide receiver in some way? What do you think of this pick? Well, this guy kind of reminds me a little bit of Alvin Kamara, right? He has this ability to be all, he's a gadget piece all over the place. He can play him in the slot. You can, here's the thing, you, you keep mentioning they have DeAndre Swift. Put them both in the game. Yeah, what's wrong with having two DeAndre Swifts? Put them, put them both in the game. And the cool thing about that, and I'll, I'll, I would love after I wrap up, I'll, after I do my grade, I would love to hear Micah's thoughts on this. But if you put them both in the game with the tight end, that's that's 21 personnel. If 21 personnel, that means you got to keep your base package on the field. Mm. Except for both of these guys, they can run and make catches. Mm. 
Mm. So this is now it's a problem mm. for linebackers or for a defensive end or if it's a safety that's got to have kept to cover one of these guys. But they can sit there and be at the number three in theory and from outside to inside, one, two, three. But that means you might be matched up on a linebacker. I'm going to go. I'm going to go with B-plus here. A little early for me. Thought he was a guy that was going to sneak into the first round. Right. But he didn't sneak in. He came in and kicked the doors down. But, Mike, what do you think about that, like, them being able to manipulate it? I think he's definitely a matchup problem anywhere you go. I mean, you can't yeah. name too many linebackers who's going to stick with him. No. I could probably maybe count two or three, me, Fred, maybe Leonard, or, you know, some gadgets, maybe Jamin Davis with his speed. Right, or, right. You know, but, I mean, overall, he's a matchup nightmare. But the value of the pick, I'm not, like I said, like they said, I don't think that early was that, you know, outstanding of a pick, especially right. when you have DeAndre Swift and you have other needs and there's other talent, but – like I said, I don't think this draft is so loaded with that much right. talent or who they truly believe in. Yeah. And they, that, and I, they, we say that we say corner, but they sign like six guys in the back end. So you're yeah. like, man, if I can't get value out of these guys, and I mean DeAndre Swift's going to be up for a deal next year, so yep. you're possibly thinking, well, we let Jamal Williams go. Well, now we know we got Jameer Gibbs for the next three, four years. If that's the mindset they're thinking of future in the program, but. Uh, not a totally obsessed with the pick, but I think it was. Uh, I think he's a great player, and yes. he'll be around for a long time. And he's going behind one of the best offensive linemen in this, so it's no drop off for when he's been seen. Right. Can I just say this too? Can we just give some respect, to, put some respect on Georgia Tech's name too? Can yeah, just, two yeah. years at Georgia Tech. <laughs> Can we just do that too? Yeah. I know he went to Alabama. He's a freshman All America. Yeah, at Georgia Tech. but he was good. he was really good at Georgia Tech, and it's a very different system than Alabama. So I think there's some scheme versatility to his game. Yeah. Uh, Bryce Young went, Will Anderson went, uh, Jameer Gibbs, Gibbs now goes. That's three. Uh, what's, what's impressive, too, what's very interesting to think about Detroit's draft right now is they pass on Jalen Carter, they mm -hmm. pass on all those corners, then they go back down. I'm wondering if they're thinking about their 18th pick and they've done the math and they're like, we think some of these guys might last or there might right, be Right, based depth. on... What are you thinking, Renner? But it, wouldn't you think Jameer Gibbs would last? That's eight? what I'm wondering <laughs> is if you know, one of these other go. teams yeah. they, they were worried was going to take Jameer Gibbs. Yeah. But uh, their division rival, the Green Bay Packers, are now on the clock. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, that is the big story, officially now in the New York Jets. Uh, before we talk about the Packers, if we could bring in Kirk Cousins, uh, I'm just curious, Kirk, uh, what has it been like for you as a quarterback to watch Aaron Rodgers officially leave this team, get traded to the Jets? What was that like to watch? Kurt's happy. <laughs> well, it was kind of a slow process, right? I mean, he kind of toyed around with it for a while, and the team talked about it, and you weren't sure if it was going to happen or not. People would ask me, you know, what do you think is going to happen in your division? And I said, I really have no idea. And then uh, he made it clear he was intending to move to the Jets, but the trade didn't happen, so... It took a while, but um, it was kind of inching that way. And with Nathaniel Hackett as the OC in New York, I think it's a really good fit for him. You happy he's not um, on the I'm division sure he's anymore? Be very comfortable there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, certainly, you know, anytime you you have a Hall of Famer who was an MVP two of the last three years, I mean, that's that changes the neighborhood quite a bit when he leaves the division. So, uh, no doubt. Um, you know, we'll we'll take it. It will be Jordan Love's team. Thank you so much, Mr. Cousins. Uh, some of the guys at the Packers have been uh, rumored to maybe go after. Tight end, Dalton Kincaid is mm -hmm. a possibility here. Him. Offensive lineman, there are still a bunch on the board. Wright, Skaronsky have, have been taken off, but I, I feel like there is some depth here if they want to go a Broderick or something. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking, Renner? I, I got so the top four players on my board. Obviously, Will Levis at the top, but then you have Jackson Smith and Jigba, Christian Gonzalez, Lucas Van Ness, Dalton Kincaid. All four of those guys have a yep. role in Green Bay if one of them had the pick. And the, and the pick is in. And it's Mr. Wow. Van Ness. Wow. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to hear Micah's take wow. on this one. Uh, okay. The Packers. Officially, the pick that they got in the swap for Aaron Rodgers is in. Second team, all Big Ten. No starts, but he did have 13 and a half sacks. Grew up outside of Chicago. Well, now he's going to play for the Pack. Blocked two punts. Did not start, but he pretty much played starter-level snaps. Snaps. This is one of your favorite guys in the draft, Lucas Van Ness, now going to the Packers. Yeah, I'm a big fan of his game, and he's an ascending player. 272, you look at a 4.58.40. His get-off and how low he can sink into his bull rush 
is just rare and gives them a high floor in my opinion. You don't find too many guys with that ability, that kind of flexibility to just continually walk guys into the pocket. He just did not get stopped on those bull rushing reps and still young, only a true junior coming out, not played a ton of football. You see this guy's career arc could go through the roof if he gets some more tools to his toolbox. Still pretty raw, as you mentioned, not really even a starter there at Iowa this past season, but a really unique athlete. The Packers love unique athletes on the edge and now have two big, long, explosive dudes that are just gonna collapse the pocket from both ends and him and Rashawn Gary. Mm. Not a huge need, but a guy that I, I think really fits what they wanna do defensively now. Yeah, Joe Barry now has Kenny Clark, Preston Smith, Rashawn Gary, and now Lucas Van Ness. A lot of big dudes for a defense that was 26th in the NFL against the run. What do you think about this guy? What do you pick? Do you oh, grade? yeah, what's your grade? Oh, we're going to go A-plus here. I kinda, <laughs> uh, I kinda, I'm a Packers fan, and I love it. Oh, yeah. Are you happy as a Packers I'm fan? I'm very happy as a Packers fan, truthfully, because I think that's two guys like that, two big, long defensive ends the way they have it now is it, just a great great way to build a roster in my mm. opinion yeah no I love that you brought up Rashawn Gary being being long being a big guy too uh playing that position so I think that fits for, with him I don't think he's I don't know if he's as talented as, as Gary but no. again you see the production you see you did see the production I love the fact that they can kick him down inside which they've done a few times I like how long he is he does play have play with some good length I am surprised that he went this early if we're being quite honest yeah I am surprised uh, but I understand if that's what you're going for you you got to take your picks. And as Micah has said constantly, hey, it's not a super deep draft, not a super deep first round. So if this is a guy that you like, you thought you were going to get him later, you go ahead and get him now. So for me on this one, I'm going to go B plus on this pick. And the big key for me is just, I, I man, I don't, I don't, it, it, it is, it's, I get, listen, I'm kind of speechless, man. Like, I don't, <laughs> I, Yo, you're not the only one. You're not the only one. I didn't think because I thought he was good, right? But then to see this kind of meteoric rise be, after he ran that 4.58. Yeah. Like, he didn't play at 4.58. Not mm. when I watched him. It didn't seem like he, like, I'm sure he did a great job training for the combine and working on himself and doing all those things. But I didn't think he played that fast. I thought he played that heavy played that strong, but I didn't think he played that fast. I'll Mark. give you another reason why the Packers would want a guy like this. Dayton Cole Komet's sister, Bears tight end. Good trash talk. Get you the inside info, can <laughs> trash talk him a little bit. You tell me when he's lined up at 6 Tech, he's not going to give Cole Komet the biz. 4-5-8 at 272. Uh, Micah, the floor is yours. I don't love the pick. I mean, you can say you put him next to Kenny Clark, whatever – I mean, I don't think he's necessarily big enough to be. I mean, he is. I mean, if you put some weight on it, but then it takes away from the 4 5 eight, that I don't necessarily you put him on the same scale as Rashawn Gary right. talent-wise. Rashawn Gary is a Pro Bowl 10-plus sack a year guy, and we're talking about a guy who not necessarily hasn't started a game, and he's not a 10-sack a year guy in my eyes. I mean, even on some of the sacks, a lot this of his like cover sacks. This is the where I feel like you're really kind of stunned. Just because of the value of the pick and where he was right. taken, I, I when you, and we talk about drafts. I mean, at this pick right here, we're three picks away from where the Eagles trading got AJ Brown. Now that's where you talk about value pick, and you're what talking about were you 11. I was 11. So this is 13 right there. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Like, he, are you saying not, this is the though. same value of AJ Brown? Are you saying this is the <laughs> same value of like Rashawn Slater? Yeah. Like, and then like. You know, it, it, he it, he can become a good player. I get but it. you're talking about the needs you just let go. Aaron Rodgers, do you necessarily take another defensive player? Why don't you get another weapon for Jordan Love? Jordan Love. Yeah. You get him a tight end. You get him a weapon that's going to set Jordan Love in the right place. All right, we have uh, a trade. Patriots were on the clock. They have traded with the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Ooh. Steelers were sitting there at 17. They jump over Washington and the Jets to make this trade. And they are on the clock right now. So the Patriots and the Pittsburgh Steelers are making a trade. Uh, this Joey Porter Jr.? Oh, I was going to say it's got to be Broderick Jones, right? The, the last mm. tackle of the bunch. Mm, if You're jumping Jets who need a tackle, Commanders who need a tackle. That's a very good point. Because that it's all about runs. And I've heard from a lot of people that it, there's a, a few tackles. What were you going to say? Joey Porter Jr. is like a love story pick. 
Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Roger Jones yes, is a... Is. Project Jones is a make sense pick. <laughs> I mean, they took Penny Kickett off the love story, Pit the Pit, yes. yeah. sales, whatever. <laughs> Penny Pickett turned out to be pretty good. Yeah. Rookie year was pretty good. But that's the love story pick. Project Jones makes sense. You need help with Najee. You need someone that's right. going to protect Kenny. At the end of the day, you got to protect your offensive guys. You got to get push up front, and yeah. he's one of them guys. Yeah, you're right. It is a love story pick. Yeah, it's a love story pick. It is. I, and Joy's my guy. Ah. But. They need help more on that offensive yeah, line. I get it. Like I've been, I've been doing mocks, and I've just been doing it. And I'm just like, no, Joey Porter Jr. <laughs> he goes here. Mm. This is where he belongs. Yeah. This is where he's from. I need Joey yeah, to I'm wait like... twelve more picks. That's what we need. Twelve more picks. <laughs> <laughs> That's so now, what he needs. So now I'm sitting here. Like I, I think Broderick Jones makes a lot of sense right now. Absolutely. Uh, and now I'm sitting here after this. So let's say they do go there at 15. Christian Gonzalez is still on the board. Nolan Smith is still on the board. We're also watching the Will Levis fall. Mm. Yeah. So now I told you that. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I wasn't going to argue with you. Yeah. I was even surprised with Anthony Richardson, but off rip, I knew it was going to be just like last year. Right. We knew Stroud and Young were the guys. You got two guys. Anthony Richardson or Will Levis was either that maybe pick with right. uh, Indianapolis, knowing they wanted to start fresh and new. They weren't just going to keep bringing guys in. Right. But outside of that, there was no real need for QB. So and then, and then also we haven't, no had a, we haven't had the yeah. wide receiver. We haven't yeah. had the Jackson Smith and Jigba yet, and I think that'll come up soon. But I'm gonna say it's Broderick. Broderick yep. Jones, good there job, go. runner. Yes, um, you know what? You, you go out there and you do the love story of uh, Kenny Pickett, and you need to finally get him some help because the offensive line for the Pittsburgh Steelers in recent years has been rough to say the least. Broderick Jones, the pick for the Pittsburgh Steelers at 14. Uh, 19 starts, all of them at left tackle. Uh, ran a 4.97 40-yard dash, fastest among all offensive line at the Combine. And listen to this, 32 games played. Do you know how many holding penalties he, penalties he had, Micah Parsons? Zero. Ooh, wow. uh, Renner, your thought of moving up to lock in Broderick Jones. A little different than Tyler Smith last year. I think I like 20 yeah last year but Jones to me is the most impressive athlete out in space in this tackle class you, right. his best reps are him climbing to linebackers pulling out on screens you see natural athleticism for a 311 pounder that just doesn't last long in the NFL draft right these guys go yeah. highly because that's what the elite tackles at the NFL look like now only really a year and a half of starting at left tackle. There's a lot to clean up. When he went up against more skilled rushers, guys like Isaiah McGuire from Missouri, B.J. Ojolari from LSU, who will probably see drafted somewhere on day two, he had problems. Those guys gave him fits. Those guys probably won those matchups. So he's a little bit of a project if you're looking for help for Kenny Pickett right now. Right. But, again, this is, a, this is an investment. This is uh, – playing for the future here, knowing that with that division right now, you're probably a tick behind teams like the Ravens, teams like the Bengals. Right. But you got to get to them, get to a place where you can compete with them. Broderick Jones gets you there in time. Great. We're going to go with a – I'll go A- minus for that one. Uh, there was a drop-off in tackles. Yes. Do you think he was one of the last few elite ones left for the Steelers? Absolutely. I thought he was – Obviously, the best athlete at tackle. I saw that you had Donald Penn as a comp. That's fantastic. He is someone who is super talented. You just got to get him going in the right direction. And I think that's going to be the key for him is get him going in the right direction. I think that's going to be the Steelers' job. That's going to be a big part of it. And you mentioned that division. The scariest thing is the Steelers own that division for so long. Yep. And now the Bengals are not a joke. The Ravens are going to continue to be good. And the Browns are, the Browns seem like they're trying football. Yes, they are. So you have to, you have to get, they, you have to shore this up. I love it. It's a good pick. It's a smart pick. It's not the, it's not the heart pick, but it is an absolutely good pick. So I'm going to, he was my, I thought he was probably the most athletic tackle. I thought Skaronsky was the most technically sound. Mm. So I'm going to go A plus on this one because you get a guy that I thought was going to go in the top 10. Yeah. You're able to get him at 14. Mike, I'm going to come to you in a second. Calais, you watched this guy on film. What did you think? Yeah, you know, um, this guy is, um, you know, just, I think he's the best run blocker in, in, mm -hmm. of all the tackles I watched. 
he was the most physical in the run game. And I think Najee Harris has got to be looking at his chops, thinking mm -hmm. like, man, you know, we're about to pound the ball. And the way they played the last eight games of the season last year, uh, the way they pounded the ball and really won, and, I mean, I don't know how Mike Tomlin always does it, but he always yeah. gets these winning records, uh, you know, after starting the way they started, you know, but it's because they ran the ball well. You know, then it opens up for a young quarterback in the play action and get the ball where you need to. And I feel like this guy right here allows them to be so much better in the run game. I think it's a great pickup. You know, it fits. it's a scheme fit. What they do is what he does well. And I, 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 uh, I mean, um, if I was still with the Ravens, which I'm not, and, uh, but I know those guys there are, are going to be having their hands full because this guy can play in the run game. He's, he's physical at, at the point of attack. Thank you, Calais. Broderick Jones, they add him in the draft. They added Isaac Samalo from the Eagles. So they really are putting a lot of work on this mm -hmm. offensive line. What do you think of this guy? Uh, great pick. I thought he was very aggressive, athletic. That's what you need. Uh, Steelers are actually a really good screen team, especially with Najee. Um, and they like to get the ball out to their playmakers like Deontay and things like that. So great value pick. Yep. I thought it was a really good pick. And, you know, he's going to get better. Even though right. he might be a little sloppy, he's going to go against Cam Hayward, T.J. Watt, Alex Highsmith. So, I mean, he has talent. I mean, his division's loaded with Miles Garrett. Yes. I mean, he's going to have yeah. his hands full, but he has those guys he can get great work with in practice. So, I mean, great pick, fundamental. You're going to – you got time to get him up to the standard of minicamp, I mean, OTAs, and training camp throughout the year. So, I think he's going to turn out to be a really good I player. think the reason I love it the most is he was projected to go to the Jets at this next pick in every mock that I saw. And to, to go and jump them to lock it in with all of those young guys on offense, I, I think is genius. Yeah. Jets are on the clock right now. Of course, they go out there. The big news this week, Aaron Rodgers is joining the team. I have also seen them mock maybe Nolan Smith here. Nolan is still on the board. Mm. Jackson Smith and Jigba still on the board if they want to go wide receiver. Uh, where else could they go here, Renner? Oof, they could go Kalijah Kansi would be an interesting one that yeah. I've kind of put to them a few times when the tackle run doesn't, you know, goes ahead of them mm -hmm. because that defensive line already pretty scary but still has kind of a need at the defensive tackle position that could be addressed. Kalijah Kansi, a unique athlete, but a guy who probably can make an impact on third downs year one. You know, he is that skilled, that gifted as an athlete that you just put him in that mix. It, it takes your D-line from... I would say a top 10 unit, borderline top five, yep. to right up there with the Eagles for one of the best units in the NFL. What's your guess? Man, I love the idea of Nolan Smith. I think that he is super talented. We still don't know what he is, though. And so when we get, we'll, right. if, if he's the pick, we're going to get to talk about, talk kind of talk our way through it um, because of the way that he plays. But if it's Nolan Smith, it's Nolan Smith. I, I man, I just, Watching these things, these guys play like I, they've got it. The Jets got to figure something out, especially because the window is sh is closing on Aaron Rodgers. It's one, two years, two years. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's owed what like a hundred and four yeah. million dollars next year, <laughs> which is you're gonna get that money. It's gonna be sweet. Just Probably. don't forget us, okay? I won't. <laughs> okay. Uh, key additions for the uh, the Jets, uh, obviously Aaron Rodgers. They also added two wide receivers, McCole Hardman and Alan Lazard. A little familiar action for Aaron Rodgers. Oh, yeah. Uh, Quinton Jefferson on the D-line, Chuck mm -hmm. Clark at safety. Uh, they did lose Sheldon Rankins, uh, which makes me kind of think, Sheldon Rankins, maybe a three technique. Uh, what could they do here? But Jets are on the clock. Micah, what's your prediction? I think we start to make the run at DB. Uh, DB, uh, I don't necessarily think they'll take a receiver just because they're free agency, but they might. But I think this might be the DB tight end run within these next two picks, especially with, I mean, three picks, especially with Washington. Mm. They might want to go get right. them a nice vertical tight end with their loaded offense. And the Patriots let uh, trade in Joe New, uh, John New. John so, New Smith, yeah. So I just think this might be the run. Uh, mm. I could see them taking a tight end or interior. I think, but this might be the run. I mean, we seen last year. All the old linemen just went, just like last year, all the receivers went. So I think it's about to be the run. I'll say this Christian Gonzalez fall to Washington at 16. I, I don't think they thought that was even possible yeah. that, to happen. Right. I, I think they, because the Jets aren't taking a corner with you know, yeah. DJ Reed sauce. I, I, I would doubt that. Washington, they might run that card. And we might be talking about both picks mm. back to back here in a yeah. sec. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm also wondering if the Jets are trying to field calls. I see Joe Douglas standing yeah. up right there. If he's trying to say, hey, you're trying to get in this Christian Gonzalez, Nolan Smith sweepstakes. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the Jets are a team where Dwayne Brown's going to be a free agent after this year. Makai Becton, who knows what he's right. going to be. But that's why I said when everyone was like, oh, they didn't give up too much for Rodgers. Going from 13 to 15, 
when there's a lot of guys, teams right in that cluster that needed the offensive tackle, I wonder right now if they're kicking themselves right. about Broderick Jones and not being able to get him, Felder. Like, do, you think they need, do, do you think they need to get Aaron Rodgers some more help? A thing that Green Bay just didn't do. It would be very funny if they go defense <laughs> and Aaron Rodgers still doesn't get that. Right. Would a Jackson Smith, I mean, they went out and they signed Nicole Harmon and Alan Lazard, but sure. I do like the idea of a move tight end right now. Yeah, yeah a tight end, I mean, I wouldn't be too mad at a receiver. They have Tyler just Conklin, those are short CJ deals, Except for Lazard, he's on a longer deal. But, I mean, for the most part, you still have an elite one with Garrett Wilson. Right. Everyone knows Rodgers loves Lazard, big. Hansy, good, high putting the ball. And you got me, Cole, a nice speed demon. I don't see the reach for a receiver. I see, you know, tight end, interior, maybe corner run right now. Mm. I do think Dalton Kincaid in this offense is a guy that can take the next level. Rogers likes play tight right ends. away, too. Yeah. Yeah, Rogers likes tight ends, too. Wow. Oh. Very interesting. The Jets select Will McDonald, defensive end pass rusher out of Iowa State. Mm. Will McDonald, the fourth. So there have been rumors. The Jets wanted to continue to add to that pass rush. Robert Sala, of course, liking to get after the quarterback. Will McDonald, 54 games, 23 starts, 34 sacks. Iowa State record, 10 forced fumbles. 34 career sacks, the most in the history of the Iowa State program. Kid didn't play football until his junior year of high school. I am curious, though, Renner, picking him at 15. Is this where you thought he might go? This is not where I thought he might go. I think he could. I thought he could sneak in. I am 39th on my draft board. I thought he could sneak into the back end of the first round. But he's he's a unique dude in that he goes to Iowa State. He's playing a lot of four and five tech head up over tackles, but he's 238 right. pounds. You know, wow. he is not that. And at 238 pounds at six foot five, he's skinny. I mean, he looks like a wide receiver out there rushing the passer, but his get off, he got an 11 foot broad jump at the combine. The guy is explosive and playing that much inside. He learned how to play physical at that undersized ability. So I think he can be an every down dude, but he just kind of is still doesn't know too much what he's doing as a pass rush. You saw him kind of have a disappointing senior bowl. I thought that could drop him to the back end of the first round, but Jets are taking a swing here. Uh, uh, I I would have gone elsewhere, but they're just adding to that defensive line, like I said earlier, trying to make it a dominant, one of the best units in the NFL. Great. We're going to go with a C flat on that one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, kind of a head scratcher. I see the Julian Aquara player comp, uh, another long player. Yeah that plays with speed and does the whole goal for him is please don't touch me. Please don't touch me. Like that's <laughs> you. He cannot, you can't let them put the paws on you. I mean, but the thing that's interesting to me is watching Will McDonald, the fourth play at Iowa state is the way that they play. Mm. What was asked of them in terms of physicality, in terms of effort, this is a group that played a very unique defense and there was no way they should have been as good as they were, but they were. And he's a big part of that. So for me, for, with Will McDonald, I'm looking at a guy, again, he's going to give you effort. He is lean. He's a lean football player. So he's going to have to figure some stuff out of where he actually fits in the NFL. But if you like a guy this much to draft him at pick 15, then you must have found something that you really fell in love with. Uh, for me, I am going to give it, I'm going to go, I'm going to go with the C2 because wow. he is a good player. But this is not a player that anyone had on the board. And, in this round. And they draft him over Nolan Smith. You right. know, similar mm. types of players. And mm. I, it's hard for me to watch Nolan Smith's tape and then McDonald's tape mm. and say I'm going McDonald in that situation. I think Nolan Smith right here, maybe. Washington, especially mm. not picking up Chase Young's fit. What do you think of McDonald over Nolan, though, for the Jets? That that one's a little uh, – that's a head scratcher. I mean, yeah. you look at the pick and say, oh, that's a decent <laughs> pick. But over Nolan Smith, I don't think that's as wise – you I think, see potential in this kid? I do see potential. Yeah. I think we also have to realize that I'm looking at the bend he has from a five. If you change that and you put him out to where I'm at on yeah. a seven, six, now he – and I'm seeing that little move that he hits him with, that little hard jab where I like to do. I mean, he's putting these guys on stakes. He has speed, get off, yeah. lean. I'm seeing him rip all the way through. So you're you seeing see potential. The, yeah. I see great tangibles in this dude. He has the jab. He has the quickness. He's making up and unders. He's ripping through. He has. He's violent at the top of the rush, and that's what you want to see in guys. He's a well-taught football player. Yeah, I'm I'm not mad at the pick. I can see why guys are like, oh, there's better play players. But you're talking about rushes mm -hmm. and how he likes to rush with that bend, and you got, you got Quinn in the middle. Right. Yeah. I like it. 
All right. Uh, I do think it's interesting, uh, Joe Douglas making this pick. I think back, part of the reason why Howie Roseman lost the ability to draft for the Eagles, 2017, he took Marcus Smith in the first round. A very light pass rusher mm -hmm. that everyone said, we need to get back to football. I do find it ironic that Joe Douglas is taking him mm -hmm. at this point in the draft, but that he wanted to go out there and get another pass rusher. We'll see. Uh, Washington now up 16, and you said it earlier, they got to be sitting there going, how did Christian Gonzalez come to us? And did he? No. Oh. They go a different cornerback. And now I'm sitting here going, what's going on with Christian Gonzalez? Now I'm wondering about medicals. Asking. Now I'm worried about testing because it doesn't make sense uh, that we've gotten to this point. Washington going secondary. Emmanuel Forbes, the pick. Uh, 16, Washington able to sit there and take Emmanuel Forbes Jr. He goes by Jr. Second team All-American, first team All-SEC, has more passes defended than starts. 35 pass defended, 34 starts. The second youngest of 10 children. And listen to this. Had 14 picks in college. Six of them he returned for touchdowns, a record. Every time he picked it off, he returned it for an average of 28 <coughs> yards. What do you think of this guy at 16 here, Runner? He's a ball hawk going to a defense that's going to allow him to play off with his eyes through the receiver to the QB. So it's a scheme fit for sure. It's maybe a little rich, but there's not a better ball hawk in this draft class. He had the best instincts Ooh. when it came to finding the football in the air, in my opinion. The worry I have, 166 pounds. Yep. He is the lightest six-foot-plus corner taken on day one or day two of the draft by 10 pounds. You know, unique outlier in how skinny he is, but he plays a little more physical than you'd expect for a guy that size. I still do worry. Once you get to the NFL, you're facing AJ Browns of the world. You're mm -hmm. facing 220 pound wide receivers. He's given 60 pounds up to those guys. That's just, that's gonna be tough to consistently win at the catch point when you're giving up that much. My only worry for that because on tape, He's going to be making plays. He's going to get his hands on footballs. It's just, is he going to be that lockdown, consistent guy on the outside at that size? When you factor all that in, what's the grade? I'm going to go with the B plus there. What do we think, Felder? I, I love DB. this kid. I mean, he is, I mean, the length, he's so long. And you put the tape in, and everybody's worried about what's he going to do in coverage, what's he going to do in coverage. But what I see is someone who wants to be aggressive, wants to be physical, and he wants to come downhill and make plays. So when you have that part of your game, I think he kind of reminds me a little bit of, of a guy like Sauce Gardner. Uh, mm. Not as, obviously, not as big as Sauce. Right. Mm. Sauce was, Sauce was late, weighed a little more, Ooh. but you look at this. This is a guy that's not afraid to stick his nose oh, in Look there. at his legs. Yeah, oh yeah, I know. But look at this. You're right, he's not afraid. He's not afraid. I think he's going to be okay. He'll get bigger in the NFL for sure. But the big thing for me is the way that he triggers, the oh. way that he's, again, as you mentioned, a ball Ooh. hawk, and then the fact that he has this capability yep. to turn defense into offense, and I love that about him. So I am going to give this one an A-. Okay. I don't I don't think – I think it was a little earlier than I expected him to go, but certainly someone that is not afraid to play corner. He's not afraid to come downhill. And, again, one of those guys that just has a nose for the football. Uh, I'm going to go to A.J. Brown mm -hmm. because you mentioned guarding A.J. Brown, and I'm told that when you said that, A.J. Brown <laughs> laughed. Uh, what do you, what's so funny, A.J.? <laughs> I did laugh. Uh, I do think this is a great pick, though. I think uh, he's a, he's a corner, cornerback who wants to be physical, and, and that's what you want at that position. You know, you can talk about size and, and weight and all that stuff, but the guy has heart, and, and that's what you want from a, from a DB, DB standpoint. And for me personally, I don't want to go against longer guys. They make my job difficult. But, uh, but like you said, everybody's not 225 and got all these muscles like me in the NFL. So I think the kid's going to be fine. It's a great pick. Uh, uh, but I'm definitely uh, smiling at this matchup, though. All right, so, so AJ, <laughs> let me ask you. You're going to face this guy twice a year. Uh, what's, he, what's he got in store facing you? Hell. Oh, man, <laughs> a guy can run every route in the route tree. Uh, <laughs> the guy just... Kind of does what he wants when he want to do it. So uh, he has he has a handful, and so do I. So should be a good matchup. Uh, Micah, you said that Emmanuel Forbes is in for hell when he faces AJ Brown. Well, it's only yeah. it's only sixty pounds difference. Nah, boy. Listen, <laughs> everything cool. You gotta remember, this is the NFC. Like AFC, yeah, you could love to pick a whole lot more. AFC way more pass dominant. But you talking about a guy who gonna have to come up and take on a pull in Kelsey or Johnson? Like this is a. NFL is a grown man. Eventually, it starts to get cold. It ain't going to be warm yeah. for about six weeks. 
Them that 160 pounds soaking wet gonna have to make a business decision against some big dudes, man. Like the, the, the league's a little different, man. I, I'm sorry, 160 pounds that that size make a difference. Like mm. regardless, I see effort out of 200 pound guys who don't want to make that business decision. You know, it's a business decision when you're going against. So how? The but NFC. how do you how do you mix? He clearly is a ball hawk. Yeah. He clearly got hands and he's electric with it, and, and that side. Because he's got talent. So what do you think of this overall? You know, you kind of got to look for more passing downs. Second and longs, third and long, right. mix them in. But as a true first-round corner, you want like a, especially around, what was that, 16? You want With somebody Christian gonna be, Gonzalez on the board. You want to be a guy that's going to be an every-down player. And it's just hard for me to say that, you know, a guy at 160 pounds is going to come down and hit a, a McCaffrey every time, wow. a Saquon Barkley every time. Yeah. We don't got Zeke, but I'm pretty sure he ain't going to make that business decision against Zeke every time. But Tony Powell is still going to put the shoulder down. So it, the, the game's physical, and, right. you know, especially in blocking. Can he come off blocks Can in, right. in that when, aspect? Especially, like, the, the idea of when A.J. Brown – it's a run play. Yeah. A.J. Brown comes off the line. It's violent. Yeah. It, Push the saying, hands on you. Can you get off the ball? Yeah, like, it's, one, it's, it's up in the air. But we'll see. I see him twice in a year, you know. But that size and the NFC at least, like, you got teams that's going to run it 20, yeah. 25, 30 times a game. It ain't yeah. no 50 attempts over here, like. <sighs> <sighs> okay. Uh, Emmanuel Forbes goes to Washington. New England is now on the clock. They, of course, drop back with Pittsburgh from 14 to 17. I don't know if the comp has been announced yet, but the pick is in. And the New England Patriots are selected. There he goes. There he goes. Corner tight end is about to make his run. They are going. We traded down. Washington didn't take him, and we're still able to get it. Mm -hmm. Belichick able to pull this off. Christian Gonzalez was seen as many as a top 10 selection. 30 games, 20 passes defended, four interceptions, all of them this season. Uh, His entire family is world-class athletes and track stars. Only three pass interference penalties the last few seasons. Uh, so good that Mike has got to go take a piss. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, Renner, Gonzalez to go to the Patriots here at 17. Your thoughts? I mean, it's a steal. Unless there's some medical thing that we don't know about, this to me is the steal of the draft so far. Mm. He's young, not even 21 years old yet. He turns 21 in June. Can't even celebrate this with a drink. Wow. And productive. I mean, he got his hands on the football a ton this past year, whether it's past year, whether it's at Colorado, two and a half years as a starter, 438 speed, 41 and a half inch vertical, 11 1 broad jump. With that athleticism, the best all around athlete at the corner position in this draft, in my opinion. And with that kind of production, I just don't see how this guy comes to the NFL and just doesn't fit in, right? Like, we're, we're naming how how Witherspoon could have maybe have some issues, how right. Emmanuel Forbes with his size could have some issues. I, I don't really see the issues with Gonzalez. Maybe he doesn't turn into a stud, Jalen Ramsey, whatever, but at his floor is just a starting good solid NFL cornerback and you're going to the place that develops cornerbacks better than anyone you know he's going to a place that Bill Belichick has always had the Midas touch with developing DBs you gave him the guy with the best tools to develop in this draft class I, I would not surprise me if he turns into an all-pro someday I'm Bill guessing Belichick. it's an A plus so we're gonna go A plus there yeah. uh, he's joining Jack Jones he's joining Jonathan Jones uh, the big man Kyle Duggar but this is a guy that ran a 43840 man he can run with anybody in this yeah league. he's got speed I see the Dominic Rogers Cromarty pro comp I went with the Revis because of the way that he's a grabby guy like he is He's a handsy football player that wants to be in contact with you all the time. Like, I was watching him, and I was like, man, this reminds me of, like, my four-year-old. That just has to be touching you all the time. And it's one of those things. It's a good quality to have as a corner. He's going to have to reel it in just a little bit, but I love the way that he tracks the ball when it's in the air. I love the fact that he's able to go out there and sometimes turn some defense into offense. But the key for me is I think he's probably the best man corner in this draft. He's got the ability to do that, but he's also not afraid to come up and try to make some plays. I'll say this right now, watching him, he looks pissed that he got drafted this late. Yes, Walking up on TV, oh, he yeah. does not yeah. look happy. He looks like he's about to go to the gym after this and get a workout in because he is not happy with where he felt. Did you give a grade? Oh, I didn't give a grade yet. There we go. What I'm not supposed with? to give my grade until after we come out of the B-roll. <laughs> A-plus. 
A plus. Come on. <laughs> Felder knows how to follow directions. Uh, AJ Brown, uh, you I'm sure have watched this guy. We all thought he could even go in the top six, top seven. Top seven he yeah. falls to New England here. What do you think about where he mm. went and him as a player? Um, I think he went to a great place. Uh, most importantly, uh, Billy Jake, uh basically groom DBs, you know, and uh, he produced. I definitely see all pro in this in this guy's future, man. I definitely felt like he was the best cornerback in his in his draft. Um, really? I know we play him next year. I know it's gonna be a tough tough matchup. Uh, but uh, the guy, the guy, like you said, man, he he wants to be hands on. Um, he's a great ball hawker. In and out of his breaks, man. The guy, has, he's, a, he's a total package, man, and he couldn't fall to a better place than New England. I want to ask you, AJ, uh, I look back at your draft. Uh, you went second round. DK went second round. Debo went second round. Mm -hmm. guy like Christian didn't fall mm -hmm. as far as you did, and I'm sure you thought you were a first-round pick. What would you say to a guy like Christian Gonzalez who's probably upset right now that he went lower than he thought he would go? I'll tell him, man, there's nothing to be upset about, you know. Uh, you're blessed to play this game at, at the highest level. Um, you just took care of your family's family. Uh, don't worry about, don't worry about wh where you fell in the draft. You got to start over and you got to prove your work day in and day out. Uh, but uh, just watching his film, that, it speaks volume. Um, the, the kid is a, he's a, he's a great athlete. Uh, he's going to do wonders in, uh, with the Patriots. Uh, by the way, if you've ever seen that viral video of the quarterback David Blau uh, going nuts when his wife is running the Olympics for Colombia, mm -hmm. that's his sister. There we go. Wow. This, is a, this is a family of speed. Oh, wow. uh, Micah, you're joining us back now. Christian Gonzalez going to the Patriots. Like, Great pick. What is it like when, when you, you, know, you went to a team that ended up being a lot of star defensive mm -hmm. players, but for Christian Gonzalez... The further you fall, the better team you go to. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is a good situation for him. Yeah, like I said, Michael Irvin told me, you don't, you don't, uh, he said, you don't fall, you land on the star. Like, you land on that. And, you know, those, pa those early picks is good because, you know, it's like, oh, I'm most money. Yeah. But you are going to go to a medium team, like, we're this close to being a really good team. Right? Right. I think he adds value. Especially in that back end. He has Judon up front. Yeah. He has Baltimore. He has a nasty up front. Yes. Um, so it's gonna make his job a whole lot easier. Plus with his aggressiveness, Belichick's aggressiveness, yeah. I think this is a perfect matchup. Uh and now on the clock is a team that we thought could have taken Christian Gonzalez in the top ten. Right. Uh, Detroit mm -hmm. Lions with one of the shockers of the draft, going Jameer Gibbs, the running back uh, out of Alabama. And now we sit here and we wonder, where could they go? They have needs on the D-line. They still have needs at cornerback. Right. What are you thinking here, Renner? I think D-line is where I'm looking with Nolan Smith still on the board. Mm -hmm. uh, just continue to load up uh, on pass rushers. That's where... That's where the failing was last year. This was a top five offense in terms of points per game. They could not stop the run. Nolan Smith is a dog against the run. He's going to bring it every single snap, even though he's undersized. I, I think that's where my head's at. They could go anywhere. They could yeah. go Dalton Kincaid to replace Hawkinson, I, as you were saying before. They could go Kalijah Kansi and right. actually meet up I, I in just, the middle. I just really think they stay offense. They defense played at such an insane level towards the end of the year. Like, they were just clicking, like... I just don't yeah, when see. When they switched them. the DC to Aaron Glenn, it was yeah. interesting. Yeah, even with that, they, they got the pieces, but we'll see. Renner's smiling. Ooh. Wow. Linebacker. That's a Dan Campbell In that pick. One. Wow. Uh, I'm going to be honest, guys. Uh, Brad Holmes, the GM for Detroit, is shocking everybody. They go running back Jameer Gibbs, and now they are going Jack Campbell the linebacker out of Iowa. Now listen, the man is accomplished. First team All-American, Buckus Award winner, two-time team captain. He was a captain in high school, college. Kirk Ferenc says everything he does, he goes hard. He's the first Iowa player to win the academic Heisman, the William V. Campbell Trophy. He started 27 games. He averaged 10 tackles in mm -hmm. all. So the man is around the ball. The value here, though, at 18. Yeah, that's what, what do we think here, Renner. He's a super high floor linebacker. I mean, he had 
for my money, the best tape last year of any linebacker in the country. That was draft eligible. Like solid between the tackles, Mike linebacker, plug and play. You know what you're getting. High instincts, high motor, going to make plays. Now he's just not a super high end athlete, right? Four six five is what he ran. Right. That's traditionally not what goes in the first round of that linebacker. You're just worried about what's that guy gonna look like when he has to cover tight ends that run four fives at the NFL level or when he gets un matched up on a slot wide receiver. Jameer, What's that yeah. going to look like? But I do think the need was so desperate. They were so unhappy with their linebacker play a season ago that they went ahead and just said, we're going to get a high floor here. We're going to get a guy we know is going to come in and be a good player for us. And I think that was the first two picks. Guys, they want to make an impact this season on the roster. Jameer Gibbs, Jack Campbell, plug and play day one starters that maybe you could have shot a little higher for the moon for a little bit more upside. But these are guys that you just know are going to be impact players right now. Uh, Detroit's defense last year, 30th against the pass, 29th against the rush. What do we think about going Mr. Campbell here? I like Jack Campbell. I think he's a you good do. player. But, man, he is slow. <laughs> like, he's like he's not he, – he play. let me put it this way. He plays faster than he runs. Like, that's the, that's the key. Part of that is he studies. That's yeah, what I love. He looks like player. Erlacher. Look at his face. He does look like Erlacher. Doesn't run like Erlach. No, he does not. But that's what he looks like. This is, this is a guy that's going to – you're going to put him in the middle of your defense, and he's going to be there for a long time. Like, he understands, especially with the way that Iowa plays football. Yeah. Well-taught football players, guys that understand what they, – they, they just do their job. Look at him right coming downhill. That's amazing. That's a great play. He understands how to sift through the trash. Look at the way he gets out in coverage. Boom. And then he's fast enough when you, when you do things right, those corners are forcing him back inside, mm -hmm. and he's closing that gap. So he has the opportunity to do that. I think he's also going to be a steady piece. Um, but at the value, I still think you could have got maybe Drew Sanders, so I'm going to go B minus. Uh, I, I, for me, he was maybe linebacker number three or four, and the reality of it is I definitely didn't think he was going to get, see, hear his name called tonight. To me, he reminds me a lot of Logan Wilson as yes. a prospect. Logan Wilson went top of the third round. That Like, yes. middle of the seconds, where those guys go right. traditionally. It just is a super weak linebacker class, though. Yeah. If you want that, you go who get Jack it. Campbell is, there's no other guy in this class, unfortunately. And so Mikey, it feels of a little desperation on That's kind of what you were, and then you got to the NFL and they need you to rush the passer. Yeah. What, what do you think when you watch this guy? You know, I'm not mad at the pick okay. at all. I'm not mad at it. Uh, just because he fits what the NFC is. Right. And that's downhill linebackers. you got to be able to come downhill, violent hands. I mean, can we really be – I compare him to Leighton Vanderish. Mm. Right. You know, great Leighton. Leighton, he's not going to give you everything, and that's my dog, but he comes downhill. He gives you heart, right. soul, like great teammates, smart. Mm. Layton helps me out, line, getting everyone lined up. Mm. You and you don't right. talk about the academics. You got a Luke Keekley mindset. I'm gonna watch film. That's the instincts. Point. You can't coach those. Right. So I'm not mad at the pick. The value of the pick. We got Layton back. That was huge for us this offseason. Right. So getting their their middle of the field is huge. And it comes to and you know if you look at the trend, the teams that have that middle of the field. Like dominance are yeah. usually winners, right? I mean, I, I want to say this: we we talk about his speed and we we make jokes about his forty, but he was elite in two other drills at the combine. Mm -hmm. uh, Jack Campbell ran a six seven four three cone and a four two four short shuttle, mm -hmm. both number one against all, amongst all linebackers at the combine. So quick area, short That's area, the most yeah. That's the most important for football. But what you said not, is, if I don't he's need to run everybody forty yards ever. For, right. Forty does not matter unless I, you're me chasing down a tight end yeah, against you run Detroit. The 40? A four three, unless you're chasing down a, <laughs> unless you're chasing down a tight end, thirty mm, yards downfield right. to stop someone for a touchdown. That's the only time you're going to need that forty. But he's dominated the short area quickness. Bingo. That's all you need. And we're not going to sit here and act like long speed makes you a good football player because yeah. we don't see those fell in the draft especially, trying to reach for speed. Especially long speed at yeah. the middle linebacker. Yeah. You know what yeah. he's. He's trying to keep everything in the box. The worst thing he's I want to get to. I want to get to Tampa. Get to, the, get to the sideline. Tampa is on the clock. I okay. feel like the pick might be in. I think it is in it already. Has to be Nolan Smith. Uh, Nineteen. This is a Tampa Bay team that is completely rebuilding. Micah said it's got to be Nolan Smith, and no, they go Kalijah. Kalijah, ah. fancy. A little Warren Sapp what is action. What's going on with Nolan? Maybe I, the I, pack. I mean, they might. I'm truly injury. shocked. I'm. I'm not mad at that pick, but I'm shocked that he's falling like this. Tampa Bay sat there at 19, and they are taking Pitt defensive lineman Kalijah Kansi, a, mm. a unanimous All-American, 
Uh, ACC Defensive Player of the Year mm -hmm. led all defensive tackles in college football with 14 and a half tackles for losses. This is a guy that played for Northwestern in Miami, was winning state titles. Uh, 27 yeah. and a half tackles for loss in 25 games the last mm -hmm. two years. This is someone that I feel like people were saying in the beginning of the draft process, Renner. He's a top of day two. But I think everyone knew he's a day one guy. Yeah, uh, you flip on the tape and you just keep seeing him make plays, make plays, make plays. And then in, at the end of the day, when he checks in 6'1", 281, you're like, I can still work with that. That can still win at the NFL level. We saw it with Aaron Donald, the pick guy. Now he's not right. Aaron Donald. Aaron okay. Donald was much longer, much stronger coming out of yes. pit. But he's that level athletically. This is, for my money, the most impressive DT I've seen on tape in terms of the quickness, in terms of the get off. He was at quarterbacks before his edge guys were even engaging with offensive tackles at times. I, I mean, it is truly impressive the way how easily he can move and he's on a football field. Up. Knows how to rush the pass too. He has moves, knows how to separate off blocks, but you're going to have to allow him that freedom. If you're asking him to hold up to double teams and just say, play your B gap. He's not going to be that guy. You right. got to have to see when he gets a double team, go go get around it. You know, go do whatever you can to not engage against that guy, which is tough. Not everyone's willing to allow that flexibility, but if you do, dude's a playmaker. Great for him at 19. I'm going to go A plus for this one. I nice. really like this one. Yeah, I think he's a heck of a football player, and obviously, I come in, I I live in ACC country. I watch a lot of ACC football. I've seen him play. Uh, has a little bit of um, Grady Jarrett to him. Mm. Is that right, Grady Jarrett? Yep. Yeah, yeah. That that Runs sort of Atlanta. a guy that. If you can, if you can let him play in that one spot, if you can let him, um, not by not one as in lined up at one, but play as a one gap guy, not being asked to to kind of grab hold because he's not as long as some of these other guys. But that's listen, Grady Jarrett's making made, making a hell of a living doing it. Yep. So I think he's got that skill. I really like the fact that as you mentioned the takeoff, you see him there using him on slants, using him on stunts. I mean, we should we just showed a video of him on a stunt coming from like a coming from the inside, going all the way outside, and as you mentioned, getting there before the the, the fast, the fat, quote unquote fast guy even got there. So yeah, I'm gonna go with an A on this one. I think that he's a heck of a football player. And again, at this point, with this draft, yeah, if you, if you like it, take it. So the one thing, sub 31 inch arms. He, yes. He'll have the shortest arms of any starting defensive lineman in the NFL. Micah, you had 31 and a half inch arms coming out. You have like one of the smaller for an edge guy. How do you get around that as a defensive you, lineman? You, your quickness, and yeah. he's gonna have to use that and he has to be quick with his hands. Right. A lot of guys are gonna have to try to get on him quick, but he has to be quicker, keep his hands up, keep him rolling, and he's very violent with his hips. If you saw the one move, he's he's moving in motion all yeah. simultaneously, I mean, it's is almost you know effortless for him. You I think it's guy. a great pick. Uh, Calais is joining us. Calais, when I think of the Bucks and I think of Warren Sapp and Booger McFarland, and now I think of this Cansey kid next to Vita Vea, oh. I kind of like that combination they got in Tampa Bay. It's what do you think? double team. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think uh, Tom Bowles doesn't know how to use him the right way. You know, I've played in his uh, defensive scheme before, and it's a lot of movement, you know, uh, a lot of long scoops, you know, uh, slants inside. Yeah, and uh, he has the quickness to be able to do that. And I think he has good um, instincts and in knowing, like, when to shoot the gaps, where to use your hands, lockdown hands. Uh, I mean, you, you know, you see the quickness on tape. I mean, it stands out. Uh, but it's, it's more than just quickness, though. I mean, he has the, the instincts to be able to set his guys up and, uh, and just know the timing, when to go by a guy. And that speed that you have, you know, with the instincts he has, and just he has a knack for rushing the passer, you know. If I, w I wouldn't be surprised if he was a good basketball player back in his day because the way he rushed the passer, he has that kind of wiggle, like getting to the hoop and dunking on somebody, you know. And so I, I like his – I like the pick. I think he's a good player. I think he's in a, uh, you know, he's in a good scheme that's going to allow for him to, uh, to really benefit all, all his talents. Calais, thank you. Uh, I, I want to say this. This stat also jumped out to me. 47% of his tackles were in the backfield. Right. Mm -hmm. So half of the time he makes the tackle, it's behind the line of scrimmage. Tampa Bay, when they made that run, sure, Tom Brady, unbelievable. But it was that D-line, mm -hmm. menacing, JPP, yeah. getting after it. This is a guy that can do that. And, yeah. and to get him here, very clean at number 19. Uh, Seattle now on the clock, number 20, their second pick. Second pick. Uh, actually, you know what? I mean, that Devin Weatherspoon pick at five was shocking as well. We all kind of thought that was going to be Jalen Looking at Carter. it now, it's a great pick. He wouldn't have made it that far. Look at oh, that. No. what's been going on with the drafts, the shock. I mean, I think it's a great. It was a great pick. They got their guy, right? And now they can get another guy at this pick. If, There's still guys left. Like, if they go a Devin Weatherspoon, Nolan Smith, 
That's, a, that's their that's two. That's a great draft. It's a heck of a and draft. It, I think it, it, Is there any been trend? I want to be a little chaotic. Is there any chance they go Will Levis? Is there any chance they lock in that fifth-year option and they know Geno's, it's like a one-year deal? Any chance? I mean, they already got Drew Locke. I don't know why I'm saying that. Yeah. I don't think. I think they want I just to win to, now. I think they want to win. Uh, okay, I'm going to make a prediction. I think they're going to go Jackson Smith and Jigba. I was just going to say, not a wide receiver's been drafted. They're going to, we have not seen a wide receiver. You got DK, you got Lockett with and, him in the middle. And this is perfect because. With Geno. I love that. Seattle needs a receiver. The Chargers are in crushing need of a receiver. Yeah, right. Right. This is going to go, and the He's Ravens the need one. Yeah. This literally might and just go Vikings. receiver, receiver, receiver. And the receiver. Vikings are right there, too. Yeah, like this, the run. this is the run that we are. This is going to be Nolan or receiver. This reminds me of the Malcolm Kelly draft where, like, oh, man. Devin Smith, where, like, wide receivers weren't coming off. Um, yeah. All right, so Seattle, uh, they went corner, kind of shocked us. They do need D-line help, but I don't know if there's a D-lineman uh, that, that fits the bill. Renner, on your big board, what makes sense here? Yeah, Jack Smith and Jigba, the top non-quarterback available at this point. As you said, like they have that slot position wide open in Seattle. That just makes too much sense. You immediately have a top three to four wide receiver core in the NFL if you had Jack Smith and Jigba. And he, and he helps you tomorrow, too. He is NFL ready. I think tight end, too, with Noah Fan, you could add Kincaid, have two different guys to do some stuff with. Or Nolan Smith, those three there right at the top, I would be floored if they go any other way. Those guys all just make too, too much sense. Maybe Miles Murphy if that's your type at right. defensive end at the edge. But to me, Nolan Smith, like the C Cliff Averill, they haven't had that in a minute in yeah. Seattle. They just haven't had that guy that can get I after I just it. thought, can we see Renner's props really quick? I just want to see how they're doing. They were not doing great. No? <laughs> Sorry, Levis I didn't missed. Bring No, we're, no we're, the Skaronsky missed. The Jones missed. We were right on the precipice of all of them. Missed uh. them all. And then I think the wide receiver's looking cash. At yeah, this under point. four and under a half. Under four and a half. The quarterbacks QBs, we need now, to move. We need the QBs to move. No QBs going. It's over. I call it You think it's going to be three quarterbacks and that's it? Yeah. I don't see no team they don't need going them. for Let's check QB. in. This is actually the Seahawks chat. So on the BR app, yeah. uh, each team is going. So Witherspoon plus Tariq is fire. So they're hoping for that. Yeah, yeah and Pretty, you still got Kobe Bryant. Trey Brown, like they're yeah. loaded. Mm -hmm. Quandre, I wouldn't be mad at a safety. They go safety rusher at this pick or receiver. Mm. What are you talking about, Brian Bressy? Brian Brees? I lo I like Brees. I, I think he can. Man, y'all said that name three different ways. <laughs> Hold on. 17th player on my board. I I think he's got he's more than 20. what he put on tape. And and I think, obviously, he signed Draymond Jones. Still could use. And a by guy the way, next his name is Brzee. Brees. Brees is cool. <laughs> I, what, did so, I say? Uh, Green, what did I say? Uh, uh, I said Bressy. Yeah, Bressy. Uh, Green, Green okay. Arrow saying, please no Levis. Bro, Seattle is straight panicking no, on this pick. pick, LOL. I will say, of all the picks, I have not seen the clock go this low. Usually yeah. it's pick is in with a minute or two. Pick. Yeah, this is. Mark this Van Reith saying, hope the pick is good. Yeah, Mark. We, we the whole pick, clock. The pick is in. <laughs> um, but Seattle, it doesn't look like they're on the, on the phone right now using the whole clock. It says it's in. Mahomes' son. I do think, though, for Seattle here, Chargers next, Baltimore, and then Minnesota, this fell perfect for them. You know, they're going to get all get one of their wide receivers or tight end that they want. Like, mm. I think this is ideal for them. And even if Minnesota... You hear that, Kirk? Yeah. yeah. You hear that, Mr. Cousins? Looks like there could be some weapons possibly coming your way in the next few picks. But Seattle's pick is in. As soon as we get it, we will announce it. Um, yeah, three quarterbacks. It, it makes you wonder, could... Will anyone trade up to get a Levis? I don't know. I think Rams are top of the second. I could see that the Liam mm. Cohen connection, OC. Oh, from, you're right. Kentucky. From Kentucky, went back, and now he's back at Kentucky. But we shall see. Ooh, I got the pick here for Seattle. You do? Yeah. You can announce it. Jackson Smith and Jigba. Wow. They went ahead and did it. And mm. it's, they played this draft mm, perfect to a T. Seattle. This was as yeah. good a first round as so a bunch of teams came in with two picks. Obviously, we'll see what the Eagles do. But wow. Seahawks have to be right up there with the Eagles in terms of how this draft started. The Seattle Seahawks in this draft get arguably the number one wide receiver and the number one quarter. Jackson Smith in Jigba. Oh, you remember that Rose Bowl MVP he had? 347 receiving yards. 2021 was his big year. 95 catches, over 1,600 receiving yards and nine touchdowns. Did have a little bit of a hamstring injury, but guess what? 
Nearly 90% of his snaps have been in the slot, and now with Lockett and with DK Metcalf, mm -hmm. a heck of a three-wide receiver rotation. Yeah, he was in that Ohio State room back in 2021 that had Garrett Wilson, 10th overall pick, Chris Olave, 11th overall pick, and he just went ahead and outproduced both of them as a sophomore at 19 years old. And came back this past year, obviously, a hamstring injury, but he was 19 doing this stuff. Like, there is physical development that happens, as we saw with Jamar Chase, as we saw with Justin Jefferson from his sophomore to his junior year, that we just haven't seen from him. And he was this productive at that age. I think he's an NFL-ready route runner. His coach there at Ohio State, Brian Hartline, called him the second best wide receiver he's ever coached, with only Marvin Harrison Jr. being better than him. Wow. And we'll see him probably go top five next year. Yeah. But he's just crafty. The comp I have from him is Julian Edelman, just because he knows how to get open. He knows how to manipulate space, knows how to manipulate you with his stems to then just get that little separation. And then once it's in his wheelhouse, he's not dropping it. A plus. Love it. I, I love the Edelman comp. The big thing for me, the thing I want to talk about with Jackson Smith and Jigba, we talk about getting open and doing this. I think that he has this running back quality to him mm. when he gets the football in his hands. This is not a guy that he does not want to run out of bounds. He mm. wants to run through people, run. He, we saw him on these clips, the, his ability to give somebody the stiff arm, his ability to, to uh, run through traffic, shake off things. We talk about play, playing Easy through contact. Work. Yeah, we talk about playing through contact. You see here, this is fantastic. But then the he zone. wants to find the end zone. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Get, get off me. Get off me. Come on. And I think that's a quality that is great to have in a wide receiver. He is not a catch and fall Woo. guy. That You see that right there? And yeah. watch. He's going to give this guy the stiff arm. Go ahead and try to get to the end zone. I love this thing. Like, he's ready to rock and roll. Like, he can do all those things that you want. And, again, he's playing out of the slot. Knows how to get open. Understands zone versus man. I think that's something that's great coming out of Ohio State. Knowing when to sit down. Knowing when to run. And he can do all those things. So, for me, yeah. He's a lot of people's number one wide receiver. I'm giving it an A+. Plus. You get this guy at 20. Thought maybe it was going to be 12 or 13. We thought it was exactly. We thought it was going to be much earlier. Uh, A.J. Brown, this guy had the number one three cone and short shuttle at the combine for wide receivers. What did you think of him on tape? And what do you think Geno's getting? Um, I'm over here smiling because finally a, w a wide receiver off the board, and, and what a good one, man. Seattle got a great wide receiver right here, man. Uh, he just has an act for just getting open, man. I, I like to call uh, him a player like he's just a football player, you know, just give him the ball and just let him do what he do. do. And uh, route running is, is, is very special. I think he's a NFL-ready wide receiver, like day one, pl plug and play, you know. Uh, so... If, if I'm a fantasy owner, I'm definitely drafting this guy because when he gets the ball in his hand, he's not trying to go down. He's trying to find the end zone, and, and that's a trait that I love in wide receivers because, you know, that's what it's about. It's not trying to create a highlight tape, and, and this guy wants to get in the end zone. So this is, this is a great pick for Seattle. Uh, Micah, I feel like you think you could have been a wide receiver uh, if you really tried. What do we yeah. think? What do we think of this guy when you watched him? Oh man, you know, <laughs> <laughs> AJ. Yo, AJ if you play corner, I play receiver. What do you think will happen? Be honest. I will lock you down. Oh man. Hey, let's let's bet that Come back on. plate money so I can get my Twitter blue bet. <laughs> Come on, talk, talk, talk about Jackson. Talk about Jackson, cause this can go on forever. <laughs> hey, hey, um, no, nah, Jackson's elite. Uh, every, he was always top three wide receiver in this class. It was just a matter of time which wide receiver was going to come first. Mm. I love that point. You got DK, you got Tyler Lockett, and yeah. Tyler Lockett, they all have deep speed. Now you have a guy that could get open and underneath that could read coverages, man versus zone, like you yeah. talked about. Give Geno that check down because. He's got to go against the 49ers. That, yeah. that pressure defense, a guy that can read inside and get open, that's going to be huge for Seattle. Mm. All right, Seattle goes out there, and they take the number one wide receiver in this draft, in many people's opinion. Now we are at the L.A. Chargers, who are sitting there with every other offensive weapon. Zay Flowers. Zay Flowers is an option. That's their prototype, route so, runner fast. Renner, I've heard a lot of people talk about this, the need for speed on this Chargers team, mm -hmm. someone to go deep. I know people have liked Jordan Addison, how fast he is. Um, with that 40, what did he run? He ran a 4.49. Um, Hyatt ran a 4-4, Zay ran that 4-4-2, or could they maybe go a tight end here? What do you think? Yeah, I, I like either Zay Flowers here or Dalton Kincaid. Zay is like the electric thing that they're missing, right? They have a bunch of possession wide receivers in that receiving room. You need some guy that's going to at least make the defense respect his deep threat ability, right? And, and 
that's a big reason why Justin Herbert wouldn't go deep. It's just that he doesn't see guys separating at that level of the football field. It, it's hard to trust, uh, you know, a guy who has someone else hanging off of him that he's going to consistently make plays like Mike Williams and Keenan Allen do when they run go routes. It's just mm. they're not guys who can just blow by you. Zay Flowers can't. So that's what I, I would like him there. But then they also could use a tight end that's reliable over the middle of the field just because that's where Justin Herbert likes to target. That's kind of where he likes to uh, just throw is those kind of stick routes, middle of the field. Don Kincaid has the best ball skills in this tight end class. So for my money, it's going to be one of those two. Uh, I would bet good money it's one of those two. And if you're a Chargers fan, you're happy as heck that it is. What do you think, Felder? Zay Flowers is good, man. I, and then we, I think we all, everybody up here, we agree that we all like Zay Flowers. And he, he yeah. does give you some quickness. There's some, there's some um, suddenness to his game mm -hmm. that I really appreciate. And he's coming from Boston College, okay? They, like, he was super productive at Boston College. Yeah. Like, that's not easy for a wide receiver to do. And so, what he, we, we, like, they're known for running the football. They're known for playing good defense, but they're not known for their wide receivers. And their wide receivers consistently have trouble separating at BC. This guy did not have trouble separating. So, I looked it up. Okay. Zay Flowers would be the first Boston College wide receiver oh. drafted <laughs> since 1987. Wow. wow. Kelvin Martin by the Dallas Cowboys. That's incredible. Uh, yeah. See, I, I, I'm glad you looked it up because I was trying to go back through my mind and I'm like, am I forgetting somebody? No, no. I'm not forgetting anyone. No. All right, pick is in. Uh, and the Chargers are selecting Quinton Johnson. Wow. So they go size over speed. And the Chargers, they said, you know what? We like Mike Williams. We'd like to double down on that. Quinton Johnson. Two-time first-team All-Big 12, averages 19 yards per reception. Both parents, Army vets. He played X and Z receiver at TCU, and he was number two in college football in Yak. Going to the Los Angeles, Char Los Angeles Chargers, we know they needed a wide receiver. Almost all of them were available. What do you think of them going QJ here? I really like Quentin Johnson. I had him as wide receiver, too, in this draft class. I, I think he's something unique in this class that – Zay Flowers is talking about the deep speed, deep threat, six foot wingspan though. Quinn Johnson has a six foot ten inch wingspan. Wait, Justin wait, Herbert. Quinn Johnson has a six foot wingspan. Six foot ten inch wingspan. Oh, okay, Zay okay. Flowers had a six foot wingspan. Oh Excuse wow. Me. He can make plays outside of his frame, but just he isn't consistent at it. Not consistent enough playing through contact just yet. Over a ten percent drop rate in his career. You worry a little bit about the ball skills, but the athleticism is unique. Over a 40 inch vertical, over an 11 foot broad jump. The guy is explosive in everything he does. Awesome after the catch. 45 broken tackles on 115 career catches. Debo Samuel in college, 40 broken tackles on 148 career catches. So he was more elusive in college than Debo was, who's now the most elusive receiver in the NFL. That's something again that they don't have is that yak dude in that offense. Mm. And with Justin Herbert, not the most accurate of dudes. You're gonna have to play a little bit outside your frame at times. I think Quentin Johnson fits what they want to do and, and still adds that deep threat element to the mix. Great. We're going to go We're gonna go with an A on that one. What do we think here, Felder? I love him. You Abs do? Yeah, absolutely. He was my wife. He's my wide receiver one. Quentin, really? Quentin Johnson, yeah. So we were just talking about Zay Flowers, and the whole time you've had him number one. Yeah, I, I love this kid. He's, he's amazing. Like, watching him play through contact, watching a guy that's that big work through, work through screen action, he doesn't have to have build-up speed. Like, this guy, if he puts it all together, and you mentioned some of the inconsistencies, yeah. this guy could be like Megatron. Like, he's, like, you see this short pass elusiveness. He's got the ability right here. Okay, bye. I'm gone. No, not you. Sorry, buddy. Like, this is good. That's good football, man. He's a tough guy. You can't just be throwing out Megatron. I listen. <laughs> I, 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 like, I was with you, like, okay, he, he's okay, but here's Megatron. What I'm, here's what I'm saying. If he can put it all together, he is a high ceiling player. And the highest ceiling player that we've seen is, is Megatron. I don't think he's going to get there. But listen, if he gets in the, in the same zip code, he's going to be, he's going to make somebody, he's going to make this team, he's going to make the, the Chargers very, very happy. I'm going A+. plus. He's my top receiver. Listen, when I, I got to compare them to people you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you could have said a lot of other guys. A.J. Green. I, okay, I can I can okay. go with AJ Green. You, okay, you can live with AJ Green. Let's yeah. let's, let's, well, let's live with AJ thing, Green. That's the thing. I just want to say, and, I, and this is not a shot of you, Felder. He's six two two oh eight, ran a four five. Megatron was He's six a five, four, running a four three. three. But but I understand. Yeah. Is I he understand. six two? He was taller than six two. I have six two. 
It was almost six. He was like six two and like three. Yeah. Or something. yeah. Uh, AJ, you're listening to this. I hear you kind of disagree with him being wide receiver one. What do we think of of uh, Mr. Quentin Johnson going to the Chargers? Um, um, he wasn't my wide receiver one, but uh, he's a, he's a really good wide receiver, man. I think uh, Chargers. That's a great pickup for him. I think they went and got another Mike Williams, man. Yeah. And, and I think the special thing about it is. He's violent after the catch. You know, he's a guy. He's not gonna just let one guy tackle him. He's gonna. He's gonna give give the blow. So, I think it's a good 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 pickup. Uh, the the Megatron <laughs> comparison was a bit absurd, but <laughs> um, I definitely think he, he, his ceiling is very high in the NFL, and uh, he's gonna he's gonna sprout. AJ, I want to ask you though. I know that you're a big Zay Flowers guy. Would you have rather have gone Zay there? You know, I was thinking Zay Flowers, but to be honest, uh, I just didn't know where he would, he would fit in the Chargers uh, wide receiver room. Um, they got Keenan Allen, who's a shifty guy who who gets open at the highest level, and you know that's he plays in the slot. You know, so unless you're just putting Keenan Allen on the outside and for good, that, that was just a that's, that wasn't a really good place for him. You gotcha. know, but uh, I think Zay Flowers is, is wide receiver one. Uh, Mr. Micah Parsons, Quinton Johnson, what do you think of him as a player and where he went in comparison to the other wide receivers? Um, I think he's a good player. I'm not like them. I don't absolutely love him. I think he's not a pure catcher. In the NFL, you got to be a pure catcher. Yeah. He Even with body the highlights, catches. he's catching it with his body. In the NFL, you're not going to be able to catch it with your body. Ask AJ, you got to put your hands out. You got to be able to reach right. out and get it, tuck it, secure it. Um, it's a lot more hands in the pros, and then you take away the lines too. It might be a little questionable, but I wouldn't necessarily take someone who's not better than Mike Williams himself. Okay. You know, so and then if you you say Keenan Allen, you might not want to pay him, or you might let him go soon. Well, that's why I would have took a Zay Flowers instead mm. to replace Keenan, someone that can understudy him. Not necessarily Quentin, but Quentin's good though. I'm I, not. I, I don't necessarily love the pick, but I right. think. They could have had a better value of player with Addison or Flowers. Did not somebody, he could prove me wrong. He could get his hands better. And he can reach a A.J. Green ceiling. But we haven't seen that. We've seen A.J. Green dominate mm. at the high point of the ball. We don't really right. see him high point the ball for 6-2, 6-3. Six, six, right. That's why I couldn't agree with the Megatron. Megatron sure. was high pointing the hell out every, of the ball. That's all, that's all. He did every, and, every single yeah, time. So, yeah, and he was great after the catch. So after the catch, Yak yeah, is cool. But, you know, at the pro level, there's not a whole lot of space unless you're wide open on blown right. coverage right. for you to afford to do late hand, like, you know. The, you double, gotta, the double catch. Yeah. yeah. That, it, it I, I, saw that, I, I noticed that, too. The body, yeah. double double catch. And I'm looking at. 10% drop rate. Yeah. yeah that's to, he's, he, he is someone that I think has the ability to get there. The thing that I really love about him and the reason why I had him at one is because he has this ability after the catch that you don't usually see from bigger guys. Right. He has the ability to make people miss. He has the ability to play through contact. He has the ability. He he's got a lot of ability. Yeah. And we can go AJ Green. I think it, that's that, that's in him. We've got to work on these hands, though. I totally agree yeah. with you. And he's the only wide receiver in this draft with size. He's the only the one. Only one. Yeah. The only one. Uh, I want to go Kirk. So, Kirk, I know you've been waiting because all the quarterbacks went in the top four, but the Baltimore Ravens are up. Uh, you are uniquely qualified to talk about what it's like to have to think about money and a contract year after year. And When am I going to finally get job security? It happened to Lamar tonight. He is officially the highest paid quarterback in the NFL. Just mindset-wise, what is that going to free him up uh, having gone through a similar experience? I was happy for him. It's been a long journey. He's earned the right to a, a great contract, and uh, his record as a Raven has been uh, so impressive. So his production, league MVP, it was time for him to get a great contract, and he got one. So uh, great things ahead for him, but uh, it was kind of a no-brainer for them to get it done and figure it out. And I know he wanted the fully guaranteed deal. I don't think he quite got that structure, but I think the structure is still pretty good for him. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think he'll be okay. Uh, thank you, Kirk. We don't know if we're going to have to talk to you again, uh, but we might have to talk to you in two picks, see if the Vikings get you some weapons. Uh, Baltimore is up. Renner, do you know the pick already? I do know the pick already. Uh, we'll let you announce it. It is the guy we just talked a bunch about, Zay Flowers. Perfect. Wow. Perfect. So we go wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver. Yep. Uh, all the options for Kirk's Vikings are coming off of the board, uh, but Zay Flowers goes to Baltimore. Baltimore this offseason, the big signing of Odell Beckham Jr. 
They lock up Lamar Jackson, and now they get, in some people's minds, the number one wide receiver. Uh, again, first Boston College receiver drafted since 1987. Ooh. Didn't miss a game in four seasons. Uh, the 11th of 14 kids, okay? This is, uh, he had 78 catches this year, a school record. You do not see that at Boston College. He was training with Patrick Mahomes. Everyone loves this kid. Uh, Renner, where did he rank for you in wide receivers? Yeah, I had him as wide receiver three in this draft class behind Johnson. And, and went three. And Jigba. So I, I got it right on the board right now. But I, I think he's just that dynamism. Like, he's a poor man's version of Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill. Like, what we're seeing down in Miami, he can bring that to your offense. It's it just, if you're going to have to stay with this guy for three, four seconds, in that Baltimore offense, which you often do with Lamar Jackson because no one wants to rush him. Everyone's just trying to keep him in the pocket. This guy can do some dirty things on double moves. He's a guy that's going to separate down the football field Ooh. and now gives you this trio with Rashad Bateman, with Odell, and he's kind of that chess piece that you move across formation, you put him in motion, wow. and eyes the safeties, the linebackers, they're looking, they're praying, don't get him matched up on me because you don't want to see running him back. running at you. I think he gained about 10 pounds from last year to this year, added some dynamism to his game, and that Ravens offense now is one that just – don't really want to go face on a weekly basis. I'm going to give yeah. that one an A. Uh, ran a 4-4-2 Felder. His 10-yard split, you don't see this a lot, 1-4-9 mm. in the 10-yard split. The man Two can years. get off the yeah. line of scrimmage. And that's that's the cool thing about him is he's going to be off the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to try to play like a catch technique with him. And guess what? He's already out of the way. He's super shifty. So and he's I got love that. swag, man. Yes, you can just does. see it. Oh, yeah. You can see it. <clears throat> He is – I understand why a lot of folks have him as wide receiver one. Again, one of the things that I noticed watching this, watch where he's catching the football. He's catching it, obviously, in the middle. He's catching it at the edge. But the throws are not all great. No. The throws are not all – like, this guy, he had to stop to catch the football there. <laughs> like, and he still finds a way to make it work for him. I think that's really impressive. I think it really speaks to what he's able to do as a player, uh, especially coming out of Boston College, who hasn't had a guy drafted since, goodness gracious. So, yeah. this is going to be really interesting to see. For me, I'm going with an A+. Plus. You get a weapon. You get a guy that's going to fit, too. I think that's the coolest part because now you got Lamar re -signed. Yes. So teams are going to have to worry about Lamar. Teams are also going to have to worry about Odell Beckham. Yeah. Andrews. J.K. Dobbins. This is an elite offense. They signed offense. Aguilar as well, yeah. This is an elite offense. Yes, and he becomes a chess piece that you can use in that jet action. He becomes a chess piece that you can use – off the line. He can line him up in the backfield. We saw that and then let him get out and go. Yeah. I think this is a really, really, really good pick for them. AJ Brown, uh, my producers told me that you were clapping when this pick was made. What, what got <laughs> you so excited? Because when I was just watching film on this guy, man, what stood out to me that he's a dog, man. He, he wants the ball. He wants the contact. Uh, he gets open. Uh, and he just kind of played with that tenacity of I'm the best one on the field, and, and that shows all over the field. And to pair him with Odell Beckham, Rashard Bateman, uh, that offense is definitely, offense definitely going to be lethal. Uh, but this is my wide receiver one, man. Uh, I just think he's just special, man. He's a human joystick. He can turn around and look at you and take off running, man. He, he has this type of speed. Um, I think the sky's the limit for this guy, man. Mike, I know you love him, too. Oh, I love this pick. Really? This pick. Yeah. Now, this is a pick I can condone and say I love it uh, just because of who you're pairing him with. But short, before Bateman's injury, he looked so promising. Mm. Right. And now you out at the route running of Odell Beckham, and you're talking about this loaded AFC side. I mean, and you put him in there with Mark Andrews. You give – now it's like – and now you pay Lamar, you bring him back, and now you give him a new – two new weapons, which he desperately needed, right. yeah. mixed with Andrews – and you got Dobbins and Edward. I just, this offense can really just go through the roof and it's going to bring so much trouble to the AFC side. Yeah. I, this was a great pick in value. In and the we knew span this was of coming. a month, Lamar Jackson went from feeling disrespected and didn't think that they had ever given him weapons to now he has a loaded offensive core and he's got a heck of a lot of money in his pocket. Yes, and this is the speed he needed. He never had right. Odell. Hey, I don't know if Odell still has his slant, take it 80 speed. Well, Odell he, still, ha he had Hollywood Brown. He he had he has high. He still has that high end speed. If you look at his workout videos. Yeah. But this Zay Flowers, he might run a four two, but he plays four three four two. Right. And he's going to. And he's that deep threat Lamar needed to take it 
over the top, hey, you're not going to be able to sit in this box no more. Yeah. Who are you going to say, Ryan? The problem when they had Hollywood Brown was that he had to be the guy on the outside. He had to be the right. route winner. Whereas now you have two of those. You have Bateman, you have Odell. They can be your outside guys. Flowers can be your move hybrid weapon. And it's an arms race in the AFC. It's a race to 30-plus points per game. If you're not doing that through three games in the AFC, you ain't winning the Super Bowl. Uh, I'm going to put them on the spot. Minnesota Vikings are on the clock. Uh, Kirk Cousins. Uh, I'm sorry, bro. I got to do it. Who do you want? Well, I was excited to get the Alabama running back, but he went so so much earlier than I thought he was going to go to mm. to a you know division rival. And then with three receivers on the board three picks ago, I would have thought <laughs> that maybe one of them could fall to us. But <laughs> we went three for three we with receivers in a coming. row. So at this point, your guess is as good as mine. Uh, you know, we've we've been a little uh, thinned out on defense the last few years, kind of hovering around the bottom five in the league in yards the last three years in a row. So. At this point, you know, I'll take anything to get, you know, a defense that's in the top half of the league in, in yards given up. And, uh, um, you know, on offense, we'll take a weapon. Uh, I'm open-minded here. Whatever, whatever we feel we got to do to win. Uh, yeah, if they want to do some double tight end sets, you do have Kincaid. You do have Mayer. They're falling a little bit defensively. Nolan Smith is the guy that we are now focused on as what is going on. Uh, this is a 4-3 pass rusher. That was the number one recruit yeah. that has been, like, the yeah. guy his entire life. I don't think right. he'd make it past 25. So we did tear his pack this past season. Right, right. And obviously didn't do any bench or anything pre-draft. I do wonder if teams came back with that pack injury and just mm. are a little wary of it. Yeah, I just can't see him falling past the Giants. The Jags de desperately need a rusher. I know the Jags will be happy or they need a slot, but I, I, I mean, I can see the Vikings going. They high is still on the board. You give them a deep threat outside of Jefferson. Get some people away from Jefferson. Make them lean a little bit to the right. You I know. have a theory sometimes that like some people's names, they just like look like they should go somewhere. I kind of think Brzee just kind of looks like a Viking name to me. <laughs> I, I know Brzee. this is like not rooted in anything fact, but like <laughs> I see him on the Vikings roster, so that's gonna like be that my take. pick. Yeah. Who's gonna? Yeah, that's my take. Which, which I'll go. I'll, I'll roll with you. Really? Let's do it. Okay. Let's do it. I'll say. I'll say Jordan Addison. Four straight wide. Jordan Addison. Wow. A run of all runs. Or Hyatt. Hyatt or Addison, or we could see a detail. Oh yeah, Jalen. Jalen Hyatt. Is but we know the Giants are gonna take a receiver for sure. Mm. It's the right one still there. Or so, a tight end. No, so we one. went we went three wide receivers in a row. Yeah. We also had uh, Gonzalez and Emmanuel Forbes go. That was the, the two. We've had three cornerbacks go. Yep. Uh, after we had that run of offensive linemen where we had Wright, Skaronsky, Broderick Jones, we have not had any more offensive linemen go. Um, also, we had our first linebacker go. That was a shot. I mean, the, the Detroit Lions have stunned me. Um, and Sanders set this pick. Yeah. They just like Eric Kendrick. That's who I was. And they like to blitz a lot, and that's what they're known for with Barr before he left in his prime. Barr was a prime blitzer. Maybe a Joey Porter EK. Jr. here. Joey Porter Jr. I could really see a lot of defense start to go. Yeah, I, I love, I love, um, I agree. No, I just couldn't remember his Drew name. Drew Sanders. Drew Sanders, yeah. I think he's uh, Arkansas. That was my, Arkansas. That was my LB1. Same. Are you talking about blitzing? Downhill yep. speed. I, I, that was the guy speed. that I thought had a yeah. lot of similarities. I am, um, and with Brian Flores coming over, mm, they're right. going to be different. Like it's going to be, it's going to look a lot different than it did a year yeah, so ago. So what does that mean under Brian Flores? You're probably going to be more blitz and more man Pressure, coverage more man. than Joey Porter, anything man. we saw last year. That's Joey Porter. That's also Drew Sanders. If you're I'll blitzing, you're off all Porter linebacker. Right here, so. man. Porter, my dog. What's up with Miles Murphy? Miles Murphy just did not have great tape last year. I mean, he's a heck of an athlete. But just the tape was Brzee. lackluster. Yep. So, wow, oh, a fourth uh, wide receiver. Let's go right to Kirk Cousins. Kirk, you just got yourself a wide receiver. Have you seen anything of Jordan Addison? I haven't seen much of his tape yet. I'm excited to take a look now. I got All right, a lot then here's, of here's to what do, we're going to do, Kirk. Um, we're going to do the video, and then we're going to come right back to you yeah. to get your take. Okay.
The Vikings select Jordan Addison, won the Bolitnikoff as a sophomore at Pitt, then he went to USC. He has punt returner, over 3,000 career receiving yards, 29 touchdowns at Pitt, had 100 receptions for nearly 1,600 yards and 17 touchdowns. Don't go to Kirk yet because I want Renner to break it down even more. He's the only three-year player in the draft with over 3,000 passing yards, what do you think of Addison here? To me, he's the best route runner on the outside in this draft class. He, he just understands that unique way of separating against corners. And, and he did it like he's not a super physically imposing dude. He didn't test off the charts athletically. He just has that way of moving that's just graceful and easy. And the game just comes to him naturally. And that's how you produce to the level he did. A little banged up this past year, but he's a guy who is a route winner that if you see man coverage, he's one on one you can trust that he is going to get open. Mm. Yeah. I, I, what's, well, what's the grade? We're going to go A with that one. Yeah. I love it. He's a good player. And I'm glad you mentioned the ease that he plays with because he does play with the, there's a, a casual ease to his game. He's able to separate. He's able to go out and make plays. And the thing I really like, he did it at Pitt, and P Pitt is one thing, right? Yeah, yeah. But then he went to USC, still did it. And the cool thing, and the reason I really like it, and I'm sure Kirk, was, can, Kirk can speak to this too, you can hide him a little bit. He doesn't have to just be an outside wide receiver. He can hide. You can hide him a little bit. Like we just showed in the clip, they played him in the they played him in the backfield, and then he you know catches a wheel route. So I think this guy's kind of like a great value, Tyreek Hill, in terms of mm. speed, ability. Watch it. Like I mean, this guy never had a chance. Yeah, this guy never had a chance on him. And so when he gets loose, I think he's going to go out and make plays, especially if you hide him a, a, a few times. You keep him there in the slot. Nobody can get hands on him. He scores a touchdown. So I think this is going to be really interesting to see how they use him because he's definitely got a super high ceiling. You see they're playing through a bad throw from Kenny Pickett yeah. <laughs> to, to go make the catch uh, and go score. So, yeah, this is an easy one for That's me. That's something I want to see out of Quentin Nelson. Mm. A plus from Felder. Yeah, this is it. This is this is great, especially right. if you're gonna, especially if they use him the way that he's been used previously in his career. I want to go now before we go to Kirk. Kirk, it's great to see you. I want to go to AJ Brown. Uh, AJ Brown, tell Kirk Cousins what he is getting in Jordan Addison. Uh, nickname for me was Smooth Criminal, man. Everything <laughs> just was so easy. Just watching his film, watching his tape, man. Uh, he's a guy that can run any route. Uh, he makes the game looks looks effortless, and and to be honest, I'm happy uh, Kurt got another wide receiver because he has to throw the ball to somebody else other than Justin Jefferson. So that helps <laughs> guys like me out too, because that that's a, that's a steal in the draft. That's a really good receiver. So yeah, Kurt, you, Kurt, you got your hands full now. All right, Kirk, you've heard the analysis. Now, what do you think? <laughs> Those are all really good takes. I agree with everybody. I think that uh, he is a natural wide receiver. I've played with some guys throughout the years who were great athletes. They could run well. They could jump well. But playing the position of wide receiver just didn't come naturally to them. And mm. you'll always want that natural receiver over a great athlete. And he, not to say he isn't a great athlete, but a guy who can attack the football with great hands, adjust to the ball well, run great routes, that's pretty exciting to be able to get that kind of polish right away when he shows up for OTA. So, and I agree with AJ's take that, you know, we targeted Justin a lot last year. And for, for a good reason, he's <laughs> one of the elite receivers in football. But... This should, should help take some pressure off of him along with K.J. Osborne and T.J. Hawkinson. But um, the more that we can divert coverage away from Justin, that's only going to help Jets with his uh, ability to, uh, to, to uh, wreck the game in a good way. And, Kirk, uh, do you have a welcoming <laughs> message for Jordan Addison? Really just welcome the team, first of all. But more importantly, I'm ready to get to work. You know, there's a lot of work up ahead, and uh, I think he's going to love it in our locker room. we got a great group. Uh, he's going to fit right in, and uh, if he's a worker, if he loves football, if he's ready to commit to, uh, to being the best he can be, he's going to be a great fit and uh, excited to get him out here and see what he can do. Awesome. Uh, you want to talk about him really quick? Because we do have a trade. Oh, there's a trade? Giants traded up one pick with the Jaguars. I don't, I don't know why they felt they needed to trade up one pick. Uh, unless they, I, I don't know. I've never understood that. I mean, the Eagles did it. You were happy. Yeah. And, and so it worked out. So <laughs> I understood uh, that. I mean, we all understood so, that. So I guess my question is, who could the Giants be, be being like, we don't want to mess around, we want to get this guy? We've had four straight wide receivers go off the board. Jalen Hyatt. Joey, J Jalen Hyatt could be one. Joey Porter Jr. Joey Porter, Drew Sanders. They're in desperate need of a linebacker. Mm. Uh, are Giants. you saying their linebackers are trash? 
they let go of Martinez and they just never really Crowder's been okay, but they never really filled it. And they brought in uh Jalen Smith to try to help fill it, but they need a definitely a starter, a it factor in that second line of scrimmage for sure. Yeah. Hey, I was going to say tight end, but they traded for Darren Waller. Yeah, yeah, that's nothing really saying. makes sense here for me. I, I will say this, though, about the wide receiver run we just saw. I, I think all of those guys went to the exact perfect position for Talk each other. Talk about it. Jack Smith and Jigba, I, I thought, you know, he's, he can play outside, but I want him to go to a place where he can just play the slot. Right. Seattle, right. he can just play the slot. Zay Flowers, you know, I like him <laughs> if he wanted to be like a number one, but he gets to go to a place where he gets uh-huh. to just be the, the gadget guy. And then Jordan Aston gets to go to a place where he's just a number two. And I love that for all those guys. So. Thanks. Uh, Interesting that the Giants felt they needed to go up. There were rumors that Jacksonville was going to need a cornerback or a secondary guy. But the Giants have traded up one pick to go with Deontay Banks. I talked to my guy Chris Sims, who knows the Giants, and this was his favorite player for the Giants. Uh, from Baltimore, went to Maryland. Kid is quick. Ran a 4 3 5 40. Had the best vertical of all cornerbacks at the Combine, a 42-inch vertical. He missed all of 2021 with a shoulder right. injury. But you know what he does have on film? He looked really good against Marvin Harrison Jr., and not a lot of people did. Deontay Banks, the pick for the Giants. Yeah, and he played in a scheme at Maryland that asked him to do a ton of different stuff. And you mentioned 2021 only plays two games, 2020 only five games because of COVID. So didn't play a ton of football after starting as a true freshman there at Maryland. And then this year, just a massive breakout. I love this right here. He's one of the most physical tacklers in this draft class. Only missed one tackle this whole last season. I I think... The sky is the limit for this guy. You mentioned the athletic measurables there. They show up on tape routinely. You don't see corners this big that change directions as well as he does every day. I thought his agility is tremendous and exactly what you want to see at the position. He really, like, he just didn't have enough tape, in my opinion, the injury from 2021 to get himself into that top 10, top 15 sort of category. But he truthfully, physically belongs there. Great. Go, eh? What do we think, Felder? I love him. Still can play. I mean, you love everybody at this point. <laughs> yeah, I do. I, that's that's the that's listen. That's the role that I play. I love I love everyone. And um, with Deontay Banks, what you, what you get though is, in, I kind of equate it to the guys coming out of Illinois too. You get a really well taught guy. Mm. And obviously, you mentioned um, Renner that he didn't have all the as much tape as some of these other guys. But certainly, when you do pop it in, you see what he can do. You look at a guy, he can play and press, okay? No problem. And I love this. Look at that patient feet. I wish he would have got hands on him, but guess what? He still has speed to play down the field. I think this is a really good pick in terms of what they're getting from him, a guy that he's willing to come up and make tackles, which is a good thing, uh, something that you have to have, especially um, in the in, at the next level. He Long coverage here, which that's hard to do. Yeah. Cover for that long on the scramble. And then, uh, okay, boop, I'll help you, on, help you on the teams too. So, this is going to be a, this is an interesting pick. I'm going to go with an A on this one too. I think that oops, I'm not supposed to hit it yet. That's my good. fault. But yeah, I mean this guy can play. He's a good football player and he, again, the big thing that I keep going back to, I like these guys. We always talk about Ohio State. We always talk about Penn State. We always talk about Michigan. We always talk about um, you know, Alabama, yeah. Georgia, whatever. But there's good coaching going on other mm-hmm. places and this is a prime example of it. Same thing with the guys coming out of Illinois playing in the secondary. There's good coaching going on Mm. other places that aren't just the top brand name schools. Uh, I would say, Micah, we talked earlier about another cornerback going to the NFC East that you thought was a little bit too light. This guy doesn't have that issue. Uh, Super aggressive, uh, great. I I love physicality at a DB standpoint because that's what you need in our division. Our division is physicality, big receivers, big runners. Like, you got to be able to come up and play for the Giants to come and get him late. At a value of a pick around 24, 25 is great value on a guy. Like, you might not know, but it's close to the second where you can afford to take a risk on a guy like this, and hopefully it turns out for the best. And you're the Giants, Wink Martindale, D.C., the blitz heaviest team yep. in the NFL. And when you blitz as much as they do, right. you better have reliable corners or yeah. else they're mm-hmm. going to get toasted on the back. Yeah. So yeah. Jacksonville moved uh, – by the way, is there a more really cool NFL name than Deontay Banks? Yeah. That just sounds I awesome. mean, he's going to make some mad bank if he played hey. good in New York. Mad oh, yeah. bank. You're not lying. He's also you play good in New York. In Texas. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so, so the Jaguars went back to 25, 24 to 25. Mm-hmm. Then they're going to move from 25 to 27 because the Bills are moving up. What are we thinking okay. here for the Bills? 
Renner. What what could be jumping off the page that they need to move up and jump the Cowboys? Jump the Cowboys. So why do you jump the Cowboys? So you would think maybe a tight end to jump the Cowboys, right? Oh. They've been in the market for one of those guys. But but then again, they have a Dawson Knox. I, I think they're comfortable with that unless they want to go a lot of two tight end sets. Um, All the wide receivers are gone. No, the, High is still there. Hyatt right. is still there. Yeah. Um, Nolan Smith's still there. Nolan Smith is still there. Corner, I, Joey Porter's still here. Now, Bills do need a linebacker. They did lose Tremaine Edmonds, mm -hmm. um, and you could be sitting there with the guy that Drew you guys Sanders. are saying, Drew Sanders, yeah. who would look really good in a Buffalo Bills jersey. Yeah. yeah. And they also do need DTs, A.O. Brzee, Mozzie yeah. Smith in this range. I'll be pissed if he takes Mozzie Smith. That's my guy. <laughs> That's my guy. <laughs> That's who you want to go to the That's Cowboys. That's my guy. So if the so if the Eagles go and they get Jalen Carter and then the Bills jump the Cowboys and take Mozzie, this is like a worst case scenario. Worst case. Okay. But if we get Joey Porter Jr. or Mozzie Smith, then you're happy. I'll be I'll be extremely happy. Cause is there I, a guy you don't want? I, even I know. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> even I know Problematic. that uh, you know, we only get Gilmore for one or two years. Right. So we need an outside solidify, especially trying to hold, because we can't afford to keep paying high-end corners to come in. Right. So we need a guy outside of Trayvon Diggs knowing we should, we have to pay him. I didn't realize you were such a salary cap guru, man. You really, Bro, I really you're thinking long -term. I really try to learn the game and try to put the best team available to win Super Bowls. Like, and he's about, look, he's got to make the money. Yeah, oh, I totally get it. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> this is, a, I think the Bills are a, a very interesting s situation as a team. 13-3, and three, Super right. Bowl contender. They were the favorite before yeah. the year. They're hosting the Bengals. Joey Burrow comes in there, and, and you're sitting there as a Buffalo Bills fan, you're like, the hell just happened? Like, you know we what really threw them off? You know, your prayers for DeMar Hamlin. Sure. Yeah. But we saw what was heading towards that game, the way the Bengals came out. Yeah. They just continued it. They didn't get that game of adjustment. Wow. And they jump ahead of the Cowboys to take Dalton Kincaid. Wow. The Buffalo Bills want weapons, and they're okay with a two tight end set. Josh Allen, I want to introduce you to your new weapon. First team all Pac-12, third team all American. Led FBS at tight ends and receiving yards and catches. He grew up in Vegas, two years at San Diego, then went Utah against USC. 16 catches on 16 targets for 235. Does have a back injury, but this is a heck of a weapon at tight end, Runner. This is one of my favorite picks of the draft. This is the Bills seeing the landscape of the AFC that we talked about earlier and saying, I I need weapons. I, I need someone. I have a Dawson Knox. Um, I have a tight end array that I like. Here's a tight end that you love. They can get on the field still with Dawson Knox because he's so athletic that he wins down the football field, like you're mm. seeing here. I, I've not seen a tight end with as good a ball skills come out in, in my eight plus years of doing this as Dalton Kincaid. I, I mean, off, outside of his frame, inside of his frame, he's plucking the ball out of the air. You do not have to worry about him dropping one, even though he did drop one in the end zone against Florida. Only two drops, though, his entire collegiate career. Mm. This physical comp for him, it's Travis Kelsey. He looks the way Travis Kelsey does. I'm not saying he's going to be that good, but this is a guy that can bring the things that Kelsey does in terms of those option routes, just give him the freedom to create space over the middle of the field, and he's going to do it at, for the Buffalo Bills. This is a weapon in your offense, a chess piece to add to, again, an arms race that is the AFC. And I think they now have the sort of horses to compete. They, is, it, is it fair, Felder, to say, let's remove the position of tight end, they took the best pass catcher available? Yeah, I think so. I think, they, I think he, I mean, he's... Are you not high on him? No, I'm super high on him. Okay, I love okay, this okay. kid. Um, but no, I think that the, the thing I like the most about him Obviously, we see those catches, the catches in traffic. We see yep. the catches with people draped on his body. We see a little bit of run after the catches, which is something that, that's something always with tight ends that I, I look at and think about because so many tight ends are catch and fall guys. Yep. And he's a guy that wants to stay on his feet and wants to pick up some, some uh, yards after catch. 16 broken tackles, eight catches at 25 or more yards. And here's the other thing. I'm going to go A plus here. But here's the thing. I love the fact that everybody knew that he was going to get the football when you played Utah. Everyone, you don't catch 16 balls against USC. <laughs> and you're like, it's not a surprise. They're not sneaking him out. Yeah, yeah. Everybody knows he was going to, everybody knew he was going to get the football and he still delivered. Mm. So that's what I really like about this guy. Knowing the score, he understands, hey, 
I'm gonna they're gonna have to do, they're gonna have to deal with me. Yep. And it's one of those things where it's like um, with Dalton Kincaid, it's like I'm not you're, I'm not trapped in here with you. You're trapped in here with me. And he just goes out there and makes plays after play after play. You like this pick, or do you want to focus on Dallas? One Dallas. Right okay, now. okay, he's on Dallas. He's shut up. Two tight end knocks, whatever. I, <laughs> I'll see him later this year. I need to see who's going to help us beat them. I'm not even going to. Okay, Dallas Cowboys. What do you want? I need Mozzie or Joey Porter. Those are the two guys. Those are the two guys. We need a guy that's going to be what dominant What if they go inside. Michael Mayer? You need to replace Dalton I'll Schultz. I'll be so pissed. Well, no, I mean, it's going to be your teammate. You'll but, still like him. But... I mean, we have, I thought, (laughs) Hendershot and I thought Ferguson played really well. Mm -hmm. When Schultz was down, I didn't feel like it was such a crazy drop-off at the tight end position. I was very comfortable with them. I thought they stepped up. I thought they did everything they possibly do to stay on the field. Don Schultz was just our franchise tag guy. Gotcha. You know, so I don't see the... What if it's a Nolan Smith? uh, I wouldn't be mad at that either. I wouldn't be too... But you really want Mozzie. I need, yeah, we, I think. What is it about him that has you so, like, excited? Big body, run stopper, push the pocket. Like, that's going to help change all the rushes. Right. It's going to change, it's going to change, make life easier for you because they got to worry about him on the interior. It's going to make life easier for the linebackers Mm. because he's going to be able to eat some blocks. He's going to eat double teams. I mean, and you're talking about we struggled in the run. I mean, Mm -hmm. you know. We, we just got a whole bunch of pass rushers, but to get that combination of size you and pa- pass rush would be just huge. And yeah, then, you know that, like that Bruce Feldman freak list? Yeah. Yeah, Mozzie was yeah. number one on that thing. Yeah. Do well, you we have thought, intel? Do you have intel? Like, did you no, talk? Should I, should I see what's going on? Yes, I think you should, like, FaceTime uh, Dan Quinn. Like, like, what is going on right now? Like, we need Are you nervous? To... I am, bro. <laughs> talk, yeah, talk us through. What you feeling right now? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You got bubbles? I got bubbles. <laughs> who, you, who are you going to do? This is too important. Yeah, who should we call? Who should you call? Who should you FaceTime? We should try to call Dan. Like, yeah, you do think it. he'll answer? There's only one way to find yeah. out. Yeah. You just got to put it on speakerphone. He can't mess this one up. <laughs> Tell him you're no on No way camera. he answers. No way he answers. I doubt he Well, answers. we're going to learn a lot about your friendship. Maybe he don't love me as much as I think he does. <laughs> Tough realization. Oh, he loves you as much as you think he does. He, uh, does. You know? Well, you can't mess this pick up, though. We can't. No, there's no way. Watch. We're going we gonna to get. What if you go Will Levis? <laughs> uh, yo, yo, why are you playing like that? <laughs> why are you play like that? Because like, I'm a Birds fan. I will be so <laughs> thrown off. Like, I'm like, what direction are we going? We want we want to yeah. win now. Like, What, what if yeah. the Eagles You don't get Mazzia. Gilmore and Cooks. Like, We don't trade for the players we trade for. To not win now. To not win True. now, right. True. Yeah. Like, True. I need someone that's going to come and help us win now. Like Yeah, Gilmore, Cooks. Um, like, we the, need to turn Dallas into, like... The two players back, that like, you guys have been mocked are on the board. Mozzie Smith and Michael Mayer are the two guys that you guys have been we're mocked. Not, we're not taking Michael Mayer. I don't know yet. This would either I'm going to say Mayer's good. I, if, if you draft Michael yeah, Mayer, really you got a good, good dude. He's, he's, he's like Captain America. He's cool. <laughs> he looks like a NCAA 14 creative he's cool. player. He's cool. He's cool. But I think we could get a Michael Mayer later. Like, you could get a Darnell Washington. That's what I was going to say. You could get someone in a second that we could trade up. Like, yeah. I don't think right, we could take there's him the, at this There's value. the draft room. Come on, Jerry. Come on, man. <laughs> McCarthy's like, I need Mayer. No, no, nah, nah, Mike. <laughs> I, I I see that face going red. Dan, where you at? <laughs> Say something, Dan. <laughs> I really hope they're like, man, Mike is calling me. Yeah, right now. you're like, why? Yes, yeah, I should be calling. I think I still got the number or, they called me from. Or shoot him a text. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Come on, man. bro. Yeah. Come so on, bro. the Cowboys, uh, you got rid of Zeke, got rid of Dalton Schultz. Man. Oh my gosh. Come on, come on, come on, come on. That defense really is just like you put a nose tackle in there that's a every down nose and yeah. you are complete. You Yo. know? Yo. You know what uh, Mozzie's nickname was on the team? Gorilla. We need a gorilla. Perfect. Come on, Moz. 
Because appa- on, apparently in the weight room he was doing like crazy stuff. Yeah, he's all the time. I think him and Osa will go. And we lost Carlos Watkins, so I yes. don't see how it wouldn't make sense. You know, but who knows, bro? I don't. Dude, I've been watching this blitz game. Yeah, who's winning? <laughs> I w- I wouldn't be mad at a receiver if we went and got like Hyatt though either. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be mad at that. You wouldn't. I wouldn't be mad at that. There'd be a small part of you that would be mad at that. It would hurt me inside, but I would not be upset about Hyatt because we need a pure... Well, that's I just say, like, I'm really proud of go. you. It is so cold in here. It's a little freezing. Uh, I'm freezing. Yeah, and My you, hands, got a like, wool, you got a wool coat on. Yeah, I, like, I might have played it smart. Who would you want as an Eagles fan? Who's like your dream? Yeah. Well, so like here's the thing. You know, like, I, I to... want Micah to be happy because he's okay. been so good and he's been so much fun. Uh, at the same time, come on, Jerry, we can't wait to the last minute of the picking. <laughs> I got. I have to imagine that there. If I'm the Cowboys, what I'm doing is I'm calling everybody else and I'm going. Shoot, do you want to trade up for a quarterback? Because we look, man. I, I know that we don't think that much of Will Levis. Somebody might. And, and we're at that point of the draft yeah. where you want to lock in that fifth year. Yeah. I mean, we can see. Uh, I just, I we will can say see this. a Jordan Love situation. I, I, it will come out later if the Dallas Cowboys wanted Dalton Kincaid. Okay? And the reason it's interesting to me is the Eagles did this to Dallas when they jumped ahead of them and took Dallas Goddard. Right. And that was their tight end because this is an offense. Oh, okay. So they're clapping. They love it. All right. Take a seat. Take a seat. Well, of course they're going to love oh, it. Jerry loves love it. it. All right. Why are everybody shaking? And I don't know. Can we get, uh, can we get program on the signals. monitor? I want to watch us again. It's mixed signals. Like, I don't know. Like, what's going on? Okay. Everyone seems extremely ecstatic. Like, You're nervous, man. Right. My, <laughs> I, I, I'm starting to warm up. My palms are sweating. <laughs> Cowboys Nation. Knees weak, arms The championship heavy. pick right here. Okay. Okay. I have the pick. Yes. Okay. They've told me to wait. You guys tell me how you want to do this. Okay, they are confirming. It's not official. Don't be looking at your phone. (laughs) No! They had it, and then they said they need to confirm, so I'm not leading you on. We're going to find out on TV. No, we are not. I promise you we're going to beat it. Okay. The pick is in. And with the 26th pick in the NFL draft, the Dallas Cowboys select Mozzie Smith. Let's go, man! Let's go! Dan New! Yo! Yo, look at the text, man. I told you (laughs) Dan wouldn't let me down, man. Dan wouldn't let me down. Read, read the text. What does it say? You want me to read it? Michigan DT, you texted him today at 327, and he responded, I'm all about that life, with six exclamation points. <laughs> and then you wrote, please. We about that life! How do you feel, Muster Micah Parsons? No more QB sneak, AJ! <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Oh, huge, oh. huge, huge, wow. huge. That's how we do it, Cowboys Nation. Man, uh, A.J. Brown, uh, what do we think about Michael Parsons' <laughs> reaction? <laughs> Yo. I think, I think he, he has every right to, to, to be excited. This is a great pick for him. Uh, but we're the Eagles, and... We do, we do what we want. We're going to QB sneak whenever we want. You can't stop that. <laughs> uh, let's, let's take a look at this film, and we'll break this down. Uh, Mozzie Smith, 6'3", 323, defensive tackle out of Michigan. Uh, first team, all Big Ten, team captain. I'm ready to tweet. Get, get on that tweet. We'll do, we'll, we'll do the video. Um, whenever you all are ready to roll that, that footage, let's do it. Ranked number one on Bruce Feldman's freak list. Uh, 25 pressures in 2022, uh, led the team. Micah Parsons, overly ecstatic. Uh, Renner, what do we think of Mozzie here at 26? Yeah, an ascending player, right? So he only gets to start 2021. Okay, you mentioned the freaks list. 
the most powerful dude in this draft class, and you finally saw it in 2022. This past season, the last three games Ooh. are what sold me. Ohio State, Purdue, TCU, unblockable in the run game. Uh, I mean, his Check ability to two-hand control interior offensive linemen, what he did to Luke Whipler, a guy from Ohio State, the center yep. that will probably hear his name called tomorrow, is a was a crime. I, I mean, he... He little boyed him, single-handedly hurt his draft stock because he's just that powerful. He's the guy who's going to come into the middle of your defense. You're not going to have to worry about him in the run game. And against the pass, he will push and walk back centers. He will give his all, being that spike man on stunts, throwing guards to the side. I mean, just a pure power player, for my opinion, for my money, the strongest player in this draft and is a guy that you're just going to love at nose tackle. Great. Hey. What do we think, Felder? Are you as excited as Micah Parsons is? Not as excited as Micah is, but, yeah. man. Uh, is... Yo, yo. No, no, I don't know what type of fan he is, but he loves everybody <laughs> but my pick. <laughs> <laughs> I, this man goes, I love him. Oh, I love this pick. I love this pick. Now, well, all no, of a sudden, no, my pick comes up. He might still like it. He just doesn't love it as much as you. I don't love it as much as you. I do <laughs> love the pick. Yeah, you know what's up. You ain't start the last 25 picks like that. Don't start my pick like that. Don't start my pick like that. No, this guy is a mountain of a man, and I think it's going to be good for you. It's going to be good for the rest of that football team in Dallas because he, again, he's humongous. He is a mountain of a man. He is impossible to move. I love the fact that he – listen, they moved him around too, and they let him work on some stunts. They let him work on yeah, some things those feet. that allow him to move, and that's what I was going to say. He's got good footwork. It's not just his hands. He also has good footwork. And I love that. He's, look at the not way he's wow. got that guy. Like, yeah. look, not that. I absolutely love it. I love this. This is a great pick. This is a guy that you can sit in the middle of your defense, and he's going to go out there and, you see and how, perform. That's literally how Linville Joseph, yep, all up. those guys, Damn they handsome. just, you, you know, he, he, we're going to work on the get off. We're going to get that right. Yeah. But <laughs> he's locking out. He's like, I dare exactly. someone to run down here. I'm going to long arm you. I'm going to drag you down. Like, that's what we need. Look that is the type of run stuff. Felder gave he gave it an A plus. Look at that. Are you okay with it now? <laughs> nah, he ain't love it. He, oh right, I he, loved he, it. He did not fight he, you for he Felder. He hurt my feelings. That's why he did it. <laughs> he, he, I, you can't start with say I don't really love it. They give it an A plus. All right, so you no, love it. No, I didn't say I didn't really love it. I said I don't love it as much as you. Yeah, because you're. I don't you're have to play. Your I'm, knees not, or I'm not playing with it. I don't have to play with him. I'm an A plus. So you don't love it as much as me. That's like an A minus A B. All right, I want you to do this. I want you to look in that camera and I want you to give a message to Mozzie. Mozzie, man, listen, yo, welcome to the team. You somehow I wanted to be a part of this organization. I love the way you play. I just hope you're ready to be a part of the best D-line in the NFL. I'm going to help you get sacks. You're going to help me get sacks. Let's start together and get this Super Bowl and get paid, man. You happy? I'm super happy. Man, uh, you were upset earlier. You're happy now. Yeah, I mean... It still hurts with Carter, but I mean, I'm cool though. I'm you got cool. your big guy. I, I, I'm cheesing a little bit. I got my guy now. I got my guy. You got your guy, yeah. He, he going to take me for ice cream, man. I got my guy. <laughs> I got my guy. Oh, uh, that was fun. I'm happy for you. I, I didn't, that would have been really bad. Okay. Jacksonville <laughs> is in now. Uh, remember, they traded back with the Giants from 24 to 25. Then they, then they traded they back, back with Buffalo him. from 25 to 27. Uh, could we see the first safety off the board? I. That's what everyone's been mocking. Like there's, there's, there's mocking. like one need on this roster, and it's slot safety. And it was Brian Branch. And Brian Branch is that. He's as yeah. good a prospect as you'll see in that mold. Obviously, it, you know, you can swing for the fences at other positions, but. Offensive lineman. Offensive you line. know what? We just had a suspension earlier today. Yes, we did. Well, what? Uh, we had offensive tackle Cam Robinson got suspended four games for mm -hmm. PEDs. Uh. And so now you wonder. Is this going to be the guy that fills in? Because they also, this offseason, lost Jawan Taylor. So they go out there and they get Anton Harrison, mm -hmm. uh, big offensive lineman, 24 starts, 23 of them at left tackle. Yep. Uh, very young. He just turned down, just turned 21 years old. Renner, what do we think of him here at 27? Yeah, it's insurance for Cam Robinson, the fact that he's going to be suspended. You have Walker Little getting his first taste of starting at right tackle. Ooh. And now Anton Harrison's kind of like your swing tackle to start off with. Uh, you can let him develop there. That's when you want to draft an offensive tackle is the year before. You're probably going to need it. And to me, he's not as much of a project as maybe some other guys in this draft class. I love the way he uses his hands. He's really light in his Ooh. feet. I, I thought Ooh. his play strength took a massive step forward from 2021 to this season. Uh, I, I think he's a guy who maybe is not the ceiling that guys like Darnell Wright or right. Paris Johnson have, 
but I think his floor is pretty high. And floor is really all you're looking for at tackle. You don't want liabilities at that position. And I think Anton Harrison feels pretty comfortable saying he won't be that. Great. I'm going to go with an A for this one. I, I was pretty high on him. I had him in a similar tier to those guys. I'm, uh, obviously, he goes way later than them, but I think just at the tackle position, what he does well, pass protection, hand usage is what translates to the league. Yeah, I think that this is a player that he's going to come in, step in, go play. I think the cool thing with him is he's got a lot of reps like in pass pro. <laughs> a mm. lot, a lot of reps in pass pro. I do think he plays high sometimes. But at the end of the day, he's also still kind of a tall guy at, uh, what is he, 6'4", 6'5". So the thing for me is I want to see him figure out how to get a little bit lower. But at the end of the day, this is a quality pick. And look, it's the Jags, right? Yep. What do the Jags have? A franchise quarterback. What do you have to protect? Your franchise quarterback. Yeah. How do you get that done? We've said it multiple times on this show. You either go out and fix your offensive line. You go get weapons, or you fix your defense, and they've they've opted to to go lean on the offensive line. So I think it's a good pick. I'm gonna go A. This is a guy that just he's, he's I expect him to come in and play and compete for time early. Mm, he's gonna have to with everything going yeah. on there, uh, Mr. Calais Campbell. Uh, you know that team well. What do we think of Anton Harrison going to the Jags? Yeah, I think it's a great pickup. You know, um, when I was watching the tape, I mean, you guys sent me a list of guys to watch, and I never really heard of them. And I mean, I, I watch a lot of tape on, I'm just a football fan, but I never heard of him. When well, I put the tape on, I was like, wow, this guy's pretty dang good. You know, I, I liked his contact balance, you know, a good hand placement, physicality in the run game. Uh, honestly, you know, I feel like he's, you know, as good or could be as good as uh, some other guys that went earlier in the offensive line position. I think, especially starting out, I think, you know, like you, like you say, you might not have as high of a ceiling, but right now his floor is low. And I see the same thing. You know, while I watch tape, I'm like, yo, this guy can play football right now in the NFL. You know, I don't know if he's going to be an all-pro, but he's a good player, you know. And so I like his athleticism. I like what I see on tape. I think he has a chance to be a pretty good player. And he's in a great uh, – you know, he has a quarterback who can make plays. Uh, running games will be on point. A lot of receivers, I mean, he's just surrounded by talent. So you go in there and just put your hand in the pile and try to make your presence felt. Hell, yeah. Thank you, Calais. Uh, Micah, I feel like you watch the offensive tackles and you're already thinking about how you're going to beat them around the edge. Yeah. How are you going to beat him? Man, I'm going I'm to try to set him down a little bit. Uh, you know, aggression can also uh, be a downfall. When you're overly aggressive, your goal is to try to get your hands on me as quick as possible to slow me down. So I'm going to try to use that to my advantage. A little I mean, you reach, I teach moment. Yeah, you know, and he, he, you know he's, he's coming from a great school of all, great offensive right. legends yeah. of offensive tackles. So I'm pretty sure he's really well coached. I think he's going to come in and be super helpful to Lawrence, losing Jawan Taylor, losing Cam Robinson, yep. a guy who could probably see the field day one. Um, so I think this was a great value pick for the Jets. Uh, Bengals are up right now, pick 28. Uh, and, and I wonder, you know, they were marked, mocked a little bit of Anton Harrison yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, there are two other tackles, uh, one other tackle at least in Dewan Jones uh, right. that I think could possibly, and that would be an Ohio State to Cincinnati connection mm -hmm. right there. There is also an opportunity here for a Michael Mayer. And the pick is... Miles, Miles Murphy. Miles okay. Murphy. Wow. Okay, they end up going a little defense here, the Cincinnati Bengals. I don't like that pick. Okay, well, let's start <laughs> a little positivity, and then we'll get to that. Cincinnati Bengals go with Miles Murphy out of Clemson, lined up all over the defensive line. This was a top 10 high school recruit. Man is physical, 405 bench press, 38 games, 37 tackles for loss. There is a rumor in the NFL, some people are worried about Clemson guys translating at the next level. Yeah. But what do we think of Murphy here to the Bengals? Yeah, the Bengals are in a position where, and they said this last year when they drafted Daxon Hill, they don't have a lot of needs on this roster besides their offensive line, which at this point, you know, it's depleted. So they said, we're just going to take guys that we think are at valuable positions that can make an impact in the future. They're forward-looking positions so that, you know, when uh, Sam Hubbard's contract's up, Maybe we don't have to resign him. We have Miles Murphy. Trey there. Hendrickson's a free agent after next year. And Trey Hendrickson, there you go. We don't have to re up him. We have this guy waiting in the wing. So it's a forward thinking pick for a guy who is a project. Miles Murphy needs reps. He has a long arm, and that's about it. And that's great in college. It can work. You can be a little productive. But in the NFL, you need a little bit more than that. So he needs some refinement to his game, but you don't find athletes like this guy too often. He ran a 4 5 3 at 268 pounds. He cooks off the edge. I had the comp there, Rashawn Gary. He's just a big, strong dude. The problem is, as you mentioned the Clemson stuff, his tape was better as a freshman sophomore than it was as a junior. That's mm. not the way you want a guy to be going, and that's why he falls to this point in the draft. 
going to go A still, though, because I, I, I just think his what he can be, those guys usually go higher than this. Mm. Yeah, I, when I look at him, I, I see a guy that should be better than yes. this. Mm. And you mentioned that his early stuff was a little bit better than his later stuff. I think that also has to do with teams identifying him as a problem and the way that he's being used. So this is going to be interesting to see how that works. Oof. There's that long arm that you just mentioned. It's his best move. He's got long arm. He can get it done. So I think the big key is going to be how does he work on bending the edge? How does he work on getting to the quarterback in, in more efficient ways? But this is a guy I really like. I like I've liked him since he was in high school. Yeah. So this is one of those things where you look at him, you watch him play, you see that I think that there's an interesting element to his play, his body development too. Mm -hmm. He was smaller and slimmer as a freshman and was able to get a little bit more penetration, was able to be a little bit more of a speedy player. I'm going to go ahead and give this an A, though, because this is someone that I thought had the opportunity to be in the top 20. Mm -hmm. And you're yeah. getting him at the back end of the first round. So I think this is a fantastic pick for them. Uh, your first reaction was, I don't like this pick. Why? Yeah, I mean, you know, trying to go for quality of picks, especially this late, I thought they would go in a different uh, direction. They, I thought they might reach for corner or safety, right. especially losing some backing guys and your corners Jesse Bates, being a, Bell. being your especially with Eli Apples over your corners being a little borderline suspect. I thought there were still a couple quality guys still there right. that you could have took, um, and then like you you're getting almost the same guy with Trey Hendrickson mm -hmm. and Sam Hubbard. Like I thought you might want to go a little bit more speed right. around the edge, get you a dimensional. You got a Joseph Osai over there. Would you rather still, see Would you rather see Nolan Smith go here? I would have much rather a Nolan Smith with the pick. I, I believe like you should like you should have a speed guy, you should have a power guy because everyone's rush can't be high or right. everyone's rush can't be power. That's how slips outs happen. QB's got outside of pocket. It has to have balanced rushers. I just right. think you're just getting the same guy that you, guys that you have. I just realized, and uh, by the way, Miles Murphy, Clemson, going to Bengals. I do think to see that Trey Hendrickson is a free agent after this year that made sense to replace it. Yeah. Um, Saints are on the clock now. How do you feel if the Eagles take Nolan Smith at 30? I think that would be pretty crazy. But it, it doesn't – like, <laughs> oh, I don't know oh, how – Hold on, hold on, hold on. I got to change this up. That would be that would be messed up. We got to talk about the Saints. Like, I can't do that to Saints fans because they're here. The Saints stream. In fact, I want to shout them out. Let's get the Saints chat up on the screen while we start talking about it. What are they? Uh, what do the Saints fans want? Yeah, I want to know – who the Saints fans want. Uh, this is a team that lost their top pick uh, to the Eagles because mm -hmm. of that trade last year uh, when they moved up. Um, but this is a, a pick that has gone from San Francisco to Miami to Denver to New Orleans. Uh, what are we thinking here? Um, Not many needs on this roster, right? It, it's, it's still a pretty darn good roster, at least like they're starters. You got tight end. DT, wide receiver, I, I could see all qualify as needs, places you'd want to sure. address. Michael Mayer, Michael Mayer sense, on the board. Yeah. You got Brian Brzee on the board. Right. Wide receiver, Jalen Hyatt probably on the board. So I think I think Sanders or a rush could go. Cam Jordan's getting older. Um, you might want to come Mara in Davis getting older, too. Yeah, and then you lost uh, the other rusher in free agency. Yeah. Um, uh, Mark Davenport. Stanport. Yeah, Davenport. So I could see a rusher come off the board or tight end. Um, you did resign Jawan Johnson, but a bigger, more run blocking tight end, which is Mayor, will be cool yeah. considering what they like to do. Yes. And they still and you're have adding Robert Derek Carr, Carr, and he likes the tight end. Yeah. So. Right. So, I mean, or we could see a Darnell Washington right here and be. That's, I, that's my. Uh, a gut shot shocker right here. Like, you know, we just. Yeah. But especially with, if we, when we talk about Washington. And we talk about him over Mayor. He's a, he's like having another offensive tackle mm -hmm. on your on on the field. Right. You switched off at stack. Yeah. Honestly, he's like literally watching watching Georgia play, and watching the twelve personnel sets with Washington and Brock Bowers, and then when they go Broderick Jones, Darnell Washington, Brock Bowers, mm. that side of the line was undefeated. You couldn't. There's nothing. Nobody could do anything with that thing. So. I think it's gonna. I think it's an interesting spot for Darnell Washington if they don't go with Mayer. Uh, Saints going QB. Let's go Hawks. Got that dog in him. No QB needs. We're not going QB. Okay, Breesus. TE ain't needed. Okay, Kalen. Kalen G said Jalen Hyatt. Yeah. I, I will say Levis here is interesting also, right? Because you got Derek Carr, but it's like a hey, let's Stop see. Gap. You know, it's a trial. It's a trial we, run. Listen, 
this, at this pick, I, I just don't. At these last three picks, did somebody say we're about to do something stupid? There's yes. no <laughs> Those are my need favorites. for QB. <laughs> you know, you take a QB trade up maybe around twenty to twenty four, but at these last three, this is like chance pick. Like you're you're getting late. Where Lamar went? Lamar went last. He went last. I, I can first. But they took a chance on yeah, him. Yeah, but then. Yeah. That was a chance that turned out to be gold. And the pick is in. Brian Brzee. Brian Brzee. Brian Brzee. Okay. All right. Brian Brzee. The Saints, they sit there at number 29, and they go Brian Brzee. We go back-to-back -back Clemson players. Second team, all ACC. 21 starts, 15 tackles for loss, good three technique. Coming out of high school, he was the number one recruit mm -hmm. ahead of Bryce Young. That is how serious this man was perceived. Had an ACL tear in 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, had We talked about this before the show, that strep throat infection yeah. really threw it off. But the potential is there. What do we think at this point of the draft? Yeah, so this guy, like you mentioned, five-star, number one recruit, comes in as a freshman, has about as good a freshman tape yes. at defensive tackle as like I've ever seen. He looks like he is going to be what Jalen Carter is right now and goes to the combine and tests like. You know, he ran a 4 8 6 40. He had 28 bench press reps. He, he is a physical monster. It's just tore his ACL 152 snaps into his sophomore season. Has a whale of a junior year in that. The strep throat at the beginning, his sister tragically passing away, having to miss a handful of games from that. But then by the end of the year, North Carolina game, and then their bowl game yes. against Tennessee, he looked back. He looked like he had me sold on that. That's why I have him still as a top 20 player. Comped him to Nathan Shepard, who was, uh, I believe, with, with the Saints now. He is... He is just a special athlete who's still trying to figure it out. And if you flip on this tape this past year, you're not super encouraged. But, but I do think the potential is way more than you usually see at this point in the draft. Great. I'm going A with it. I, I like what the Saints did there, just playing the board, not trading up and getting the guy. Yeah, I, this is a good pick. He's a good football player. Yeah. And it's all about getting it out of him. He was incredibly disrupted this season. And what I mean, like obviously, you mentioned the tragic loss of his sister. You even mentioned the, the strep. And it took him a long time to get back to what he was. Mm. And But what he is and what we're seeing here is a guy that's strong at the point. He works on he works on doing his job. And that's something I do like about Clemson guys. I know we've talked about people having knocks on Clemson guys, what have you. But this is a guy that you, he does his job. And he does his job really, really well. And for me, that's the mark of a good football player, is a guy that doesn't try to do somebody else's job. He just does his own job. You see him there with a little quick move. He's got the ability to do a lot. Sky's the limit with him. I think they're getting a player who probably starts out rotational, but he certainly has the ability to go out and make plays. Mm. I'm going to give it an A. I, this is a player that I like probably more than other people, but probably because I've watched a lot more of him than yeah. other people because I'm right there. And he is someone legis legitimately, this isn't the same as like Christian Wilkins, but he certainly has the ability to go out there and be a force, especially on your rundowns. Uh, Calais Campbell, you've heard our discussion. What do you think of Brian Brzee going to the Saints? I like his potential. You know, I feel like uh, you see the flashes on tape. You know, I'm a production guy, man. I like to see production. And, uh, you know, I feel like he didn't have enough of it, but I didn't realize the adversity he went through. And, you know, that plays a big role, you know, yeah. having to deal with ACL and then having your sister die. I mean, I couldn't imagine, you know, it's just a tough situation to go through. But it sounded like after he got, you know, uh, some more time <laughs> playing ball, he started playing good at the high level again. And so I feel like, um, you know, uh, he has a chance to be a pretty good player. I think the Saints do a really good job. Have, uh, they like the big D linemen uh, who they can uh, you know, develop and, and really turn into good, good players. And he has a lot of good leadership around him who can help bring the best out of him. And so uh, I think he has a good chance, man. I like his potential. You know, I'm not sold on him as being like this great dominant player, but I like his potential. Uh, Mike, I'd, I'd let you talk, but I'm going to be honest. Uh, the Eagles are on the clock. And, That's cool. Uh, I'm not obsessed with the pig. We can move on. Uh, so uh, let, let me get a little little uh, split screen with AJ Brown. Uh, AJ, what are we thinking? Do you have anybody that you really want right now? Uh, if you want, I can break down my thoughts. I'm gonna say someone on the defensive side because you know we want the ball and and and. Our defense is, is steady rebuilding and reloading. So uh, give me your thoughts, though. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. Uh, number one, the thing that I want the most is I would love 
to find a team that wants to come up for one of these quarterbacks and get a first-round pick next year. I like this investing in the future for first-round picks. That's option number one. Number two, I, getting Nolan Smith and just having all of the great Georgia football players, having Nolan Smith, Jordan Davis, N'Kobe Dean, and also Jalen Carter, that would be incredible. Uh, number three, the thing that I'm thinking about. I wouldn't be upset with Brian Branch, the safety. I know that we kind of have some holes on, the, on that side right now. I'm not a, I wouldn't be mad with Drew Sanders. Mm. I know that Howie doesn't normally draft linebacker, but this is a team that lost a lot of linebackers in free agency. Um, and then last, that big offensive lineman, like a Matthew Bergeron from Syracuse or a Dewan Jones from Ohio State, guys that might be able to play guard since they did lose Samalo, that could maybe move to tackle whenever Lane's coming to the end. That's kind of my thought process. Out of those things, AJ, where would you go? I like I like that Nolan Smith. Let's put let's put the Georgia band back together. You know, uh, I Wait, think that's better. Who did you say? Man, so, you said Nolan. You said Nolan, Nolan Smith. Okay, is in? No, it's not in yet. Okay, so I have the pick. <laughs> let's Micah, no, let's split screen <laughs> Micah and AJ Brown so we can like have them on there together. I haven't been told what it is yet. So how do, how do you this, get this the gonna pick? This is going to be a knockout Because I have that. an earpiece in. <laughs> no, nah, I do too. I think I should get the pick. Okay, so, so Cap, who is the pick? Let's, let, let's Michael, let Michael say it. Okay. Uh, and with the uh, 30th pick in the first round of the draft, the Philadelphia Eagles have selected Nolan Smith, edge rusher There's out no of way. Georgia. I, I doubt that happened. That's the knockout blow for Michael right there. I doubt that happens. He's ready to go making home. it up? He's ready to leave. Do you, oh, so this He's is the ready one that would upset leave. you the that most? Is, that is it. I'm that not going to say it. it will upset me the most. I'm just, it just doesn't make the sense. It just doesn't make sense. It, it makes you. perfect sense. It makes <laughs> perfect <laughs> sense. <laughs> How? How does he, that make he, you feel, Michael? He doesn't Micah? know what to do. He okay. doesn't know what to do. He's ready to go. His night, his night, his pick, it's not no, nowhere near close to this. <laughs> Wait, so there's no pick 32 this year? No, because the, the Dolphins. Miami Dolphins <laughs> lost it because of Tom Brady. Stop trying to change the topic. The Eagles selected Focus. Nolan Smith. <laughs> yes. So, Micah, hold, come on. He just, don't know what to do. Yeah, what do you, what do you think of this player? He's so disappointed. I mean, I, I love Nolan. Like, I've recruited Nolan to Penn State. Like, I, I was his host. Like, Nolan's my guy. His ceiling is high. I think for where he's gone, like you see that production, like what we we're talking about, for where he's gone, this is a great pick. And production-wise, it definitely, I think he has a chance to fly through the roof. Right. Being in a system where it's going to be more towards him, a five-man front with Jordan Davis, Jalen Carter, and Hassan, <laughs> and Josh, and... Fletcher Cox. I mean, they just oh, got no. Fletcher Cox, Brandon oh. Graham 2.0, right? Like, they just reloaded there. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> my lord. I mean, their future is oh. set. I mean, how do you feel, AJ? I'm loving every bit of this. AJ, they can't they ain't gonna be able to pay you. He in does years. not. <laughs> you, he, he needs some tissue. He needs some tissue. He, he, he really, the show is over. He's ready to for, go home. For and the cry. money you need, they're not gonna he be able to not know. You. Yo, see, he's trying to take shots at your pocket right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool, AJ. You know what? <laughs> he's paid. He's paid. He got two years left. Hey, you know what, bro? Two years to win the Super Bowl. Listen, uh, this is not about me. This is not about you. me. You, listen. Win the Super Bowl. This is about the, the, the Philadelphia Eagles and, and Nolan Smith, that pick, uh, along with Jalen Carter. Yeah, I want to see his footage. Can you don't know start? what to say. Let's see this the is, footage this of is, Nolan Smith. This is, crazy. Uh, this is a man they that just ran love Georgia. a 4-3-9-40. Uh, this is a man that had a 1-5-2 split. This is a man that had a 41 and a half inch vertical. All of those were number one in the combine for the front seven. Uh, not only that, the team says Nolan Smith is the most vocal player in the locker room, the energy of the defense. May I say, one of the greatest college football defenses of all time. And on that defense, not only was it Nolan Smith, it was Jalen Carter, it was Jordan Davis, mm -hmm. and it was N'Kobe Dean. And all four of them are on the Philadelphia Eagles. What do we think, Renner? Well, he might have gone top 10, and they get him at 30. 
Yeah, Smith is a heck of an athlete. I, I still, you know, work in progress as a pass rusher, but the effort. I mean, this guy loves ball. He brings it every single snap. But to be 235 pounds playing against the run the way he does, you have to, because every snap he's taken on tackles that he's given 60 pounds to, and he's the one walking them back. I, I think his quicks, his get off it is exactly what you want if you are going to be an undersized guy. And right there, I've not seen a prospect as good defending option runs, which is a real thing you have to do in the NFL nowadays. I, I know Mike has to deal with it week in, week out, pressing down that line, having to get back out to that quarterback, sprinting around the edge. He can get both ends of the option when he's unblocked, and it's just child's play for him. I mean, a freak athlete through and through with the high ceiling. I, I'm a big fan. The, the, the Eagles, can you push the A-plus button for me really quick? What they, what they did in this Thanks. draft was Thanks. just masterclass. Thanks. Hey, uh, Felder, what do you think about Nolan Smith at 30? I mean, this is unbelievable. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Look at Micah's guy. face. This is a guy. I mean, listen, here's the thing. Zoom in on Micah's there. face. <laughs> he is a player Her that, face. one, I'm still trying to figure out what he is. Okay, I saw the Baron Browning comp. I'm still trying to figure out what he actually is at the next level. Mm. 238 pounds. I don't know that he's an if, like I don't I don't know what he. <laughs> 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 ah, Micah, look at the screen. He's got um, tissues for you. Call the ambulance. Way, way. <laughs> yeah, let Get me just everyone, everyone Get got their guys. Together. Everyone got their guys. All right, hold on. Okay, hold on, Felder, finish your point. Here we go. No, I no, don't. Please. I don't know. I'm not. For, I'm not for sure what he is going to be at the next level. Is he going to play more linebackers? Is he going to be more dedicated rushing? But I know that he's got the potential. Listen, I do a lot of recruiting. Yeah. This dude's an A-plus. He has the opportunity. I mean, look at this. He get off of me. Let's wow. go get there. Oh, fumble. Yeah. And the thing I like the most about him, it's not the moves. It's not even the combine numbers. The thing I love the most about him, he suffers an injury, right? Yep. A lot of guys, they would go trade for the draft and just work on that. Yeah. Stayed at Georgia. He was at, every, like, the, the coin flip every game. At, at, yes, he was. And at every single game, you saw Nolan Smith with his towel out, calling out calling out the offense, calling out the defense, letting people, getting people lined up from the sidelines, oh. being a leader. He's the leader in that locker room. Mm. And he was someone that the way he handled multiple situations, the way that, like, when he – he's someone left coach. I'm going to tell you this. Yeah, tell me. I already said A-plus. He is someone that's going to be a decade-long guy oh. that's the centerpiece of this team. Oh. Like, he's got – I don't think he plays the same position as Luke Keekley, but he's yeah. got Luke Keekley energy mm. for a locker room. And I think that's good. I think that's remarkable. Because – go ahead. I was going to say, and I'll say this about Howie Roseman. Like, he is drafting guys – to learn from veterans. Last year he did it with Cam Jurgens and Jason Kelsey. Jason Kelsey. Like that's right. the perfect guy to learn from yes. in that mold. You have you draft Nolan Smith to learn from Hassan Reddick. Yes. The perfect guy to rush the passer, right. the high side speed rusher. That's who you want him to learn from. And that's just how you build a team. They are set up now for incredible long-term success with the draft they had last year, the draft they had this year, and the Jalen Hurts contract. Uh, it's gonna be a tough division. NFC East. It's gonna be a What you looking fight. for over there, Micah? <laughs> uh, never in my wildest dreams did I think they were going to get Jalen Carter. I thought they were going to have to go with Nolan at that pick. I thought they were going to have to take Nolan with that pick at 10. I know they moved up to 9. I, uh, AJ... What a night, baby. What a night. Look at us, huh, AJ? Look at us. Look at us. Look at us. <laughs> wow. Who would have thought? Uh, so I guess Kansas City, the host of the draft, they have a pick. Uh, whatever. Uh, good for them. Uh, no, but Kansas City is up. Uh, we have to finish strong. Eagles Nation, what a night. Um, Kansas City, the team that actually won the Super Bowl. and you know crazy? Uh, what? If Porter fall, he'll probably go to first pick tomorrow, to Pittsburgh. Oh yeah, if they don't pick, if they don't pick him. Yeah. Mm. Who uh, else is available from an edge rushing standpoint? Now it got weak. Felix Andrew DK Uzama is the top one uh, on the board available. Kent State rusher, and then it's kind of like we got to go a ways. I think after yeah. that, so it's it's that was kind of it. 
There you go. Right. I think one of the most interesting things about watching the Super Bowl this year yeah. was how no one could get to the quarterback. Mm-hmm. Well, they think it, the it, apparently that field that was field, awful. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Did you see? Did you, you didn't see the shot of all the cleats? I was at the game. Oh, so you didn't see? I it. didn't see nothing. So they had. They, did you, you see the shot of the cleats? The mm-hmm. Eagles cleats? Just like steak. Everybody had to change cleats. Yeah, you got. I mean, I mean, I mean, even we like even Green Bay. Same way. Anytime you play in that slick grass, yeah, mm-hmm. you got to get into more of a grass cleat. Yeah. Is just, there is there any chance here the Chiefs maybe go with Hyatt? I can see it. Is there any chance here uh, they don't really need? Could you imagine if they went Michael Mayer Oof. and did a little double tight end with Jason with uh, Travis That's Kelsey? Bad. I mean Kelsey, for as good as he's been, he's still what thirty four years old. Yeah, he's good like old. He, he is not. He should not be doing what he's doing. You, you cannot count on that if you are the Chiefs to happen every year, and you can't count on a prospect like Mayer to be available every year. Cause I could also see them going a Bergeron or a Dewan Jones. Right now, they're starting right tackles, mm-hmm. Lucas Niang. Um, they did lose Orlando Brown. They did bring in Jawan Taylor. Um, but the, the needs that they have, wide receiver, obviously they lost Juju. They lost Mikel Hardman, uh, offensive line and all the changes there. And I think with them, just getting constant D-line depth is yeah. always something they could go for. Yeah, I would – I also like the top player on the board right now is obviously Will Levis, but then Brian Branch, Alabama safety. I know it's not a massive need for them, sure. but you're in a position where you can kind of just – Luxury. Luxury picks and just get good players on that defensive side. Of the I think Brian Branch is the best defensive back in this in this draft. And mm. he's, he's like the safest. He just – you're going to get a good football player no matter where you line him up. Yeah, and I think that's the key. I think as a corner, he's probably – Seven, sixth, seventh best corner, mm-hmm. but as a that safety or as a gadget piece, I think he becomes a high value defensive back if you're going to use him that way. You cannot draft this guy to play corner. You can draft him to play a safety. You can draft him to be that gadget piece, big nickel type thing. <laughs> I you hope got it's Mozzie not Smith, bro. You got Mozzie. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I I don't know. You guys are good for a little while for sure. <laughs> so you took him on a recruiting visit. Yeah. And you were like, man, you if, could be a star. If you, if you talk to Nolan Smith, yeah, I'm talking about, if you're talking about you want to have a great time, I'm the guy you want. Oh, you're a good, like, yeah, you're a good hang. You take him around. You show him Oh, my seats. gosh. If you ask Got him. Got some ice cream. What he thought of his Penn State visit, he said, he literally said, bro, if I was if it wasn't down in Pennsylvania, and I'm, I'm not gonna say and now nothing he's going else. To Pennsylvania. I'm not gonna say nothing else. Okay. But there was a reason why he chose Georgia, mm. and it's been going on for years. Georgia, Alabama, all them other schools. But hey. NIL. Yeah. NIL. Before NIL. I don't know, but I just know he should have been a Penn State. I think that's statute of limitations. I think Kansas City right. Chiefs <laughs> officially select. There he is, the pass rusher, Felix, Felix and Adike Ozoma. Wow. The Super Bowl champs close it out. And DK Uzoma, second team All-American. He was the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. What's crazy is he considered giving up football after high school. And then two days before signing day, Kansas State called him up and says, we got you. Led the team in sacks, tackles for loss, and forced fumbles the last two seasons. 27 starts. 20 and a half sacks, a pass rusher for the Chiefs. This one is one I mocked a bunch because he just yeah. feels like a Steve Spagnolo defensive end. You know how he loves those guys who can kick inside. They're versatile. They have bend. Reminds me of a guy who would fit in on that Giants line back when they won the Super Bowl with him. He, he just great bend to him, uses his hands really well, just not a super high-end athlete. That's why he falls to this point in the draft is because he doesn't have quite the get-off, quite the all-around athleticism, but I think he's just going to be a productive player. Him and Carl Loftus on two ends, you don't have to take those guys off the field. They can play the run. They can rush the passer. You can kick them inside. Uh, I comped him there to Harold Landry because of that, mm. Ben, but he's just hes a guy that you really like. Maybe he's never going to turn into an all-pro pro bowler, but you're never really going to complain about him either. Yeah. What hey. grade? A. Hey. Yeah. I mean, at this point in the draft, if you get guys, that you get these guys, you have an opportunity. Enter DK Uzoma. Uh, when I watch him play, yeah. I thought about um, – Matthias Kiwanuka. Yeah. Oh, there you go. wow. I, would, yeah. I literally Boston just searched College. Matthias Kiwanuka yeah. on my computer. I have, yeah. you, there's no, you remember Matthias Kiwanuka? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought about. Um, 
That was actually my first and my only bowl game that we went to. Yes. Uh, was against BC before they joined the ACC, actually. But same type player, just a steady Eddie, a guy that's he's going to give you every snap that you need out of him. He doesn't have to come off the field. He does. He's going to have moments, and, and it's probably going to depend, be matchup dependent. Mm. But he's going to have moments where he has big games, and I think that's going to be the key. And you watched him there. You saw the motor. You saw the energy. You saw the fact that he's willing to chase things down from the backside. Yeah. So for me, yeah, I'm going to go with an A. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm going to go with an A. But I, I love watching him play. He's super powerful, hey. too. And that's one of the things that I really like about him is he's super powerful, able to walk guys back to the quarterback, wants to be involved in every play. And, and he was a super lowly recruited guy. He had to blue shirt to even yep. get to Kansas State. And then by the time he sees the field as a redshirt sophomore, all of a sudden he's double-digit sacks. Like, he is an ascending player that was not supposed to be coming out as a true junior. Wasn't even supposed to be, like, a prospect yep. when he was coming out of high school. All of a sudden, add some weight, turns it on, and, and you got a player. I, I think he's ascending, and I think he's a guy that, for the Chiefs long term, great pick. We know uh, what Chris Jones is possible. George Karloftis was a solid DN for them last year. Frank Clark, currently a free agent. I could totally see him re-signing with the Chiefs, maybe at, at like a veteran-friendly number. But this is a guy long-term. Have you watched this guy at all? Uh, he's not necessarily a guy that I watch off of everyone I've seen. But just based off the short clips, I see exactly what you guys. Good Ben. Uh, being able to transition a rush, he's going powered, and he's able to right. keep continuing to rush. I think that's the most important, not just getting stuck on your first move right. and retreating, but the continuation of the rush. Because you never know what's going to happen if a play break down or anything like that. So the continuing to rush, the effort all look very good. And, and Anton Harrison just went a few picks ago. They had a head-to-head -head match up. I, I thought Felix and DK Zama came out on top of that. Mm. Yeah, he went to uh, Jacksonville. That is the first round, but now we have to look at how everything went. We have to pick some winners. But first, let's see how Renner's props did. We just oh, wanna... I hit a few. Yeah, I, I think you I definitely hit. did. I know you hit Dalton Kincaid. There we go. Uh, Will Levis, under six and a half, <laughs> doesn't even get drafted in the first round. Skaronsky, you had him going under ten and a half. Wow, that's a killer. Ah, he went 11. Broderick Jones, under 13 and a half, or over. He went 14, couldn't be more perfect. Quinton Johnson under 26 and a half. He goes 21. Kincaid, first tight end drafted. A little bit of a shocker. Mayer not drafted at all in the first round. Over four and a half quarterbacks drafted. It hits three. Under four and a half wide receivers. Boy, that was scary. Four in a row Definitely. by 23 and not another one went. And you, sir, went four and three. And we made money. That means we made money. Congratulations. Here we go. Uh, it is time we should pick our winners of the first round. Um, and this is the draft recap, uh, Bryce and, and all that. Um, but let, let's do some winners. Uh, I'm going to let Micah go first. Okay. Uh, so, Micah, who is your big winner of the first round of the 2023 NFL draft? Um, I would say the first winner is probably the Houston Texans. Mm. Them trading up and getting their two, their guy to lead the way for their defense the next five, six years. And their guy on offense to probably leave for the next 10 to 12 was huge for them. Mm. You know, and especially for how uh, the transition, they obviously want to win right now. So that was kind of, I thought that was huge moves. And they got the value at their picks at the right spot. So C.J. Stroud and Will Anderson makes the Houston Texans your winner. Yeah. yeah that's, that's a no-brainer, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to come to you guys last. I want to go to our, our guys that have been out there uh, in the trenches uh, Calais Campbell, are, are our advisors still with us? Calais, uh, have you had a chance to think who is your, your winner if you had to pick a winner? Yeah, man, my man, uh, he just took my same one. I, I go with the Houston Texans as well. Uh, but I guess it's, uh, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, they got two of the best players in the draft. I mean, how can you, you know, lose the draft when you get two uh, generational talents? And I think that's, you know, C.J. Stroud He's going to be a great quarterback in this league. You know, he's going to develop, and I think he has a high ceiling. Uh, I think Will Anderson is, you know, I mean, one of the best D-linemen you're going to get, you know, over, you know, a 10-year period. You know, I think uh, just what he can do uh, rushing the passer, I mean, especially with D'Amico Ryan's defense and the way he's going to use them, he's going to get the best out of them. I think that it just their scheme fits, and um, they're just you know, generational talents. And uh, you know, you, you can't, it's, hard, it's hard to lose a day or, mm -hmm. you know, when you have two of the best, two of the best players in the draft. Uh, Kirk Cousins has uh, was with us. Boy, we really worked him a lot those first four picks, and then got another <laughs> quarterback. Uh, Kirk, who would you say is your winner when you look back at tonight? 
Certainly the Texans had a great draft, but I would give you two other teams that had two first-round picks, both the Seattle Seahawks, I think, hit with their corner and the receiver, and then the Eagles, who you obviously have talked about at length, <laughs> but I felt playing them last year, the biggest reason they were so dominant of all the different success they had was the D-line. And to be able to reload at that position and, and continue to make sure that that D-line is not going anywhere for years to come, as a fellow NFCer, I mean, that's – that's going to be a challenge for us playing them. So it um, doesn't look like their D-line's going anywhere anytime soon. Kirk, thank you so much. Uh, A.J. Brown, uh, who are you going to pick as the big winner on night one? You better listen to Kirk. Kirk, no, those, those, those <laughs> sacks, they add up and they hurt. He know, he know who, who won the night, and it's the Eagles. Come on, man. Jalen Jalen Carter, Nolan Smith, man. Big, big, two, two big new additions. Uh, the D line is already lethal. Just adding those two guys, man. The, the sky's the limit for the D line, and and it gets give us the ball more. So you know we like to score touchdowns, and they get sacks. So the more sacks they get, the more touchdowns we get. So the Eagles. <laughs> uh, I just want to say a, a big shout out and a big thank you to Calais, uh, AJ, and Kirk. Thank you for the time. Thank you for the insight. You guys killed it tonight. Uh, appreciate y'all. All right, Felder. Your big winner from uh, night one. You know what? I'm going to go with the Pats. Mm. Even Christian Gonzalez. Great one. The guy that we mm. thought might go in the top ten. They're able to wait around, wait around, wait around, and then get him a little bit later. I think that's a good one. And I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm a college guy, right? So I'm going to go. I'm going with Georgia. Mm. Getting, getting all those guys drafted. The best advertisement for your program is tonight. Yes. Talk, and when he walks in, when, Char, when, when Kirby Smart walks into somebody's house, he's going to put down that list. He's going to say, look at what we've been doing. Yep. This is what you come to Georgia. This is what's going to happen, mm. and then he's probably going to show them the rings too. And absolutely, uh, Renner, your big winner. I'm going to give a shout out to the Panthers. So like getting Bryce Young, yeah. And as Panthers fans, like getting a guy who's like fun, you know, at the quarterback position. You've had not a lot of fun <laughs> since Cam Newton left mm. at that position. He's a guy who's just exciting. But I'll also say the Buffalo Bills. Dalton Kincaid, I had him as the 12th best player in this draft. It's how do you get over the hump in the AFC? What, what, what do we change? Because we have the best defense. You know, we, ha we had that. We have Josh Allen. We have Stephon Diggs. What takes us to the Super Bowl? I think that's a piece that can. Dalton Kincaid's a piece that can get you over the hump, that can do a little something different, that can give you that slight edge because that's what you need in a loaded landscape. So I, I love that pick for them. I, I think that's a guy that's going to make an impact next season. Uh, uh, you know how I feel about the Eagles. I'm going to say three quarterbacks that were winners. Number one, I'm going to say C.J. Stroud. I think it has been a really long month and a half yeah. where uh, when you talk about this S2 test, when you're, you're kind of calling a guy dumb for a month. Mm -hmm. and, and for him yeah. to, to not have any of that and to go second overall, I'm really happy for him. Uh, number two, I'm going to say Kyler Murray. Uh, his team moved down from three to six, got him a tackle, and then picked up a number of draft picks for the next two years so that when he's recovering, they're going to be able to build around him. I thought that was good. And I also think that Lamar Jackson's a big winner. Yeah. Lamar yeah. Jackson got paid, finally. And not only that, they get Zay Flowers to go along with Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, but, of course, I mean, the Philadelphia Eagles and Howie Roseman and the Philadelphia Georgia Bulldogs are uh, pretty uh, freaking Literally. Cool. Philly Bulldogs. Um, uh, A.J. Brown uh, chimed in on Twitter a little bit ago, uh, and we just kind of want to give him a little spotlight about his social media plays, so maybe you could follow A.J. Brown, but Micah is hurting right now. <laughs> I love it. Yeah! I love it. Yo! Oh, uh, that's so good. Yo, that's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> that's all good. I'm going to see y'all in Vegas. Yes, you will. You'll see. Hey, make sure you go. Since you laughing, make sure you go eat Philly cheesesteaks with him and Philly while I'm in Vegas picking up my trophy. How about that? Uh, Ma Micah, Micah, you, you said the same thing last year. I don't think you need to speak too soon. <laughs> hey, hey, AJ, to be honest with you, you know damn well you ain't want to see us again. Y'all beat a half a team. Well, no, we're, we're going to see it. Twice every year. Well, y'all gonna see that, but they didn't want to see us in that playoff game. I promise you that they did not hey, want to see us. Well, maybe hey, if you would have won, we would have hey, seen you. Hey, whatever helps you sleep good at night. Yeah, whatever exactly. helps you sleep good at That's night. Cool. That's cool. Hey, good for you. Y'all uh, know what? Y'all know what's coming. Y'all know no, what's but coming. In, in all seriousness, <laughs> no, no, uh, you know. <laughs> no. Uh, in all serious, Micah, uh, it's been an absolute blast having you here. Uh, you came prepared. You brought the juice, uh, and I just appreciated working with you, man. It was a really good time. You killed it. 
Uh, man, I appreciate it. Now, I thank you guys for this great opportunity. Yeah. Mike, yeah, Mike Felder, you know. <laughs> yeah. We got we got we got work on it. We got work on this. I'm gonna come in. I got another winner. Micah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a winner. I got you. Like, yeah. 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 you, you got to try to get some kudos, boys. Got your, you got your guy, Mozzie Smith. Yeah. yeah. We got our guy. We so, got our yeah, guy. There we go. Yeah. We got our guy. Look at that. Um, and I, I also want to say, so uh, thank you. Thank Kirk. Thank Calais. Thank AJ. Uh, tomorrow, day two, it will be us three. We'll be breaking it down. Let's take a look at best players available. Still on the board, your guy Joey Porter Jr. is one shot. of them. Mm -hmm. uh, here are the best Ooh, players Josh going Jones. into day two. Renner, break it down for us. Yeah, Will Levis, obviously, like I think the Rams fit makes too much sense at this point. Mm. Brian Branch is just the safety value, right? And I think Michael Mayer, too. Like, Mayer's hurt by a deep, deep tight end class. You know, a lot of teams in the teens, I think, had a decision, do I draft a tight end or do I wait because one's probably going to be in the second round. So I think that's where that is. Porter is the biggest surprise to me to fall out. Uh, like That guy feels like yeah. a press corner that thrives at the NFL level. The only thing is they're going away from press kind of as a whole. A lot more off coverage you're seeing nowadays than maybe four or five years ago when everyone's doing cover three on the outside. So that maybe hurts him is that his kind of scheme dependence that he has to go to a certain spot. Um, and, and then the interesting guys I want to see is uh, the Northwestern DT. Uh, to me, well, out of our, yeah. he's just freak athlete, all-time athlete for the defensive tackle position. Where he comes off the board at this point it will be intriguing. If he goes to the Eagles, too, we might have to wow. uh, just, you know, not play this season. Uh, that is all for us here, the uh, Gridiron Draft Show. Thank you all so much for joining us. We hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for joining us in the BR app and in YouTube, and we'll be right here tomorrow. Have a great night, and I hope your team got the exact player that you wanted. See y'all. Because we did. <laughs> oh, my God. I